All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome Hello. to a very special stream. Okay. Uh, I am joined today by the wonderful Twilight Guardian. Hello. And the always acerbic uh, young Kaiser. How are you doing, good sir? <laughs> Uh, buddy, I ha today was a really good day. And I woke up. Uh oh. And today was a good day, and I, I, I just thought, I just had a special thought that I was in a weird mood to burning some beehives. You know? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Set, setting the tone right you know, I quick. I smelt that honey in the air. My sensors sense honey, and I was like. I should probably go take care of that. You know that you don't want to attract too many bees this time of the year. Well, I mean, it's it's cold up here in Canada, so all of the bees are hibernating. So I don't have to worry about that. But I don't mind going and ruffling a few hives. This is my first foray publicly into getting into the Ruby criticism part of the fandom. So I'm kind of Woo! excited. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Moopa. Good to see you in here. Um, <clears throat> hey, Moopa. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Kaiser recently, within the last month or so, right, released an oh. entire, lo a lengthy, a, a girthy lad of a video uh, <laughs> on <girth>. Bumblebee <laughs> that was very thorough in covering a lot of major points. And for I'm those who are familiar with me is, I am, I am big in the Ruby shipping community. I was a big fan fiction writer in the back in the day. And I mean, I obviously I am a big fan fiction writer now with fixing Ruby, but that's a completely different type of fan fiction. It's a fix it fic that has a much more technical level to it. But even back in the day, I was, I was big on two particular ships, white Rose being my mainstay and still to this day is my mainstay and Bumblebee, which was one of the first, it was either the first or second ship I bumped on. I, 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 I don't remember which I actually started with. Um, and I have stayed Traitor! true to Bumblebee for uh, since Volume 1 aired. Um, I, like everyone, was excited to see the Yang and uh, Blake conversation scene in Volume 2. And then I was angry they got nothing until Volume 3 when Yang got her arm cut off. Yeah. Uh, so when I go into this, when I go into this video and I go into my criticisms of Bumblebee, know that I come from a place of, I love this ship. I want this ship to set sail, but I do not believe for a second that it is being done justice in the canon show. However, we do have a video here today by a delightful, we'll say fan named Zell Ryder that seems to be trying to convince us otherwise. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. I, should I talk about my I brief backstory? It, yes, please Ruby? go. You should probably go I into think, it, yeah. Okay, sure. If, if, if it could, then that's fine, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I saw Ruby around, but I never watched it until I had a friend who was really into it, recommended it to me around 2014, so around the time when Volume 2 was coming out. And I, uh, I, I decided to watch it with him, um, and I was not impressed. I was not impressed at all, especially because I was going through my first term of animation uh, in, in college. So I was literally working on animation homework while I was watching Ruby, and I was just <laughs> so not impressed. So after the first volume, I asked him not to show me any more because it was really boring, like the most generic high school anime that I had ever seen, and the animation was this bad. Were... If but, this were in your class, you would give it. You would give it a three out of ten. <laughs> yes. Oh you would my give god. It a, you would give it. A, you would give it a flat D. <laughs> yeah, but I found that a lot of my friends that I would talk to just praised the show, and I started I started to like gaslight myself because I was like, "Is there something wrong with me? I am the only one who is saying that this show isn't all that good. What's going on?" 
So that led me to looking for criticism of Ruby, and that's how I found all of my current friends. Uh, and long story short, I am no longer friends with that person who showed me Ruby. <laughs> A tale of trust and betrayal, the likes of which you have never seen, ladies and gentlemen. And the yes. worst part is... He took the body pillow with them. I'm still. Oh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna be too mean about that. Uh, it's it's kind of whack when um you you know relationships like that end because of a show like that. Oh but, no um, no. To to be fair, that's usually the joke that I say to imply that that was how the relationship ended. The relationship ended because he would nitpick all of my art. Uh, and say that my anatomy was really bad, even though that my anatomy was just fine. He just didn't like the fact that my anatomy didn't look like Sailor Moon anatomy. That's oddly specific. Uh, well, because he kept yeah. saying, "I, you need to make the torso shorter and the legs longer. And I'm like, motherfucker, that's not how things work. That's not how the human body looks. We're, we're very dumpy. Not with that attitude. Not with that attitude. Yeah, no, we're, we're very... We're, we're not... We don't have very long legs, and we don't have very short torsos. We have very long torsos and very short legs. We have certain very specific proportions, and my proportions are very realistic. And he kept saying that it was bad. Speak for yourself. When I hang my legs off a balcony, they reach down to the lower level, <laughs> to the floor below. You are my height. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I have very Pretty long sure. legs. I, I, my torso is only three inches tall. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am I am composed of ninety five percent leg and one percent oh. seaweed. Don't ask where that comes no. from. I'm not entirely sure. No, your your body composition. Remember. You are like mostly buck teeth because. Of the <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't bring that up. Oh, <laughs> really old, like, fu like fucking really Tim old Timmy Turner buck teeth. <laughs> yeah, he he because he threatened to reach over all the way across the continent to bite me. So yeah. I, I called him a I called him a a, a rabid um. mutant beaver. <laughs> Uh, dead ass. I bought that volume for Blake hoodie and I cut the ears off and my friend went berserk dead ass in the middle of high school library called me faunist and a bee hater. What? Uh, okay. What the fuck? Okay. okay. Fallen gang. That, that, Fallen gang, Fallen, that is no longer your friend. He is a... That is no longer your friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously. 100%. But thanks for coming to the stream, by the way. I really, really appreciate the support. Uh, Check out this guy's videos. It's he's absolutely yeah. hilarious. Uh, thank you, Mupa. Uh, I am I am glad that you're letting everyone know that I am a purely two dimensional being. I have no height. <laughs> <laughs> There's zero verticality. Uh. <laughs> you are all length. <laughs> Listen, you're vertically challenged. Okay, you're not. Okay, you're chal you're challenged, you're vertically blessed, let's say. You're vertically blessed. <laughs> uh, speaking of two-dimensional things, I think it is yeah. time we jump into this video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I, I didn't even explain my backstory. It, I it thought you did. Two minutes, I swear. No, I didn't. It was Twilight. <laughs> yeah, okay. it was me. All right, give it a shot. Okay, long story short. Bumblebee wanted to be good. Fast forward, ended up not being good. Made the Bumblebee video script back in 2019. Thought things would change. Shit didn't change. Zell Rider, uh, me, me and him, uh, I had a brief run-in with him because of my response to his Robin video. He took it pretty cordially. And going into this, I don't want to attack the motherfucker. I don't want to, like, shit on him for liking the ship out loud. <laughs> and um, I, I just want to see... I'm very curious as to how he is going to explain his views on the ship. Because I am fully capable of changing my mind if... Uh, what was it? The evidence says that it's true. Um, now, if it doesn't, we'll get there when we get there. Yes. Um, That's all oh. I gotta say. Yeah, I also have history with Zell Rider. 
Um, Pretty sure we all funny did. enough. Yeah. Um, well, this this was when I was uh, defending Fixing Ruby last volume. Uh, he just came onto my, uh, my Tumblr nice. one day and replied to me and started a, a dialogue. And I had no idea who this guy was. Like, I... Is just some guy replying to me, so I replied back to him. I I didn't know that he was also a YouTuber or that he had a YouTube channel. So I will concede, like, because I told him, like, you don't have a reputation because you're not a YouTuber. And it's like, okay, that's my bad because I didn't, I didn't go and do any research. But to be fair to myself, what kind of an, an unhinged person goes and does research on somebody before they have a, an interaction with them when they've already spoken to them? Yeah, like, it, that's weird. Like, the only time I could see that is, like, if you're going into a formal debate. Like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it was, yeah. So it was just this guy that replied to me. So it's like, what, what, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go look through your entire archive where you professionally reblog ruby shit because <laughs> this listen, man is prolific okay, on Tumblr. Writer, yes he he is very prolific okay not knowing about this guy is like not knowing about socrates you gotta look up all of <laughs> if you're going to run the bet with him all right uh what i was gonna say is i don't have too much of a history with him obviously he's a big critic of, of fruby and that's how twilight interacted i don't know if i've ever directly interacted with zell mostly i interact with the people that zell interacts with namely being canon seeker and lilitharian who if you know them you know them and if you know oh, them yeah. you know that they are infamous inside the ruby circles mm -hmm. even more so than the general mm -hmm. nastiness that is the di discussion within the fandom yeah so yes, uh, here we're watching right. Zell's newest video. It is 45 minutes in length, so I I hope we can get through this before we have to go. Oh, what, uh, well, what are we going to do with all the, the Bumblebee content that you spent like a couple of days I, I haven't had, up? I, I haven't had time to render it out, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh. So it's, it's still, okay. and I haven't gotten through Volume 9, but we can at least talk right. about the information that I, I gleaned from doing that. Because uh, <laughs> I did something interesting. I don't know when we'll bring this up, uh, but I feel like it'll at some point become relevant in this video and I can start popping out some statistics. So right. here we go. Zell Writer's video. Is everyone ready? Everyone? Uh, yep. All right. Let's hope that I he am, doesn't get me I copyrighted. I am born fucking ready. I'm built ready. Hello again. Hello. What a wonderful moment this is because they're here. They're queer. Get used to it. That's right. The flagship. Like oh, Belladonna and Yang I, Long and I don't like that. And I don't like that at all. Gay like, and in love. It's, it's I've been just. For this to crystallize so it's kind of sing songy. Years, and it was, what? It's kind of sing songy. What, they, we're here. We're queer and. No. It, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I don't I, like I, that I, either, swear. but. No, it's mostly the the get used to it because it's like it's right off the bat so combative. Yeah, it's immediately like oh well. I mean, it's not wrong. It, it is here. We kind of we have to get used to it. <laughs> we don't have to like it. <laughs> yeah, but we're not li disliking it because they're they're queer. We gotta specify that. Yes. No, because because like I don't I don't actually care about any of the ships in the show not a single one of them legitimately so like I, it, bumblebee i don't i don't have any particularly strong feelings towards them so it's fine it's just right. that they're i don't think they're well written that's all it was worth the Personally, wait because slow I, burn romances are already Rare, but queer slow burn romances that might as well be the end of a rainbow for how hard those are to find no Most they're not romances are some are of love yeah yeah okay so <laughs> this man has never read a book in his life he never has you can there are entire <laughs> websites dedicated to queer slow burn romance there 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 are entire lgbt subgenres for slow burn romances like if you're if you're only looking for like 
studios like Disney and and other large studios to make your queer content, then of course you're not going to find anything really. You have to look Let's... outside of the most uh, of the 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 mainstream. The bottom. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like it's not gay acceptance is much more. It, it's much more prevalent now. Thank God. It, you know, we, we have a much more accepting yeah. you know world. But you still have to understand USA, USA. that is still a minority of people. It doesn't like even if it gets up to twenty yeah. percent of people are gay, lesbian, bi, whatever. Yeah. Like go down the whole list. Uh, you know, go to the most radical left wing blog. If twenty percent of people fall into that category, you're still in the minority, and you're still not going to be majorly represented, or at least in any significant way, in the way that you're asking for here in mainstream media. You might get a rare gem left. Yeah, because right. people write what they know. People either write what they know yeah. or or just they're appealing to a, a, a bottom line. And it's like, well, the guy and the girl get or together at the end and have a kid or something like that. It's like that's what most people are going to do. So it appeals yeah. to the most broad audience. Exactly. And it, it appeals to the bottom dollar. So if you're only looking for the mainstream, you're going to be you're going to be just like sand in your fingers man it's just gonna be slipping right through you're not gonna find the good stuff you gotta go off the also, beaten path also, also I, gotta, I, I gotta point out switchback channels uh uh freaking uh what you said in chat is very true the line between slow burn and corporate bait is a thin and tenuous one that is Oof. absolutely true <laughs> um well like we should go over because i'm i'm kind of surprised that he just started talking about slow burns and how rare they are in media for, for career content, but he didn't start off with saying, like, what a slow burn is, so maybe we should talk about that. Because I've done a yeah. little bit of research on it, and there is no clear consensus about what a slow burn is, other than the fact that the, the couple doesn't get together right away, because that would be a fast burn. And there, right. to be fair to him, like, yes, it is technically a slow burn, uh, because they don't get together right away. It takes a very, very, very long time for these girls to get together. But at least when it comes to book slow burn romances, the the line is usually like they start the relationship at the sixty percent mark or later. Like the I a lot of a lot yeah, of main mainstream there. films you could argue are slow burn, like a mainstream action film, because yeah. the romance maybe. The, the 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 dynamics kicks off at the very beginning but it doesn't develop into a romance until the dramatic kiss at the very end of the film like you could yeah. argue that I, most I, stories are yeah. slow burns if the romance doesn't start until towards the climax of the story especially if we're talking a long running story similar to ruby or something like that right because the whole Uh oh. Well, folks, we seem to be experiencing technical difficulties. Um, Discord, Discord, Discord. Oh dear. <laughs> well, guys, it seems that fate wants to fight us on this. I'm going to text Twilight and see how that's going. Uh, do do do. How is everyone doing? Does anyone want to predict what Kaiser was about to say? This is the only time slot that I had to review this video. Discord, come on. Doing great. Happy to see everyone. Run! Discord, why? Seeker sniffed out and tried to kill the stream. Sermon from cheese sandwiches. All right, let's see if I can... All right.
right, all right. We have Twilight back. Yeah, uh, I, I was actually just calling Kaiser first, and then I was going to add you in, so. Well, then I realized we had this channel. All right, good, all right. Try to okay. get up your screens again. Yes. Yes. Oh, my screen, my screen's already yeah. up. Hang on. Uh, it's really hard to... Okay, we're good. All right, that was oh god, that was a scare. Okay. How did that happen? Uh, <laughs> half half of my half of my Discord servers are gone. All right, all right, yeah, there we go. We're, we're back. We're back. I, I, they're vanishing. They got Thanos snapped. Discord's getting Thanos. Everyone. Oh my god! Now, like Rooster I'm pretty Teeth sure managed to partner with Warner Brothers. The Warner Brothers drones attacked. They somehow got a hold of you Discord or hack Discord, whatever the hell. I don't know what happened, but we managed to fight them off, and now we're back. So there's no, there's no real, there's no right. problem. Chat, and please we're remind us what were we we're discussing? Oh, I remember. I was, we were... I was discussing what my views about what a slow burn is. I was yeah. just getting started. When okay, go for me it. Off. Go for it. Okay. So, what I'm saying is, people write what they know in regards to these sorts of stories. And it makes sense to have a, uh, what was it? A, a slow burn uh, romance, or slow burn fucking anything in a long-running story like Ruby's, right? And I say this in my, in my own Bumblebee video, which you should, guys should totally watch, by the way. <laughs> and um, what I mean, what I basically define slow burn is, oh, dear. Uh, in a sort of roundabout way is a story or plot point or situation where you are getting, you are fleshing out a particular plot point or story element as much as humanly, as much as possible is fitting with the story to a, a, a long or not really extreme, but a substantial de degree, right? It, it means putting your characters <laughs> in different situations setting them up with conflicts that aren't solved way too easily stuff like that i believe that's a very like roughly sensible definition i can probably pull up my script and see exactly what i said there but that's roughly what i say and i, I still believe that because will, at the end of the day it's not about the time that you have it's what you do with it you know and i will well, go, yeah. i will go back to what twilight said which is it is very nebulously defined in general like like yeah people yes. have their own definitions about it and not only not only that, but I I do also want to specify that a a romance can still be a slow burn, even though that the characters technically are together in some sort of ro romantic or sexual light. It's the conflict mm. that usually makes it a slow burn. So there there had been talks about like the characters starting out with a purely sexual relationship for instance and it's the process of mm -hmm. working through their issues to lead them into a genuine romance together that makes it a slow burn so you can have a romantic relationship that does start in some way but still have it be a slow burn romance because it is the it is the journey to get us there that is the slow burn Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you could have you could have it in the reverse potentially, a romance that's very pure and subtle. But like yeah. a, a lot of um, a lot of manga that are purely romance manga for like, especially late high school age characters when they're getting their first relationships. There's a big deal made about them spending their first night together. So there's usually a slow burn leading up to that that like you know coming of age sexual experience type thing going on. Um, yeah, like them you know, that, going to the love hotel for the first time or some shit. Yeah, yeah, or you know, just staying over for the night when their parents aren't home, that sort of thing. Like, I I can name dozens of manga that end that yeah. way. Um, <laughs> so it's like that's, exactly you you can slow burn is such a nebulous term. So when Zell is defining it, he, he's not defining it here, and he's just kind of leaving it, presuming that yeah. you're going to take his word for it. And I don't I don't appreciate that. Well, he might he might explain hey, it guys, as we continue to watch it, but but uh, at yeah. the moment he hasn't defined what it is. He just uh, kind of so far has assumed. Oh no! Uh, Twilight has been sorry, away. sorry, sorry. Right, one sec. Um. Uh, he he's kind of just assuming that we know what a slow burn is right off the bat. So he's not. He's not defining his term right off the bat. He's just 
coming out of the gate saying slow burns are rare in media. Right. Which is totally what you should always do when it comes to an analysis video, right, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Romances are already rare, but queer slow burn romances? That might as well be the end of a rainbow for how hard those are to find. Most no, not. romances are some version of love. I'm Irish, song, I know about corner, ends of rainbows, motherfucker. Or the cap to a series rather than something we get to see develop and then experience as it's happening. So with this... Okay. Wait a minute. No, what? Mother, that that is a slow burn romance. That, was, that is still a slow yes. burn romance. You the capstone say, of that is them getting that together. Ah, uh, cannot this... say that fucking Robin and Starfire is not a slow burn with that logic. What are you talking about? Okay, you want to go piece by piece as to what this? I don't even know. You just define what a slow burn is, and you yeah, pull well, you up just a did. couple of romances that fit into that, but then you just say they aren't that. I, I guess what he probably is trying to say is that a lot of these will they won't they relationships aren't properly fleshed out as a as a slow burn would be, but you're just saying that they aren't. You're not proving any of that. He's trying to define slow burn as a very particular thing in order to produce the narrative that there are very rare slow burns in media when that is just simply not the case. Because like we said before, slow burn is very nebulous. It is very wishy-washy. It is a very broad spectrum. Uh. It basically just means you don't get together right away exciting news i decided yeah. to cover the development of bumblebee from start to finish but that means we must go back back to the before times back to before volume one because as aaron barb and oh, several other prominent crew back. members have revealed not only was bumblebee always the plan but they've been waiting for this even longer than we fans have this uh, that doesn't mean anything been confirmed. Don't care. yeah yeah Don't okay care. so here's here's where Don't i'm going to, yeah here's where i'm going to lay down a rule when it comes down to uh, against zell in this because it, i i imagine a lot of this is going to be from an emotional standpoint for zell and you know what i'm not going to try and rob you from your emotions what i am going to try is from making empirically empirical statements about the quality of something just because you like something does not mean it is good just because something was in development yeah. a long time does not mean it was good. What matters is if it was actually well-developed in terms of what was conveyed to the audience in a story. Yeah. You can have several things. You can have stories that were written in what? Like half a year? Things that were banged out in a week mm -hmm. end up being magnificent. You can have things that have been written for yeah. 20 years still turn out to be crap. Uh, there is someone else, someone out there. You know who I'm talking about. Hi, buddy. I hope you. I hope you eventually release a story. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that uh, <laughs> there's a whole saga with that guy. Um, I, good kid, I think. Just a little uh, misled. Yeah. Um. So that's where I'm going to be with Zell. Is like I don't care how long it's been in development. I care what was shown on screen because that's what yeah. ultimately matters. And as we will, I, as I'm getting very close to starting to point out, is what we get on screen is not as much as you think. And if you think that we don't get all that much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here we not go. Not only, oh, yeah, not don't. only that, but I, I kind of want to just point out the whole. Aaron and Barbara have been very blatant about it. It it's really priming the audience for something and and kind of gives you a false impression about this relationship and how great it is. And to be fair, as a writer myself, like I have to I have to take a step back from my work and be like at, what is good writing is that you have to, like you said, properly convey to the audience what is in your head. So what is in your head can be the most amazing thing ever, but it, that's not going to mean diddly squat if you can't convey it properly. I, and also, I, one thing I Especially need to bring since up. there are very few authors that are able to play these things. Yeah. But I was going to say, like, the one thing that I need to bring is that the reason why we are so distrustful of them when they say this was being developed for years is if we've been given that same line 
about dozens of different plot points throughout the decades throughout the decade like like oh the ever after was planned back in volume two and it's like great it doesn't add anything yeah yeah apparently yeah. the uh what was it we the, will the, the Bumble- lost fable oh. episode in volume six was like planned since like i don't know like basically since the beginning of the show by miles and carrie's fucking uh testimonies why does that matter it's Rip off productions Dude, just super chatted. Bumblebee was always the plan. Why does Sun exist? Freaking... Why is his entire character summed up as a generic opposite attract love interest for Blake? That's a very good very question. True. And we will it get is to a that. Good question. We will get yeah. to that because I have some interesting observations. But mm-hmm. let's 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 try and get through more of Zell's video because uh it's 45 minutes and we've we've gotten through one. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just so enthusiastic about talking about the subject we just can't help ourselves yeah and recently in always open 2023 episode 4 there's also the fact that aaron pretty much gave the game away then the pre-volume 1 chapter 1 live stream before the series even properly began can i, can I mention oh that was that uh, bad editing on your part zell yeah, cool. <laughs> Not yet. And this makes sense, as he. Oh, well, I need to hear that again. Be always the plan, but they've been waiting for this even longer than we fans have. This has been confirmed recently in Always Open 2023, Episode 4. There's also the fact that Aaron pretty much gave the game away, then the pre volume 1, chapter 1 live stream before the series even properly began. Listen. Can I, can I mention that my, uh, my character yeah, cool. and another character are living on the No, I'm saying always streaming. Sure, Maddie. Not yet. And this makes sense, as even in the early... Okay. Th- what was okay. even being set there? Can I mention that my character and another character... Or something, 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 I, and it's like, absolutely not. You can't mention that. All right. So I couldn't even make out half of what she was saying. But let us presume that she was talking about no. the romantic interest. Could it not possibly be in reference to, like, Sun? Or Ilya? Or oh, Adam? Or literally any other character in the cast. Because I will tell you... Yeah, because Blake is like fucking... She she has a harem of different love interests at this point, man. How the fuck does this even matter? Uh, No no joke, because I'm in uh, Dust Queen. I think it... Was it in the Dust Queen server or was it in the sketches? I think it was the Dust Queen server where uh, Psy did a little doodle... Or was it Ari who plays Blake? Did a little doodle of Blake, and she had like the shaggy hair in front of her eyes. And immediately, I'm like, she has harem protagonist hair. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> and they're like, how how dare you do that? And I'm like, I posted a picture of all four for romantic interests, and I'm like, do I lie? Do I lie? <laughs> <laughs> also, I gotta I gotta just ask this question because they're like they're so secretive about. But the bees getting together, but it's like, why is that a big right. secret? Like, why, why do you keep it a secret for so long? What, like, I, I kind of get it to the point. It's like 2013. There isn't a whole lot of, uh, romances and stuff happening, but it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's not like you're, it's not like you guys are pioneering lesbianism in I- media. Uh, on one hand, I understand what you're saying. On the yeah, other, especially I especially after. Well, I was gonna say yeah, like the way the I handle so that. Many other different stuff. I I would just up. be like remiss to actually mention anything spoilery with, for like anything that happens later down the line. A- admittedly, like I I don't know how far because that's nine volumes, nine volumes away. Yeah. Why would you even? Why yeah. would she even need to know about that at that rate? Yeah. Like you don't, you don't typically tell your yes. actors everything that's going to happen to your character down the line unless it's very specifically in, important to them. Like I guess you could say, oh, no, every remember. line towards Yang is supposed to be heartfelt and loving or something like that. But I don't believe that for a second. No. Um, well, remember, like the- remember, the RT and Kruby themselves are a freaking hug box. For expecting any uh, freaking professionalism from them is like expecting the sky to turn green that's just not gonna happen (laughs) yeah it's it just baffles me that they they would not only try to keep it a secret 
but the girls, the voice actresses themselves, have t- actually tried so hard, apparently, to, like, spoil it for us by just being coy. Like, if you're, if you're so blatant about it by, by having your support, of course the fans are going to prefer that ship because you have canonical support in, in the form of voice actresses supporting the ship. So they they really curated the fandom to be the way that they kind of wanted it to be. It seems. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to that. I I again I I have points that I want to get to with this. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully Zell gives me an opening. The estate yeah. of Ruby was more of a side project for the creators. There has been a great deal of forward planning. Salem was the fifth character invented, and the Ever After concept has been around nearly on a decade before we ever saw it. In the same Again, vein, that, we can cares? see how this informed the concept art of Blake and Yang, designed to be perfectly complementary oh, in colors and silhouette. Even oh, she has teal. Team, they always she has connected. teal in her concept Even art. That means Blake. The series progresses. Also, hey, you know who's also designed to be complementary of one another? Ruby and uh, Weiss. Yeah, Ruby and Weiss. Uh, you know, John and Pira. Yeah. It's Nora almost and Ren. like they're partners or something in the non-romantic sense. So their designs would be complementary towards each other, and that doesn't necessarily mean a romantic connection. Yeah, you know, Sun and Neptune. Oh, periodic Pete, my boy said. My boy said, my boy Periodic Pete said, Mario and Luigi. Coco and Yatsuhashi. <laughs> Like, like I'm, I'm going through the list in my mind, and almost every single partner. Oh, sorry, not Coco and Yatsuhashi, Coco and Fox. Like almost every single yeah. partner pair has a a a contrast and match to them. It's like I, I don't. You're, you're, you're reaching. It's, it's a reach. Yeah, that's the whole. Yeah, point. it's this. This is shipper goggles reach, where this is this is they have looked at each other. They are so in love. Levels of reach. What's more, there's how their yeah, fairy like tale inspirations were framed and discussed through stuff like music. For instance, Blake is both Bella and the Beast, but Yang is also oh, described no, as the yellow no. bee. Be- Shut up. Also, Bella. Bella. Bella Swan. <laughs> oh no. She, she is oh, Bella no. Swan. <laughs> Freudian <laughs> slip. Oh, no. uh, Burns Gold, who can sing ferocious, I, but is actually uh, kind. Wait, so what makes me so angry? Tales were intertwined in a way no others have been before the show even Because started. it's bad! Because it's bad! You you know how much I have ranted and raged about the fairy tale shit, Raymond. You know, this is like my this is I, my berserk th- th- button. Th- this is literally you, I'm sorry, Zell, you've hit the trigger. You have triggered Twilight. How dare you? Yeah. I am so triggered. <laughs> I am so triggered. Oh, I hate it oh, so much. Oh my god, I wish you could swap to your 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 disgusted model. You're, 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 uh, you're, you're, you're uh, uh, I yeah, yeah. I, I wish that I could I wish that I had that set up, but I didn't I didn't it, have time. We, like, we can at yeah. a future point we can elaborate on Ruby's failure to uh really capitalize and or actually like or detrimentally harm the, the fairy tale inspirations that it draws from, partly because it's purely drawing on the Disney versions, not really yeah, on the it, actual versions. Yeah, it, it's drawing purely on the Disney versions, which are already watered down to begin with. And not only that, but it's only the surface level aspects, as though somebody was thinking about d- the Disney versions, but they haven't watched the Disney versions in 10 years. Oh, man. It's it's also it, to, to, to the point about the songs, the song lyrics in Ruby have have meant very little in regards to the actual characters they relate to for years now. Like well, people made entire videos about this several freaking times. Are we still rolling with that shit? Yeah, cuz it it really feels like a lot of the fans think that the songs carry a lot of characterization hard. And I feel like that's a recurring problem yeah, in Ruby just in general that that uh, meta meta things outside of the show just carry the show hard. Yeah, that's absolutely reoccurring as an issue. I accidentally hid my chat. I need to get back up there. Uh oh. Um. Anyway, Come back to us. Yes. Uh. But we look. We could we could sit here for probably half a year talking about that. <laughs> also, oh, that's uh, because I put my thing below. Oh, I gotta move myself back up. Okay. Hopefully that fixes it. Okay. Good. Um. 
trying to position things so that I can actually see everything I need to see while still having his video maximized. Uh, before Discord went down, I did manage to see your desktop Twilight. Um, oh. <laughs> I feel so bad for oh, you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. And we have 163 viewers right now. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying Hello. this. Uh, this the, the, yeah. the two minutes of this video we've gotten through in 40 minutes. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Another well, you did say that this is going to be EFAP. semblance, which allows her to absorb damage and return it to her enemy. Adam, Blake's former romantic partner and abuser, is capable of doing the same, but through a weapon. He yeah. puts weapons and even people between himself and leaks his power. Well, yeah. And you know what's really strange <laughs> about that is that every single semblance is entirely unique. Yep, entirely unique. Totally but also, unique. He he acknowledges former lover, as in she is bi the bisexual. She is not the lesbians. That that is something that that must be noted specified. Yeah, must be noted. Uh, they they are the they are the bisexuals. They are the bumble buys. Gang puts Bumble herself bye. between those she cares about and has to bear the pain to use the power. It's a contrast built into both characters on a bone deep level. So yeah, Bumblebee started off with a strong basis in concept, theme, and character before anyone in the audience no. had so much. Wrong. Oh, no, like like, admittedly, no, the Adam the Adam comparison. The Adam comparison is the closest thing that you've said here. The other two are just, I mean, one is just coincidence. The one in the middle is just awful. And the one on the right where it's like, oh, right. she dated two people that have similar semblances. That is the closest you have said come to uh, saying a true statement on this matter so far. Yeah, it it just is. I, want, I see what I want to see. Therefore, it is a connection. And even if I were to really, like, agree with the uh, symbolics of this, you know, that all the, th oh, all of these are 100% evidence of, what was it, Blake and Yang going to be a thing by the writer's own admission, what, whatever, whatever, that says nothing about how well it's done. Absolutely nothing. Oh, we planned this for 20 years. What does that tell me? Nothing. Yeah, it, 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 nothing, none of this goes towards anything. And this is an important thing. A lot of people love, oh my God, $10 from uh, Oscar Borja Jr. Or is it Borja Jr.? I don't know. Why do these people always use the fairy tale angle? It makes no sense. Yang is Goldilocks and Blake is supposed to be Belle and Adam is the Beast. Also, the concept makes no sense. Well, not, on, not only that, but people people mix up the the fairy tale inspiration so much so blake is supposed to be like she's supposed to be bell but she is also supposed to be adam but adam is also supposed to be adam but so is yang like what what's going on like so like there there is adam, an adam is supposed to be gaston and adam but blake is supposed to be adam uh, and Blake is also supposed to be Adam, oh. but also Bell. To, to be clear, for those on. who might not remember or just don't know, that Adam is the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Yes, that is that is the official name, yeah, the the quote unquote official name of the Beast from a a, a video game that a PC game for for Beauty and the Beast, and that is literally why Adam is called Adam in the show. But to be clear, there is an art to doing obscured references and like um vague vagary ambiguity doing ambiguity in your theming like the idea that all three characters in this dynamic could represent different aspects of the different characters in those stories that's actually a great idea i love it it's wonderful and like the idea of being able to explore that the problem is they're all contradictory of one another it seems like yeah. they, they they don't when you actually dive into it, which is the fun of an ambiguous th theme like that, when you actually dive into it, you go, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, well, it doesn't really work if you think about it. Well, this thing over here is, oh, no, that's actually kind of, uh, no, okay, how about this? Um, I mean, that one's kind of bad, but, you know, maybe about this one? Eh, okay, that one kind of sticks. And then this one, like, you go through the list and you maybe get a 25% hit rate, and it's that's not a good sign. Yeah, no, I I would say only a ten percent hit rate. Oh, um, 
<laughs> Unfair, but you're the we, expert on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the the thing I like we weren't originally going to get into it, but since we have because he's harp because he's going on about it, like the thing that really makes it kind of disgusting to me that they're saying that it's a reversal of the fairy tale is that the the point one of the points of Beauty and the Beast as a story is that looks are only skin deep. You have to look beyond who they the the ugly persona of this monster to see the humanity within and they are saying no there is nothing beyond the the physical characteristics but he he is nothing but a monster so the the theme that they are actually saying with this by making adam the bad guy and adam is also supposed to be the beast is that you shouldn't you don't have to look beyond the surface level he is nothing but a monster uh, was Adam actually from Adam Ezekiel? Oh my God! Uh, Adam actually was Adam actually All these changed Adams, in God damn it. Volume Three, uh, or was he e always an evil XBF that gets brought up a lot too? That is uh, a point that I can I can fully say it doesn't matter. We didn't get enough of Adam leading up to Volume Three to actually understand who he was. We got yeah, we don't know. We don't know anything about Adam. Before he shows point. up in the black trailer, until the black, until the 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 Adam trailer in Volume Six, and even then, it doesn't really give us a good look at who he is as a person. It just gives us his history with the White Fang, which in itself is simply yeah. just tied to well, he was in the White Fang and he radicalized along with the rest of them. So yeah, yeah and then yeah. White Fang, not even getting into our little fleshing out the White Fang subplot, it like already was. It's really, really weird and it, confusing. All this symbolism to their fairy tale shit. It yeah. barely adds to the characters aside from aesthetics. That's the sort of track record I'm looking at. Yeah. And it, it just really is frustrating because it really does feel like they had a, a lot more things going on behind the scenes. But because they never showed it to us, they just kind of kept on going on and had this acted as though all of these things ha had been shown when it really hadn't been it i oh, it's just yeah. it's just really like disappointing I <laughs> okay like i said in my video time waits for no ruby <laughs> it's a contrast built into both characters on a bone deep level so yeah, Bumblebee started off bone with deep. a strong basis in concept, theme, and character before anyone in the audience had More so like much More like deep. It. Got now em. then, volume <laughs> one. Oh, you know, our just because you say some profound things Ruby doesn't Rose, mean that it's the true. The young huntress was venting about her trouble socializing and the sister's attention was turned too. to Blake reading by candlelight. Interestingly, you can see Yang beginning to smirk before she even knows that Ruby and Blake have met and used that meeting as a pretext to what what no Bro, that's what? you're you're stretching she was, hard okay yeah, you are stretching no, so makes, hard no, 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 no. okay so you hard are stretching so hard okay let me just say this let me just say this hey, you, wait, wait, pop, 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 be, hold, hold your comment actually you even looking at Pfizer. I, mean, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I think he's on a delay uh honestly i think he's delayed a little yeah. bit so i i, I want to get, get through this scene with him and then we'll comment on it because we have a lot of thoughts, I imagine. Okay. Yeah. Introduced them to Blake and pretty much oh. instantly stumbled over herself in a bid to compliment Blake. Hello! I like your bow. Thanks. It goes great with your pajamas. Right. This will come back later. Though things... <laughs> oh, God, no! No, come on! That is not... That's not, what we're, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're okay. doing. Okay, all right, no, okay. That's not what we're doing. All right, no, I, I know what he means. He means that the flirting thing is yeah. going to come back later. Fine, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But the way that we... <laughs> it's like, like the, the bow in the pajamas, like the pajamas will return in Avengers Endgame. <laughs> oh, oh, God, that gave me a good laugh. Mm. You All right. So now we can one? talk about we can talk about the scene. Kaiser, go off. Yeah. All righty. So, if I remember this scene correctly, Yang was already smirking quite a bit during it, like even before Blake even came to the She was oogling the guys in the room. 
That's yes, why she was smirking. That, that was her first reaction. That was her first reaction. Yang was looking to get that hot, sweaty D. All right? Let us be absolutely clear in this scene. Okay. Yang was, was like, Ruby, the minute the minute that your head hits that pillow and your eyes close, I am slipping out of this, and I am finding the nearest bathroom with five of those guys over there. That is exactly oh what God. Yang is thinking. Oh, my God. <laughs> got some fanfic writers in the chat. Don't give them any idea. For the record, I am All being right. facetious, but she was oogling the guys, and that is why she was smirking. All right, let's be. Oh, Oscar has another oh, yeah. super chat oscar damn already you are just ten amazing um what he said is wrong ruby was the one uh talk about blake and how she met her trying to make friends with ruby also uh before that she was checking on guys and purring at them exactly what i was saying yes yeah. and uh you you have more to say on this i didn't mean to interrupt you but i wanted to get that um comment in <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was going to say around similar things. And, like, another thing is, is you cannot judge shit by the, number one, the lackluster voice acting in the in the first season, which can mean almost anything at this point. And also just by the bad, like, facial animations and expressions the characters have at that point. Because yep. to anyone looking at this shit for the first time... It doesn't look like Yang is interested in Blake. That just means that's just her being cocky and jovial as usual and basically trying to bug Ruby to talk to people. Yeah, that's a, Yang's that's entire so arc in the very first first section of volume one is literally just to get Ruby to make friends. That's that's really what she's trying to push to do. It, like it, it, she has no focus on Blake. And now, admittedly, I challenge you on the bad voice acting because I actually really like their first meeting where she's trying and just kind of fumbling over herself. I do actually find that endearing. Okay, maybe it's just like it's been a while since I've seen that scene exactly since the few months after you know. But we just watched I've it. I like I like the whole. I like your I like your bow. It goes good with your pajamas. Like you can. You, it's one of those nice scenes where you can kind of see how Yang is like her, her, her cogs are spinning in, in different directions and she's trying to figure out right. how to like thread things together and then absolutely biffing the landing on it. It's great. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. really have anything to say about the voice acting uh, unless if it's like especially egregious. But I just want to say that like, first of all, you're both you're both canceled because you're not allowed to say that Yang is checking out guys like that's not allowed. She she's only doing it because she has to pretend that she's into guys for some reason, even though that this is a world that has never really had any issues with uh, the gays. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I expect my cancellation to come in the mail any day. No. <laughs> mm. uh, also, you got another periodic one. Pete jokes on you. Like I'm already I'm in a bunker right here now. with how much Zelda <laughs> makes context. But I'm sure that won't happen very often after this. A smiley face. A winky face. Oh, getting spicy. Oh, Pete, Pete, you, Pete you saucy motherfucker. You must be this oogling guy, the guys in I, the I ballroom. Period P is my friend. Yeah, Period P is my friend. We talked about this shit a whole lot. I told him that, that this video was coming, and he decided to watch ahead of us. Oh, so that's yeah. Oh. <laughs> no spoilers, please. I would like to be yeah. an angered in appropriate, reasonable fashion. Yeah, um, I yeah, I Pierre, will I will cool. probably agree that Zell does seem like the person to probably omit things in order to cater to what he perceives and what he wants to say about something. He just seems like that kind of person based off of the the one interaction that I've had with him. The person, uh, Jake the surgeon, says the person who says Yang was pretending to like men eats crayons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's something that I've okay, legitimately Jake, seen as an argument. Jake, you, how dare you insult the proud members of the U.S. Marines that way? All right, they don't watch Ruby. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, thanks for thanks for the chat, uh, Jake okay. the Surgeon. Let, let's another good small Ruby tuber. Quickly became yeah. messy thanks to Blake's own weariness of people and a squabble breaking out between Yang, Ruby, and Weiss. The seed, however, has been planted. No. When we next see them no. together, Blake no. chose to observe Yang's battle with a pair of Grimm like secret during the initiation before jumping in to assist with the last Ursa. 
Despite having clearly chosen Yang as her partner, she looks away from Yang at first, giving her time to back up or look away rather than force the partnership. Yang meets her eyes and it's... No. What? No, that was just... Yeah, that was Blake being dramatic. She was being like, bitch, I just did that. And Yang... Yeah. And that's why Yang responds, I could have taken him. Blake was like, I took this thing down with one hit. Yeah. Meanwhile, Yang she was over here having yeah. a fucking temp temper tantrum over her hair getting cut. Like, that's why it was done the way it was. Yeah, what the fuck? Oscar, stop being so it generous. It makes sense for Blake to... <laughs> Oscar, God, you don't understand? I hate your namesake in the show. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Oscar. I, I love your yeah, namesake that's, in that's the show. Uh, Yang was... Uh, Trying to make small talk so Blake and Ruby talk about uh, to talk about and be friends. Also, the other flirts with Blake make no sense. Jake the surgeon. I am an expert in the mental illness that Ruby inflicts. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually yeah, a great yeah, angle like, that he is surgeon. Like... <laughs> Storyteller. True. Yeah. Like, but yeah, uh, Blake wasn't, this isn't even a flirting scene from, from what I remember about it. Like, no way. Not even a little bit. Like, it, everything is a, say, everything is a shipping know. scene when you have your shipper goggles on. I, I was going to say, like, that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, if anything, uh, Moop was like, if anything, Yang's temper tantrum should have been a red, uh, to over her hair should have been a red flag to Blake based on that logic. Yes. Yes, it should have, because the minute you accidentally tug something in bed, oh my God, you're just fucking dead, Blake. I mean, there's no way to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> All right. Which you'd think would be bad given how she just got off of a toxic relationship with someone who, by Zell's own admission, is pretty similar to. Unfortunately, yeah, when you have, when you've been in a toxic relationship, you often seek people who are very similar, which is why I am very uncomfortable with this ship. <laughs> it's begun. I could have taken him. Well, looks him? away from Yang at first, giving her time to back up or look away rather than force the partnership. Yang meets her eyes and it's begun. I could have taken him. Okay, that was a weird cut. What's line, more, narratively, Blake and Yang are consistently framed alongside Juniper's romantically coded dynamics, Arcos and Renora. Pira what? was romantically interested in Jean and specifically sought him out as a partner. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. And we don't know whether or not they rent. sought each other out. This too will come up again later. What okay. follows proves okay, to be right. comfortable. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't. Zell, you know uh, who you're admitting from this. <laughs> you know who you're admitting from this, right? Weiss and Ruby, who we're all pretty sure at this rate aren't going to be romantically entangled. But here's a hot take, all right? Yeah. White Rose has far more legs to stand on than Bumblebee ever has and has been consistent in the, having these legs through the entirety of the series starting from volume one starting from almost episode fucking one all right so don't don't pull this shit on me you're admitting that because you know Raymond, it hurts your I argument you have a, i hope you have a secure bunker also it, it sounds like an animal it sounds like an Animal Planet documentary because he has that that so that sensual uh, British David Attenborough voice. That that's what he's trying to do. That's why it sounds like an animal documentary. Should I should I put on a British Attenborough voice now? Yeah, British Attenborough. <laughs> British Attenborough. Yes, the, the more British Attenborough. Yes. <laughs> or or I can I can put on the Benedict Cumberbatch and talk about penguins. Penguins. Pa pa pang penguins. Penguins. Pangolins. Pangolins. <laughs> Pangolins are adorable. Pangolins? Uh, Oscar, two dollars. Uh, do not worry. I hate Oscar from Ruby as well. Okay, good. We're all in. We're all in agreement. Oh, there, except for Twilight. I, I'm sad. I am self hating and, Oscar. And, in all honesty, I don't hate him. I hate what he represents. It's it's more more accurate. Uh, yeah. The, the poor kid has been through a lot, even though I have enjoyed the shit he has gone through. <laughs> yeah. Um. To to be fair, I don't actually care about Oscar. I I just like the potential that he has, and therefore I I really 
want to protect him and defend him for his potential, but I know that he'll never have it. <laughs> Isa, Isa, god dang conspiracy theory stringboard nutter, my brain is boiling. Okay, first, Isa, we're not even four minutes into the video. Secondly, Isa, yeah. this isn't a conspiracy board. This is literally just a, a, a single, like, cork board with a picture of Yang, a picture of Blank, and a single string between them. That's all this <laughs> is. A picture of Blank. A picture of Blank. <laughs> And that string is made of gold. Freaking 55 bones. Holy shit. Oh, wait. No, it's $5. It's, it's, right it's Australian $5. $5. So it's actually more. Uh, seeing this uh, much reach about Bumblebee is making my IQ rapidly drop. Uh, we all know they had to plot hole sun to help this ship sail. Oh, God. I cannot wait to talk about that. Yep. To yep. Yep. Have a relationship. Oh, yeah. They find the relics without difficulty, make each other laugh and smile fondly, look to each other for advice in dangerous scenarios, and blend their skills easily on the battlefield. Of all the partnerships at Beacon, their ease is only matched by Ren and Nora's lifelong relationship with notable romantic coding. Okay. No. <laughs> you know that last thing where they were teaming up and working together seamlessly? That was on orders from Ruby for all of Team Ruby. Yeah. So that was them working in tandem with Ruby and Weiss as well, who were equally working as well together, if not better, because both of them were actively contributing to the thing that they were doing at that time. Also, so what you're saying the... is this is a foursome. <laughs> yes, pollination, true ship, end game. Make it happen. Also, Rosa. the reason why <laughs> Ren and Nora work so well together is because they actually have known each other. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are romantically attracted to one another just because they work well together. One of my favorite tropes That's to it. experience, yeah. and it's very rare to find it. It's more rare than a slow burn lesbian romance, mind you. <laughs> um, but one of my favorite tropes Ooh. is the idea of two people who vehemently hate each other but understand each other well enough that they can fall into sync really fucking well on a heartbeat. Absolutely. Like, mm. I, 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 I love that trope so I'm much trying to too. think of a good example off the top of my head. Um, it's very hard to think of examples. Um, also, apparently, uh, I'm when I was doing my, my when I was doing my slow burn research, uh, slow burn ABO romances are actually very common, according to this one person I found on Reddit. Well, I'm glad we know where that one person on Reddit is looking. That. Yep. <laughs> the, uh, you know, if you're into it, you're into it. Um, yep. Let's see. At least on Nora's end, there's not as much. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Of all the partnerships at Beacon, their ease is only matched by Ren and Nora's lifelong relationship with notable romantic coding, at least on Nora's end. There's not as much okay, else to that, say about fair, volume yeah. one as it was a short volume, but I suppose I should also cover some. Blake's romantic red herring. You Introduced have as a jovial super blonde chat? with a friendly yeah. All right, we can oh, pause. We, we can pause there because we have things Ooh. to talk about with Sun. Ooh. Oh, basically, Oscar Borgia. Yeah, buddy. Dude, dude you need the money. If you, uh, Keep the money, man. Oh, my God. Uh, oh. Bumblebee, yeah, uh, which crazy. I cannot stand in any shape or form of it. Uh, if I would have forced to choose who get together, who I would rather have seen Weiss and Blake because of the story and Anne's themes. Also, I have to go. We'll return. All right, Oscar, have a good day. Thank you. Have for a good the, day. Thank you for the generosity. Yeah, have a man. good Holy one, shit. buddy. You, you spent about like freaking a hundred bones on us. That's very nice of you. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. The, uh, but yes, let's talk about sun. Shall we? The man yeah, that was sun. romantically yeah. coded up through volume one. Five volume, yeah. five volumes of romantic teasing, and mind you, he has probably had more screen time with Blake than Yang has. Yeah, hey, up until it's that very point. unfortunate. Yeah. It's very unfortunate, especially when you have a romance that's set up from the beginning for these girls. Now, to be fair, you can have the scenario where they might have gotten together, but they just didn't work out but that was never established in the show. So like you didn't you didn't let that ship sink first before you went on to the other ship. You, you know that right. was it Jean-Claude Van Damme is, that tried to that ride like, 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 like he like rode two trucks and did the splits between them as they were like trying to drive apart slowly. Like I'm yeah. imagining that but it's Blake <laughs> on different boats. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. And of course during yeah, this both like, Yang and Sun have nosebleeds because you know uh-huh. Uh Jake the Surgeon's son finds someone who isn't a sub font is filth. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, man. Lord you Jake, you that. are on fire tonight. You can't say that. You, you won't be allowed fire. in bail. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Also, yeah, I even though that I, I don't agree with the wording, but I agree. <laughs> I will also protect Sun yeah. from her. Sun is too good for her. He is he is precious and he is a uh, Son Wukong. And I I, yeah, ha I, I am obligated to love him. It's uh, crazy. I, yeah, like Sun it's, okay, if I had my way, Sun would be too good for Blake. But fact of the <laughs> matter is, like, Sun has done way if we look at just the first three volumes by comparison, arguably, anyways, and I would definitely argue this, Sun has consistently added more to Blake's development than Yang did. Yep. Yep. And has done more things that would code them as a couple anyways. Where he's yep. with Yang, the 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 the, the sim what was it? The messaging as Zell is trying to outline here is tenuous at freaking best. And there's barely all that much that Yang added to her in the first three volumes. So it's like why in the world would they Put this much time on Sun if they're not even going to do anything with him. Barbara Shaw movie. would uh, at Celtic Phoenix. Would you consider Sun X Cali, dude? We already know she was tapping that. We all know <laughs> she was tapping that. All right. Yeah, look, hey, look. Yo, I, I was gonna say if you want to read this far into everything, if you want to read this far into everything that you see in Ruby, to the point that characters locking eyes is a is equal to marriage. All right. The way that she said like. Yep. That boy does run his mouth in volume four. Run his mouth. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is so you, many. You, you know. We that woman know. was getting the you banana. Know. She was yeah. getting the plot banana, all right? Oh, she was getting the plot banana hard. Listen, it so. was on like Donkey Motherfucking Kong, people. <laughs> there you go. I, I still prefer all of my ships uh, for it. But the characters aren't even going to be the Ruby characters. Yeah, I was going to say I'm done with them. So Wait, your 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 adaptation. Uh, the the am I allowed to say what ship it is? Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, your your adaptation of Sun and Weiss as a ship is actually really cute. Snow monkeys. Yeah. Very very cute. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I would say like if I were to give Sun a ship, I mean people are going to hate me for this because she's gay. But Ilya, like I actually thought like fixing Ruby Volume Five had them teaming up a lot. And their dynamic, just naturally from their personalities, ended up being really good to the point that, like, at the very least, Ilya is going to be Sun's like best man at a wedding. Uh, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah. I will, I will be we, here for really like the epic friendship. Portion. Yeah, that's actually something to discover yeah, as well. So, honestly, if I had my choice, if if I, if I had my choice with Sun. Uh, honestly, you can fit him in with just almost anybody. I've seen a lot of people who managed to write, like, Sun and Yang pretty well. Because, especially in terms of just casual sort of things, but also in terms of, like, deeper emotional, like, interactions with one another. Because they tend to, like, Yang and Sun tend to be similar in a lot of ways, but the key differences is where a lot of these things shine. And I've seen some people have it so either Yang or Sun can be the straight man in different situations. And I really think yeah, that's no, really it, cool. It, they, they're, they're not a bad grouping. I mean, Sun works with a lot of people. He's just... He's, that's because he's, he's a he's a charismatic based. person. Sun is just based. Yeah. Yeah. He's too good for this show. For he to is. Say about volume <laughs> one, as it was a short volume, but I suppose I should also cover Sun, Blake's romantic red herring. Introduced as a jovial blonde red with a herring. friendly attitude and a penchant for excitement, or yellow combat, herring. he has many surface-level <laughs> traits in common with Yang, but we'll see that that is only skin deep. He takes an obvious interest in Blake, but also establishes a recurring theme in their relationship, with him not <laughs> really understanding where Blake is coming from without her spelling it out for him in detail. Nearly two days and you're giving me nothing but small talk and weird looks. Yeah, like that. This is also when he falls naturally into a role he will occupy for some years as Blake's supportive ally and exposition sponge, i.e. someone who Blake can explain the facets of faunus and the white fang culture to. It's almost like More it's bad writing. Some yeah, it's, he, he should uh, already know. He is a faunus. Like, the white fang, maybe he ha knows less about because it's a, it's, you know, deeper gut, you know, there's an organization. There's things you obviously aren't going to know about you know, say any organization you know about today. But, like, 
I, I don't yes, know. Yeah. Like, what the? Why are you explaining Faunus problems to a Faunus? Like, I get Vacuo is different, but he lived in Mistral, which is racist as shit, as we've seen. Yeah, it it just and Vacuo ate you know, much better, they, honestly. Yeah, they didn't they didn't plan yeah. any of that, <laughs> and it's it's just the exposition is there for the audience, not for Sun, and that makes it really blatant. Also, can I just say I really hate yeah, not to mention Vacuo. Her. Yeah. Also, okay. it kind of, uh, at least in my opinion, it kind of shoots the argument between Blake and Weiss in the foot because they start arguing over the fact that Weiss is being a little bit rude towards Sun for doing illegal mm -hmm. shit when he's from a continent that is anarchy. And like the shit. Yeah, kind of essentially, like I like to call it yeah. Saudi a remnant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like their their whole thing is supposed to be that they are a lawless land, and that you get by if you can sur if you can survive, then you do whatever you want. So like, what what does he have? What does he care about the rules and stuff? And she seems like a very rule oriented person, so she's upset about that. Which is a really good romantic dynamic, which is why Sunflakes is a really good ship for me. But, uh, like, they they start <laughs> off on this argument on a false narrative because he is being a degenerate. He is being uh, all of the things that Weiss has called him that Blake gets upset about. So, like, why the argument is there just to start tension. It's not there because it was it came about naturally. It, it's one of those things that if Sun weren't hot, um, it, it's <laughs> very possible. It, it's a, it, the, the difference between um, flirting and harassment. It's it's that meme. Yeah. If Sun weren't yeah. hot, it'd be he's he's hot. Therefore, he's a a a, 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 a oh, an Errol Flynn roguish. Uh, type. Meanwhile, also, if he weren't attractive, he would be a dirty imagine, criminal. Also, I yeah. I, I can, imagine, imagine Stun, but he's movie Bob. <laughs> I can there do, I can do the gymnastics thing too, because I can say, oh look, Weiss has a crush on Sun because she was very adamant about follow following him after he ran away. That she she just it, she finds him really hot. The whole the whole racism thing also, was just trying to save face. She doesn't actually believe it. It's that that is my her. that is my Zell Rider shipping cope level. <laughs> like this this is what it is. Also, Code Blaze fate. Also, Code Blaze fate. My fellow new type. He says, but he knew literally everything she said and went. Why you explain this to me? I know all this already. Yeah, that kind of, that's kind of really weird, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's incredibly weird. And. You know, I we didn't say this at the beginning of the stream. I probably should now, at the very least. Do not reach out to Zell Writer. Do not contact Zell Writer. Do not talk to Zell Writer in any way other than cordially. Like, do not in any way go out and harass Zell Writer. We are taking the piss out of Zell's video, but I do not want anyone going out and harassing Zell. I just it just occurred to me that if this could be misconstrued as calling for hate or anything against. Look, we disagree with Zell on Zell's opinion on things. That's that's where the that's where the line ends. We're, we're not. Yeah, no, we're go past that. We're we're criticizing what he is saying. We are not criticizing him as a person. Well, I mean, we can it, we, we can yeah, judge him much. as a person, but like we we can't we can't like well, we're not calling for anyone to harm him. We that's that's yeah, no. that's very clear. Yeah, yeah. We, leave this man that's alone to do his like, thing. No, I'm joking. I'm yeah. Joking. No, yeah, no way. What? Like the last thing you want to do, we're talking about freaking a freaking cartoon at the end of the day about a relationship that isn't even real. So like we're just talking about whether or not his opinions are informed by the evidence that he will showcase in this video. And if it's not, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. And we'll laugh at him yeah. openly. Yeah. All right. So that's a good point. Some final notes on Volume 1. Beyond how easily they get along is the fact that Yang still clearly chooses to be on Blake's side even after discovering she was a terrorist. 
One could also argue the song Wings that plays at the end of the volume is a Bumblebee song. As oh my god, stop! Attitude, no, the songs. And also appears again in volume 5 as a light motif when Blake reunites with the team, the and specifically when she sees Yang. Volume 1, by and large, serves as a basis for a strong friendship between Blake and Yang, rather than out and out romance, but everything from the pre series points I noted are oh still hard coded into these characters. Oh now my on god. To volume 2. Okay. Agree so, to disagree, my man. Agree so to disagree. I can finally start popping this out because what I did Yay. before this stream, it, it, over the last two or so days, yeah. I have gone through every single Ruby volume up through volume eight. I did not get to nine. I ran out of time. But I've gone through every single Ruby volume up through volume eight. And I counted, A, the total length of the volume as best as possible, depending on various factors. Some of them had their openings and endings boohoo whatever um but then there's also the amount of time that bumblebee as a pairing shared on screen or reasonably or yeah, shared on screen were in a scene together or reasonably could have been thinking about one another at any one given time so if you have blake sitting alone and looking wistfully out a window and you get the feeling that she might be like thinking about yang it counts and I basically tried to do that as best as possible to kind of give a fair oh, amount. Shit. Jake, uh, Jake came out with some Sonichi lore. Jake? Oh, yeah, Kaiser. Ruby is real. The dimensional merger is going to happen any day now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, okay. Does this mean that Mega Man X is real? Does this yes. mean that Kingdom Hearts is real? Because I'm yes. Yes. About that. Yes. <laughs> I am so uh, I'm so ready to become a Digi Destin. Give me my builder. fucking Keyblade. Give me my fucking Digimon. Uh, so anyway, yes, Volume Give One me, has a total boss. length of one hour, fifty two minutes, and fifty seconds. This averages out to this this maths out to six hundred uh, six thousand seven hundred and seventy seconds. The amount of Bumblebee time is twenty one minutes fifty two seconds. And that is a total of 1,312 seconds total. Without doing the math, guess what? how much percentage for Bumblebee time there was in Volume 1? 0.2%. I, I just gave you the math. Thank you for the pity, oh, Ryan. Oh, my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. I, I was... Yeah. I was... 19.37%. Um, that is... I... I I've told Twilight like this multiple times. I'm being yep. very generous with what could constitute a scene in just involving the two being present together at the same time and or thinking about one another. So it's not even a purely they are they are actively like making eyes at each other or even talking to one another. They're just standing in the background most of the time. 90% of the time they're just standing in the background. Yeah. So 19.37%. 19.32. Okay, 37, not 32. All right. Yeah, so that's the, that's the statistic I can give. I, I would hope, I had hoped to go back through and actively tag every single possible scene with whether or not it had romantic coding in it and then time that as well. Um, oh, well, also, I want to say that, like, he he's going with this narrative that it was basically a love at first sight thing, but how, why is that necessary? Well, it's because yeah, of if it. in fact a lot of slow burns don't always start out as love at first sight. In fact, he was no. he was shitting all over love at first sight freaking stories in the beginning of the video. What are you doing? Yeah, he dog? was. Yeah, he was. But he's he's basically cat, acting as though it was just toast cat. Toast cat. <laughs> Yeah, Toast, Toast Cat. Cat. Uh, but he, Toast yeah, Cat. he was basically saying that they that Yang was wanting to go and and chat Blake up basically from the moment that they first saw each other, and it's like that is that's that's ridiculous, demonstrably untrue. You can you can still have a perfectly functional Bumblebee relationship without them having any kind of romantic relationship, basically from the first time that they meet each other. It 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 can happen. It's it doesn't have to be romantic from the beginning, but 
Ah, it's yeah. often sometimes better that way well, as well. I don't. Yeah. I don't agree that love at first sight contradicts the concept of a slow burn because you could have people hiding feelings for one reason or another. That could. Yes. Yeah. It, it, so. Yeah, I disagree but with you. You would that. have to prove whether or not they were freaking hiding their feelings in this case. Yeah. <laughs> cause, um. Like. I I have a slow burn romance going with, in a role play of mine, sort of in a way. Um, the the problem isn't necessarily that they aren't that they can't get together. It's that they can't be together in a full context because the relationship is between a human and a robot in a world where uh, it's illegal to be in a relationship with a robot. Uh, Josh Thomas Moore knew. Uh, you're recommending me uh, Yuffie and Ayn uh, and Annis from The Magical Revolution of the Reincarnated Princess and the Genius Young Lady. First of all, I despise that title. Secondly, <laughs> I watched it and I actually was kind of bored to tears by it. I, I was not oh. very interested in that anime. Um, it did not grip me. Uh, and that is impressive um, considering it has unlike a lot of Yuri anime that finish usually before the, the romance actually like culminates in anything meaningful it actually has a marriage and kiss at the very end like i don't get me wrong i appreciate the anime for at least doing that and going through with it i just it could not grab into me it didn't grip grip me while i was watching it oh my god i love that image it's great Oh what, yeah, Dederex, Dederex in chat. He loves doing these freaking doodles based on people's jokes and live streams, and he made this based on Raymond's joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I get that up on screen? Oh, I don't think I can. Oh no. Uh, we can do that at every, the end when we're done. Everyone we get get get. End. Oh, let me try and. All right, everyone get. It's gonna be weird for a minute. I apologize. Um, actually, can I just? I just pop. How's that look? That you can't. You can't he also tell. made this. Oh. I can't do anything. It's wigging out on us. I can't do anything. Oh, that's now. sad. That's sad. We'll, 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 pop, we'll try and pop it up on stream yeah, at the end. Um, yeah. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. Let's keep. Let's continue this video. We're oh, now I can kind of see it in the corner there. This is the one where we really get some wind in our sails. The volume opens showing Yang and Blake as being affectionately intimate, and Yang, Blake's mm. current partner, being framed against <laughs> Adam, Blake's former romantic partner. Yeah, There's finish. also the classic... I love it when you're feisty. All right. We'll stop. We'll cut there and go back to what you just said about <laughs> that opening scene, where Yang and Blake... What, 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 what's the... Yang and Blake is being affectionately intimate. Affectionately intimate. They are sitting with Ow. at least half a person between them. Because, here's a hot take about Ruby. They are terrible at positioning characters because they just need a whole bunch of space. Look yeah. to any of the art streams on Volume 5 yeah. with Jay and, and I talking about how they just ba build big open rooms because they're afraid of having characters sitting right next to each other. Um, yeah, not only that, but they I think that they just have a problem in general with sizing. Which is really easy to fix. I know, because I built my own room as the final assignment in my first year. It's not that hard. Um, but also... But listen, Twilight. By Twilight, this angle alone. Understand. By this I, angle I, I, alone. Yeah. Sorry. What were you saying, Kaiser? The, this delay is crazy. I, yeah. I I was just going to say, but Twilight, okay? The, this listen, we got. So what you're saying is we gotta whip those animators harder. That's what you're saying, right? Well, well not <laughs> actually not animators. They they would be the uh, the modelers, because a lot of people. It, this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, but people conflate animators with modelers and riggers and uh, other types of artists. Like not not everybody who who does the physical stuff in the animation are animators. The I, animators I, I are just the say, things that make people move. Riggers, riggers, especially modeler riggers, are the 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 sound engineers of the animation world, and yeah. I I mean that in the sense of no one wants mm. to do the job. Very few people understand what the job is, but they are one of the most absolutely necessary things on the fucking planet. Oh, I understand what it is, and I yeah. hate rigging because it is so technical. And if well, you that's why don't no one wants to get, do that part. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't like rigging. It's like doing plumbing. I don't like rigging, but I, I will if I have to. And it only involves half the shit. Anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, this is not intimate. These are characters sitting next to each other at lunch. Dog, check your fucking eyes. Yeah. And Yang, Blake's yeah. current partner, being framed against Adam, Blake's former romantic partner. There's also the classic... Wait, 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 wait what was that? Showing Yang and Blake as being I, I need to see what... What, Yang, what was that comment in the top corner? Being framed against... Notably, it's Blake's shadow that is framed with Adam. Her relationship with him is... Thank you oh, for I visiting know. Film School 101. Adam <laughs> also, I don't even know that's the case. There's also the classic. I love it when you're feisty. That's deep. Which can almost. That's just a friend complimenting on someone's temperament. That's like, I yeah. Let's I said do... it to my friends. I, I'm not banging finish. them. Exactly, dude. College. Go to any college in urban area, and you're going to see chicks that aren't even that that have never even held hands to each other before say this type of shit to each other. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, it's not uncommon. Well, thank you, Xion. In fact, given Barbara's personality in real life, as far as I've been told, it's probably something that, and basically the fact that, like, Yang is often based off of her character, not the other way around, it's more than likely some kind of joke that she would make to anyone. So unless Barbara is a Casanova, if you know what I'm saying, th this is, this is, uh, this means uh, nothing. Also, Xion... <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you're here on my stream insulting me. <laughs> well, you gave me a compliment. <laughs> you get one point and you immediately lose two. Jesus. <laughs> um, wait, if Yang and Blake are being intimate here, then Weiss is also involved because it's a three. Yeah, exactly. That, that, Weiss is just as close. Yeah. Would certainly be intended it to be read yeah. as flirtatious on Yang's part. The first half of Volume 2 also sees Blake cutting herself off from those around her, growing obsessed with the villain Roman and the White Fang's operations, to the point where okay, she's exhausting crazy. herself the longer that her search goes on. Everyone grows increasingly worried, and Sun once again returns to misdiagnose Blake's emotional state and show himself as equally unsure to everyone else in Blake's circle as to how to help her. So, uh, what does Blake think of all this? She's still being all, you know... Blakey. Obviously. Blakey. In contrast, Yang is entirely confident that she knows how to get through to Blake and get her to practice some self-care. By being <laughs> horribly racist, for the record. By being racist. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to this, because this might be the first legitimate point on Zell's. Chapter 6 is Burning the Candle yep. is the most vulnerable we have ever seen Yang up to this point. She takes Blake aside and confesses her history of losing and being left behind by loved ones. Of the collapsing of her family unit and how her bids as a small child to find her birth mother nearly ended she and her sister's lives. This also establishes Yang as someone grappling with abandonment issues. She is the girl who was always left behind, and as we saw in the previous volume when Blake was discovered as a faunus and fled, Blake's ingrained response is to run away. Now there's a basis for some wonderful dramatic tension. Now, Blake clearly mm -hmm. sympathizes with Yang's story, but argues against her points at first, utterly insistent that she can handle this despite the fact she can barely stand. I can't stop him! You can't even stop me! That is so Babe. awkward. Before then this drawing is... her into a hug, the shocked look on Blake's face says everything. Her entire posture- I, It says, Blake, it, uh, the shock the look on Blake's face says, oh, this is familiar. This is what I got with Adam. Yeah, this is exactly why oh. I don't ship these two. The and I'm like, I I don't, like, whenever it comes to violence against people who are meant to be shipped together, I don't really support it. I don't, I don't ship uh, right. Bakugo and Midoriya. I don't ship the bees. I don't ship Gowry and Lena for the exact same reasons. Because I don't like violence in my ships. Like I can, yeah, and, and like there are ways to do it, but you got to be careful not so to weird. frame it as like a positive because this is being framed yeah. as a positive right here. Yeah. In defensive, right. expecting retaliation, Which is even hurt, more sketchy. Instead, she's comforted and reassured. Yang asks Blake to take care of herself, not just for herself or her goals, but for the people that care about her. Then, framed in golden light and seen from Blake's perspective, she winks and offers to save Blake a dance. Oh this my god, could your prose be even more purple? Anyway, um... <laughs> no, I, okay, so you know what? 
about 90% I, of that I actually agreed with to some extent. I can yeah, I can same, speak yeah. a little bit to the the dance thing because you know, I am a I am one of those female creatures. Um you can dance with a woman without it being a romantic relationship. I danced with a female friend of mine at my prom and I was the quote unquote male of the dancers and I had like no romantic interest in my friend because it was just a dance. It was not a big deal. I, but I think, I guess what Zell would say, you know, hypothet let's say hypothetically that Zell writer is in this chat right now with the three of us, okay? Zell would probably say, yes, that's true, but all this ever look at all this symbolism and evidence I had beforehand that supports this point. Don't you see? See, this is where I would, in my my cut down of all Ruby down to just the, the Bumblebee scenes, <laughs> this is one that I would I would categorize as hybrid because it could be taken one way or the other. Yeah, very easily. I you will could, agree to that. Yeah, you could, you could take this as, oh, it's a friend concerned for a friend and trying to help her get over it, and being this warm, inviting source in their life to be like, hey. Look, I'll save you a dance because, you know, I'm, I want to give you a reason to be there and I'll be there for you. Flip side, you could easily see it be romantic and be like, hey, you know, I, I don't like you to see you go through this. I'm going to try and help you out because I kind of I. And part of the reason why I'm iffy on this is because it feels like it kind of ruins the whole core of the scene if you start to make it in a romantic light because it suddenly becomes mm -hmm. a a selfish reason that Yang is doing it, not necessarily a purely selfless one. Now, we can get into the, the, the semantics of whether or not love is selfish or selfless. There's a whole discussion to be had there about that. But the point yeah. of the fact is, it has selfish components to it. And at this stage in their lives, I would not trust any one of them to actually be mature enough to distinguish them. So I would imagine that there is a selfish component right. if this is romantic, where it's like, I want to pull you out I want to be your big damned hero. Yeah. Also, I just want to say, mm -hmm. Mupa, uh, I slightly disagree. Lena Zelgadis OTP. Lena Zelos secondary OTP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse now, me. That was Raven being upset because Zelos Philia. His Zelos Philia OTP. is OTP. <laughs> and that is a relationship that has gratuitous amounts of violence to it. <laughs> <laughs> I love I'm, that I'm ship to death. Here. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> you're you're sitting, sitting here because you can't participate. Totally I, I want I my angelic, basically yeah. dragon, and my 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 fucking mischievous demon uh, dude to get together. I think they're fucking cute and raise their weird half demon, half dragon baby child that they got from a uh, uh, an eldritch being. Yeah. God, the ending of it, Try was weird. <laughs> it was weird, but it was so good. It was so good. I loved it. <laughs> uh, uh, did you ever read it? I, I found that one really good, really long fanfic. Did you read any of that? Where where Zell and uh, her get together and it's like exactly what I wanted out of it, where they kind of still hate each other. It's great. Yeah, you, you told me about it, but I didn't get to reading it. Uh, I'll, I'll read it someday. Yeah. Uh, find find me a really good Lena Zelfic, please. I will I will try. Uh Adam uh Zilk, uh his take of Sun not understanding Blake's emotions kind of makes sense sort of now that I think about it. That is the only point I will give him for now. No, the thing is it is something that, that fat I'm man not points sure out. Char that. Characters not understanding how characters are feeling? That's fine. In fact, I would say it, it you could yeah. argue in the opposite direction. Yang being so confident about getting Blake to go is kind of weird when you actually look at the totality of their relationship. They haven't known each other that long. Yes. Yeah. So Yang being so confident in this implies that a lot of ha has happened that we haven't seen, which is not really how you want to do things. Else you wind up and, and with what like, do we say? What? Yeah, well, we say here, folks, if it happened off screen, it didn't fucking happen. Yeah. I, I want um, everybody in the chat to say that exact same lie. <laughs> uh, did you miss uh, M3D's super chat as well? Oh, I might have. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, give me all its take on doing compelling character relationship de uh, development in a longer show, but without needing 
to to dedicate too much time to it. Best example I got is Gojo Ghetto. Kaiser would know them. Give me all, our take on doing oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, our take on doing it, or like, are you talking about the concept, or are we talking about like OTPs that we have? I want to specify. Yeah, yeah. I'm that... assuming that he's talking about the concept in general. So, like, in how terms would we do it? That I suppose. That's, yeah, a, I'm not, that's yeah, a, I'm not a difficult sure. question. I have a few planned, but I don't want to spoil those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing I'm writing, Ruby has I'm been the outline of a story myself. Well, I, I would say fixing Ruby, but we actually dedicate a substantial amount of time to the dynamic between Blake and Yang. Um, yeah, right. um, I, I guess my example would be in my novel series, because just like in Bumblebee, there is going to be a very large gap in between the, the main love interests having been together. But like the whole dynamic is supposed to be that they were kids when they separated. And now they now that they're together 10 years later, they have to learn who the other is again, because they're very different people now. Also, guys, guys, stop super chatting. Oh my god! Stop giving me money. Jeez. Yeah, Wait, what am I saying? <laughs> give me more money. No, um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> give me money. Give me money. No, give me money. Uh, give me money. But uh, I guess the better example of this would probably be in fixing Ruby Renora. Would probably be the best way I can point to it. Is well, which is not actually that far off from canon. Canon doesn't do a terrible job with Renora either. It's it's always just subtly in the background. Their dynamic is just very soft. They've been children, childhood friends, and from the get go, you can kind of get a maybe thing going on from from Nora and Ren that it feels like they're kind of always tipping back and forth on whether or not they should land on friendship or on uh, romance, and eventually they're kind of tipped over. By the events that happen in um, Kuo Kawana, not Kuo Kawana, um, Kuro Yuri. Mm. I, I would actually Kuro, give yeah. an example for a fast burn romance, uh, and that is Snow mm. White with the red hair. Because I was those, just thinking that. Yeah, because that is such a good relationship. But the two characters, it's, really it's not really a spoiler because the two characters kind of get together in like the fourth episode. And the the whole story yeah. is the the two characters navigating them being together <laughs> in such a different in such a big power dynamic. Twy, you want to go into uh, it's such a good show. You want to hit on uh, a a dynamic that's fast burn and slow burn simultaneously. Yeah. Peach girl. What? Peach girl. Yes. Peach, Peach girl. girl. Peach I've girl is heard about that. Show. It is. I. I. I I did not expect to like it. That's why, like, it was very like I actually <laughs> yeah. wanted to get it, kind of get out of the way when we watched it. I ended up loving it because it's like it's one of those ones that you get feel good at getting angry at. <laughs> oh yeah, he he raged so hard at uh, Peach Girl. My like, favorite character. I always hear yeah. people always get frustrated at that show, man. It is it's like watching. It's a, good. I, I always hear it, that it's like it's a soap opera. It, it, oh, dude, it like, hits soap opera. It like like it takes all the best parts of a soap opera and just keeps hitting that. It's like a drug addict version of soap opera, where you're just getting yeah. you're just getting the okay. constant I'm high. Gonna... Uh, like to give, list, give, an example, give an example, I, wanna... well, I, I wanted to explain why. Because within the first two episodes, the main couple get together. And yep. the rest of the story is just the fallout of that. And it's yes. amazing. Yeah. Also, Sai is best girl. <laughs> she is also worst girl. Oh, I love her. She... <laughs> she also, you her like, guy. you can you can tell when, Ray like, listening to Raymond needing to pause in the middle of the episode and then have like a 10 minute <laughs> rant was like the best thing ever going through Peach Girl. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like an example that I would put in regards to that is a recent, relatively recent uh, show that came out. I have a bunch of them from like previous like years and things like that. But a relatively recent example is Cyberpunk Edge Runners with Lucy and freaking David. They get together in like episode three, maybe maybe two, and like the rest of the and it's not even. And granted, that is the main like emotional be of the show. But we spend a lot of time with them, you know, spending time with each other as a couple, 
navigating this crazy underground, you know, cyber gang bullshit. And it's just using that as a focal point to explore both of their characters after that point. Here you are, PSA. Yes, I know, I know. You, uh, uh, you uh, know uh, that. I know that's what you were thinking, dog. We have we have way more super chats to hit. Yeah, we have three of them. Yeah, Jake just, the Surgeon. I just want to say, oh. I just want to say quickly. Another another really good example of a slow burn romance is in Fruits Basket, and also Peach Girl yes. and Fruits Basket mm -hmm. are the are my go to examples for what a love triangle is supposed to be. Yes. 110%. Um, Jake the Surgeon uh, says, I can't stand his chronic video essay voice. He sounds like the person that would uh, that would clap at anything. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Oscar Borgia <laughs> says, the burning candle scene is not romantic. It's about Yang trying to help Blake by saying uh, saying she, her, and the white fang Roman is going to get her killed, similar to Yang obsession with Raven, how it almost got her and Ruby killed. Okay, look, that can be construed as romantic. Like you can, like the idea of someone looking out for someone is inherently intimate. How you take the intimacy can be framed no, by just putting a different filter over it. And with shipper with shipper brain in mind, you can filter it that way. There's nothing wrong with yeah. with reading that scene as romantic. It's just it can equally re be read as just normal friendship. Um which would be fine if before or after this point we get substantial amounts of time with both of the characters together as close uh, friends on, building up to a on point with our point, next you know. uh, uh, next one, which is V two skipped to the next semester, and shippers will think that they had so many romantic interactions off screen, like the barely canon comics. Yes, that is what they were banking on. They were banking on people filling in the gaps here when that yeah. doesn't yeah. really help at That's all. That's bad storytelling. I love, can I just say, I love having to do freaking homework to ba have basic understanding of the development of the main characters of the goddamn show. I, I just love that. Periodic Pete that seconds Jake's shit. comment about pumped the whispering. Pumped that into my veins. Which makes it infinitely worse than a stereotypical video essay voice. Yes, it does. Now, we have lingered so much on this, we need to get into more. <laughs> yeah. This episode alone is what has led many fans to go from either not shipping Bumblebee or having thought it was merely a fun fan thing to 100% shipping them. The gorgeous lighting, the framing, the vulnerability and understanding are all fantastic. Thus, while Blake does attend the dance with Sun, she reserves her first dance for Yang. Yang herself, however, did not go to the dance with anyone. By this and point, then she immediately she dances with Sun. Blake. And as you can see <laughs> when dancing, Blake's gaze is drawn to Yang. It's also- Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. One minute. One minute. I gotta Ooh. check that footage. Let me go into it. Uh, it it it's really amazing check how the files. Check the files. you just assume that she's looking after Yang and well like even if she is, that you're assuming that it's romantically coded and not just like I'm trying to understand what this weird lady is on about. Because okay. they have such different personalities. It. She was looking in the direction of her friends. Whether or not that was supposed to be romantic towards Yang, I don't think so. It could just be like a, thank you, Yang, for convincing me to do this. That could be but, it. Yeah. The problem is, is that they don't have Which facial expressions because they're just dolls. So, like, it yes. really kills, it really makes the scene ambiguous. Not to mention having Blake be that, um, you know, she isn't taking that as romantic, but more so saying, as you you just said, Raymond, you know, thanks for helping me with this and, you know, giving me the, the courage to come out here and give me the sense to come out here. Like, that makes sense more with volume two, especially, because in the beginning, like he said, there was that, I like it when you're feisty. If we're supposed to, if we're supposed to interpret that part, as Yang being flirtatious and semi-romantic on her end, but Blake brushing it off, that makes yeah. that's still that's much more consistent with Blake taking it like platonically. Uh, Oscar like Borgia sense. donating ten dollars. I am trying to say her obsession with Roman and the White Fang. Uh, it Yang worried about her friend. Also, the comics are awful, and I hate it. I hate the forced Bumblebee soulmates. It makes Yang <laughs> awful. I know nothing about the comics. Um, uh. I, I only know about the I've Raven yelling at Ruby videos, thing. But they're not all that great. Shion says, yeah. if you like Yuri, please watch Assault Lily Banquet. You'll definitely like it. Yeah, I just saw that. I actually looked it up. 
I don't know if I will. Oh, really? Because like, there's a couple of shows that are just... It, it's a full, like, massive cast of different girls. I have a knee-jerk reaction to that because a lot of shows like that will do... We'll have like just flood a cast with a bunch of girls to get a bunch of Yuri ships going, but they won't really flesh them out. Mm -hmm. Um, And so like it it, kind of smells to me of that. I will, however, look into it. That is a recommendation that I won't I won't turn that down, although you got to give me some time to actually go through things. Um, I have a lot on my plate, like I'm working through the free run the free run manga right now. That's a couple hundred chapters, right? A a, a oh, hell yeah. I love that. I it it is so it delightfully like relaxed. <laughs> Kaiser's yeah, got a free run video it's going. Like, it's like... Hell yeah, I'm working on it right now. She um, should it, it have should come out like at the end. And run. Okay, my idea with Aura, she should have chal- instead of having Aura kill herself, she should have been like, "Hey, Aura, experience all of human emotions." Yeah, that's oh exactly what God. I say. That would have been amazing, and it could lead to a redemption arc. Who knows? Because that's, that's, I would totally ship those two. Just, just that would have been interesting. You you stole that from me when I was talking about how someone <laughs> should wish for all the Cubes to experience human emotion. You know, it it didn't connect, but maybe I did. I'm I yeah. apologize. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jake the sur- surgeon. I almost said the surgeon. Um, <laughs> Jake the sturgeon. Um, sturgeon. You're you're a sturgeon now. Uh, Caiaphas Kane and Amberly Vale are the best OTP. You cannot dispute this. I will meet you atop. <laughs> Active Volcano, if you disagree. Well, I can say they are the worst OTP because they are in Warhammer 40k. And I hate Warhammer 40k. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, them's fighting words. Them's fighting words for nerds, people. Uh, okay, anyway, let's continue this video. It's worth noting that three days after burning the candle air, Monty Oom posted a tweet saying how Oom. good romance is earned, and surrounding interviews had him and other figures referencing how characters are still young, figuring themselves out, and could well already be queer. Asking if there will be any queer characters in Ruby. Sure, absolutely. Um, the, the best part about that is, you know, maybe they're there now because uh, they're kids, so... They're, they're, we ha- we're on a path to try to help them th- discover themselves. A lot of us are for it, even. like a, uh, I have some cast members and some crew members who are like, this would be really cool. But the thing is, we can't just shove it out there. It's just, it has to be earned, which is, which is the better way to do it. Uh, and a lot of these characters, we try to look, look at them outside of their gender, so we just want to do what's natural for them at best. It's also sort of integral to, as ever to remember that Monty Oom specifically said he was aiming for a show where characters were introduced one way, but then as the story went on, we uncovered more layers to them beyond the. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate this quote because it is the most basic shit. It's like, like, oh, it sounds so it profound. It's basic character arc. That's what you're saying. It's a character arc. It's not even a character arc. It's just a character existing. Yes, of course we're going to peel back more layers of them. Of course we are. Why are we here otherwise? Raymond, he looked He looked at a character Raymond, arc and he about... said, if I do this, this will revolutionize storytelling. Listen, we're talking about guys who literally never went to writing school and probably looked up a YouTube video talking about the freaking hero's journey one time and got a big stiffy. Do you really think? I no, but it, it angers me how no one pushes Seriously. back. on This is the thing that I, I hate about a lot of like really professional interviews. They don't really push back on the writers or anyone they're interviewing. They don't ever actually be like, Hey, oh, yeah. do you think maybe that's kind of boring and lame or, or wrong or whatever? Like, I admittedly say it more politely. Fine. That's fair. You can, you can do it in a more, <laughs> more conventional way, but I'm just saying like you, it's basic writing. Uh, let's see. Jake Surgeon says, based Boomer Elf. Mr. Spider236 says, do you guys think that having a romantic relationship within a team-oriented type show ruins team dynamics since two people will inherently care about each other more than the other team as a whole? No, actually. I disagree with no. this. I think really. ideally, no. I you would see any member of the team sacrifice themselves for any other member of the team. That's how I've tried to position Ruby in fixing exactly. Ruby. Is that like, I could easily see Blake taking a hit for Ruby. I could see Ruby taking a hit for for Weiss or Yang. Yang taking a hit for Weiss. I could see, I could see any one of them dying for one of the other girls. I could see any one of them yeah. dying for a member of Juniper. Like I could see yeah. that, and that's an Absolutely. important thing to keep in. You 
just because there's romance doesn't mean anything else. And this is a, a, a big distinction that even I hadn't made until recently because I actually was just watching a video on ADHD and he just happened upon the topic. Um, people seem to value romance above friendship as though it's something higher when in reality it's something different. It's not inherently yeah. more or less yeah. friendship. And this is where like a lot of like incels get trapped. It's like, yeah. what's wrong with being in the friend zone? Uh, yes. Admittedly you want a romantic relationship. Fine. But like, there's nothing wrong with being friends with someone. There is a value, a deep and very powerful value. I have a friend. I, I treat him like a brother. I would die for him. And I know this. And yeah. I know he would very possibly die for me. I trust him in that way. Like, that is a deep abiding friendship. And we are in no way romantic. It's like, that's that's a thing that you can do. Yeah, yeah. basically. And like, don't, yeah. don't anybody like, because... dare say anything to about my friend, the letter W, because I will murder you. I, I am not romantically involved with yeah, her, but I will listen, murder you. Listen, if any of y'all try shit on my fellow new types, Code Blaze Fate and Lone Crit, the absolute champions, you are bringing, I, you are going to have a war, okay? The, these mm -hmm. motherfuckers have stood by me through everything. I absolutely care about them. And they're both handsome individuals, but I'm not into them. Uh, Irish Katana, <laughs> good name. Uh, I'm not a fan of Bumblebee ship. Uh, it's less to do with me preferring Black Sun and more with me feeling that Yang would be like Crow. Hmm. It should be understood as a horizontal uh, um, hierarchy rather than a vertical hierarchy. Are you friendship versus romance? Yes, it's a horizontal hierarchy. You missed one, just oh, above that one that you just read. Yeah. Oh, uh, Oscar. don't worry, I got you. Uh, the comic tries forced this weird thing about soulmates to a bottle cap, which makes no sense. Uh, so what Monty said uh, is about new characters. Look, mm. here's the thing. I don't care what Monty said. Monty is a terrible writer, and I've been on record saying this the entire time. <laughs> like, I, I know that's a hot take in the fandom, out that but fan there, are so, there are so many people that fillet Monty. It's like, the man was a very, very prolific animator, he could get a lot of work done really yep. fucking fast. Whether or not that was healthy or not is debatable. And he cut corners. And he did cut corners, but he did it in relatively he smart corners. ways. He hides a lot of his bad work in very quick motions. And mm -hmm. you know what? That works for him. But at the end I of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> he's not a god. He's not. His, his advice on writing was to watch a bunch of fucking anime. That is not yeah. how you do it. You are you are yeah. limiting your scope of writing inherently by doing that. Uh, he he hired two nope. people who didn't have a single fucking. Well, I guess Miles had a writing credit on some of the worst RVB there ever has been. <laughs> yeah, right. like the... not only that, but also the fact that like then just one quick sec, Twilight. Not only yeah. that, but it's also the fact that like yeah, to your point, Raymond. Oh no. He died. He died. Uh, well, while he's doing that, Monty's um, supposed to kill him. At KR Rika, I see you. I love that yeah, reference. Well, okay, I, I think reference. I'm back. Yes, you're back. Oh yeah, Rika. Yeah, my boy. How you doing? Anyways, the point is, is that um what was it? Uh to your point, Raymond, is that that he didn't even do most of the writing for the show. He did a lot of concepts and ideas and certain names and uh, like so give certain plot mm -hmm. points, right? But even he said in many interviews, and you can easily find them, that he leaves most of the in-between writing, which is arguably some of the most important parts, to Miles and Carrie. So to say that he is the guy who knows like the absolute most about the story who, who in which he isn't even writing most of it is freaking ludicrous. It, I was going to say some of the, the major worldly developments that happen in my writing happen purely by accident, just by trying to write the in-betweens. It just, yeah. it, it happens that way because you need to actually create or destroy things as your story goes along in order for it to keep functioning. It's just a natural, it's a part of the whole kill your darlings thing. It's just a natural part of that process. So yep. 
that's that's where it's like everyone tries there's a whole contingent of ruby fans and ruby critics that try to say oh it's monty's vision it's monty's vision monty didn't have a goddamn vision monty's vision not. was cool anime girls kick ass that was it beginning yeah. middle end that was it and then he basically threw in everything he liked he had to shove an entire mech fight into the middle of volume two on a whim and miles and carrie had to scramble to fix that entirely Mile, as yep. if you want to complain about the writing in Ruby, Monty, Miles, and Carrie all share equal weight because Mo Monty yep. would make incredible demands and Miles and Carrie would not put their foot down. None of them were experienced. Yeah. None of them were good at it. So I'm, I and, just want to get that, rip that bandaid off. You're right. I, <laughs> my, no yep. one cite Monty as yeah. any kind of subordinate. <laughs> I, I also want to say, like, I, I want to be on record by saying, like, I would hate having to work with Monty on both the writing and the animation Ooh. aspect, because I don't think that he had a very healthy worth at work ethic. And I think that he dragged a lot of the a lot of how things were planned and stuff down. The thing is, like, if Monty, yeah, I, I wish I, we knew more about the actual development of things. Like, I wish we could get, yeah. like, maybe talk to Shane about it. If we get, get an interview with him, that'd be kind of crazy. Though, very controversial, mm -hmm. mind you. Oh, but, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I would love to just pick his brain on that. Because if Monty were just keeping to himself in that way, like, he was maybe leading the team, sure. But he was letting them do their own pace type stuff or a healthy pace at the very least. Um, if he was doing that and then doing mm -hmm. himself, he was going overclocking. I have no problems with that. I have nothing. Uh, I have nothing but respect for people that, in their own individual time, go above and beyond. It's when you, as a team leader, yeah, like expect, Hayao Miyazaki, it, it yeah. expect someone to go above and beyond and be like, you must go above and beyond. That is where I start drawing lines because you cannot reasonably expect someone yes. to match that level of passion. Yeah, and. Uh the the thing that that mostly i disagree with and am upset upsetty about when it comes to monty and his work ethic is again the lack of communication because effectively what he was doing was he was wanting mm -hmm. to recreate dead fantasy but then with extra steps and and people along the way but then he didn't change anything from from what it sounds like between dead fantasy and ruby so he was still doing the the dead fantasy work ethic but then he didn't communicate with anyone else so it it sounds like it caused a lot of problems yep. and that shows in the final Not product mention... and the thing is this is a lot yeah. of these issues are forgivable to some extent for volumes one and two because it is right. a Small indie project. They are obviously not professionals in this sphere, and at that time, Rooster Teeth was still, to some extent, you know, a detached from larger influences. Once it hit, but that excuse doesn't work anymore. That, that excuse does not that work excuse anymore. Doesn't work and anymore. A lot with of the, the big boys now have permeated deep into it. It's what I say about like Rooster Teeth, where how they had this very deep interwoven personal um, connection internally like they had this very close like bond internally so they could get away with some of the raunchiest darkest fucked up comments and and crit and and jokes and things they could do anything they want within the office but the minute that you start to open up more and more you got to take on more and more of a professional overtone you can't you, you just you, you can't be flippant about that you need to actually kind of shore things up because then you run into problems we have seen Several of the problems that have come out of Rooster Teeth in the last decade. Yeah. Also, uh, yeah. Code Blaze. Um, yeah, that, that speaks to more of a larger problem with Japanese worth, work ethic in general. And it is a big problem in Japan. It's very unfortunate, but yeah. Japan is literally working itself into a, a population deficit. It is yep. literally the number one cause of why they are not yes. having kids. And I cannot fathom that. Because, like, come on. One of the reasons you work is just so you have time to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do. That's why they have rampant prostitution. Well, I don't know how. Babies. They, no, they have rampant prostitution because they don't have a social life. That is the reason. The whole reason is that you are basically yeah. married to your job, not to your wife. 
and and that has been a thing since the end of World War II. But the thing is, just like with how we haven't gotten out of uh out of daylight savings time since World War II, they haven't gotten out of the the work till you die method of, of work production in in World War II. They need to get out of it, just like we need to get out of the less destructive but still not healthy uh daylight savings. We both need to get out of the World War II stuff. It, it's been it's been 80 years. We need to move on. Ripoff Production says, Monty himself said he wasn't a writer on a podcast before the show started. That's why he b uh, brought Miles and Carrie. They just weren't writers either. Yes, that is yep. accurate. All right. Like I said. <laughs> let's continue this video because we are still like, Oh my God. Yeah. Surface, as opposed to them being laid bare from scene one. This is a slow burn series and the same is true for its romance. In essence, the emotional core, the developments from unhealthy habits to healthy and the re-engagement with the rest of the cast, all that narrative focus and emotional heavy lifting was carried by Yang and Blake's interactions. The dance itself was nearly an afterthought for their characters compared to the intimacy and focus that was happened beforehand. Touching on the- Maybe it was an afterthought because it wasn't supposed to be romantically coded. Yep. The Arcos parallels again, Jean and Pira have a beat for beat emotional conversation, followed by a deniable expression of interest, white dress, and a dance. The rest Oh my god! That is the shallowest fucking interpretation. <laughs> oh, and that's why you tried to set it up early on that they I mirror each other. That. Oh my yeah. god. That is such a reach. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, the rest of the volume is more hyper-focused on the plot, though we do get to see elements of what Yang admires about Blake. Okay, one minute. Followed by a Editor, I know the images aren't perfect, one-to-one -one parallel with the points to the expression of interest. No, it doesn't! Interestingly, now I re-listen to the lyrics, Shine is somehow fitting for Yang and Blake as well. Dance. Oh the my god, volume... stop with the music. Also, the music is not canon. Mike wachowski Pura and John during their segment, sorry you... What? What? Is more hyper focused on. Yes, he's relevant to the plot. Also wanted a cameo by Ooplek with this funny face. Hi, Ooplek. Okay. <laughs> All right. Zell. Look, I'm sure you're Zell. a nice dude. I want to strangle you right now. Stop what? making these editor notes. If you have okay. issues, fix them before you release the video. <laughs> Do you know how many times oh. I run through a fixing okay. Ruby video before I release it? At least like. Five, six, seven times? And those are substantive changes at times. Oh my god, man, have some pride oh, in your man, work. Please, man. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna alright, give slight credit, slight credit to Zell, because I know we've been ragging on this whole time. I will say that his editing in this video so far is it's good. miles ahead of anything else he's ever done. Like, I've seen not just the Robin video that he made that I responded to, but also the other stuff on his channel, at least some of it. And this is miles ahead better. Oh, just astronomically. Oh and I'm very Jake, proud I'm that not he went sure I can... and beyond for this one. Jake, I'm not sure I can read that one on oh. stream. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay, you know what? Don't do that. <sighs> do I... Oh... Uh... It, it look it's fucking funny it's dark it's fucked up but it's funny <laughs> the burn is so slow it has extra chromosomes <laughs> jesus christ jake if i get canceled for that jake, jake that's on you buddy <laughs> okay technically up. it's on me because i brought him here <laughs> oh for shame but yeah, I will say Zell's, Zell's editing has so far been pretty good. It has a very distinct style. I appreciate it. There's been issues, obviously, but it's not it's not perfect, like but it's it. not terrible. Yeah, no, I, I will praise him for his editing, um, though I will give him the critique that his notes, his editor's notes go by too fast. You can't read it. Yeah, and there there's yes. like several of them that have so far been, you could just fix that. Why didn't you just yeah. fix that? Like, oh, I, I had always been afraid about my editor's notes and stuff in my Digimon video, but I, I left them on long enough that you could read them. It's just they're in my handwriting, and I don't know if my handwriting is the best to read on screen. Better than fucking mine. <laughs> I, I know. I made my own font 
using my handwriting. It was a lot of fun. Uh, editor, and we also get a good bit of character deconstruction from Ublek oh, on cool. Blake's motives related mm -hmm. to this. Okay. It's of what Yang admires about Blake. Namely, she has faith in her ability to figure out seemingly impossibly complicated situations and feels that she won't back down from a challenge even while Blake insists that she always runs. Which is true. How can I induce so many years of hate? Yeah. I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're not one to back down from a challenge, Blake. But I am. Yes. I do it all the time. Yep. When you learned I was a faunus, I didn't know what to do, so I ran. When I realized my oldest brother Actually, no, had become a monster, I ran. This will come back later, but for I mean, I know Fatman pointed out that it is actually true that she does stand up for it. Like, she actively sought out the White Fang sort of thing. Although, yeah. I, I will say, this is another instance mm -hmm. of telling, not showing. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's a, a, yeah, more bad writing. Uh, I remember actually a behind the scenes note about this mm -hmm. about this scene where they couldn't actually lie down in the mocap suits, so they had to film this entire scene standing up. And now looking at their positioning, I can kind of tell. Oh yeah, I yeah. I would have just I, had I them lean up against the wall. Out. That was interesting. I yeah for for that I would have just had them leaning up against the wall because then you can at least have the characters' legs do something that makes it look like they're laying down instead of just standing there. Yeah. And now we move on to volume three. Okay, we're moving on to volume three. I'm going to take Yay. a break here in a minute to get a drink. But first, I want to give you some volume two statistics. Volume Ooh. two's total length was All two righty. hours, 28 minutes, and 52 seconds, which amounts to 8,932 seconds. The amount, okay, give me a bet for your percentage. How much, knowing my very gracious rules towards the amount of bumblebee time there is, what would you estimate the percentage be at? For, during all volume two i already know the answer so it's just first. you no i already know the answer so it's just oh. gonna be you okay okay let me think <laughs> oh my god um percentage <laughs> Josh i want says to 2%. say i want to say, <laughs> I, was gonna say remember. I want to say this oh, includes go yeah i was gonna say go I was gonna go clarify though just the terms this includes all scenes they are on screen together, period. It doesn't matter what it is. They're just on screen together mm -hmm. or are potentially thinking about each other when they are apart. 36. Around 36%. Bumblebee time was about 49, point, uh, 49 minutes and 12 seconds, amounting to 2,952 seconds. Damn! Which amounts to 33.05%. You were only 3% off. Good show. Good Yay! Show. Ah! Okay. 33.5. Okay. It's 0.05. I'm just going to type that in the chat just so people can keep track. Yeah. Uh, if you guys can uh, entertain chat for just a minute, I'll be right back. Volume two. Sure, no problem. Um, All right. Are you not entertained, chat? <laughs> I, I find it... Um, I, I do I am interested and in, and in kind of applaud him for kind of going into this much detail, even if I think that he is a little bit loopy about it. Um, but it sounds to me like he's trying really hard to make it seem legitimate. Um, I almost want to say that he might be trying to emulate H bomber guy. Or just, you know, semi bread tuber and uh, video essayist videos in general. Yeah. Which tend to stem from his style generally. Yeah. And, and like, I, I don't really okay. want to Isaac try and. Twilight, time for the channel hijack. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we're changing this live stream into Digimon Mega Man Hours. Which, which should, is perfect hey. for me. <laughs> Especially you... if I go the Battle Network route. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how but perfect it... it would be for a crossover between Digimon and Battle Network? <laughs> it would be fantastic. That'd be it so be. fun. I wonder if there's... I'm not sure if there's a whole lot of fanfic out there about that. If you can find one that's interesting and link it to me, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a anyway, uh, <laughs> not to actually derail the conversation. Hey, Leon Critique, how you doing? 
Yeah, uh, Leon made like a big uh, three-part video series talking about Volume 9. Uh, oh. Those are really good. I shot him out in my most recent video. Uh, go check him out. He, he, he was, he was, he made me realize I was too nice to Volume Nine. I was somehow mm -hmm. too nice to Volume Nine. And you well, know how I, I feel about that. Yeah, Overkill. I think that's exactly why uh, he might be trying to emulate H Bomber Guy is to uh, go against the narrative because a a lot of well, Canon Seeker especially is really upset to this day about the H Bomber Guy video. <laughs> I, I just had a thought oh, yeah. while I was getting my drink. A good example of a slow burn romance that hasn't reached its, its ultimatum yet, but is getting mm -hmm. there. And it's actually the weakest element of the show. Twy, do you know what I'm going to say? Oh, uh, hmm. There's, there's a couple of different uh, things that I can think about, so possibly? Go ahead. Take, I just wanted to take a guess. First of all, I'll talk about uh, the weakest element of the show being a slow burn romance. That that's something that we've watched together. Yep, it's something we've watched together. Was it mine or yours? Mine. Yours. Uh, hmm. I I'm gonna have to look at the uh the at list. the list because it's yeah it's been it's been a while since we've looked at any of our our list for the anime that we were gonna watch together. Um. Let's see here. Oh, no. I should clarify, it's one of the weakest elements of the show, and it's actually tied one... up in the weakest element of the show for me. Oh, it's tied up in the weakest Ooh. element of the show. Uh... Well, I, I, you're it, saying this can't be, it can't be Outlaw Star because we didn't get very far in that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> We'll get back to that someday. Uh... I need to rewatch that show. Well, let me see. Uh, we, I'm I'm going to assume. Oh, Arcane. Yep. Caitlin yeah. and Vi, which for the record okay. is not yeah. is not a bad ship. I want to be the very clear on this. I simply for a show that is fucking phenomenal as it is, yeah. both writing, animation, yes. whatever. The weakest element of it is the thing that I would think I would be most interested in, which is the Yuri romance. And yet, it is, I find, the weakest element yeah. of it, partly because it hasn't come to conclusion yet. It hasn't, like, reached any kind of climax with it. But also because it kind of felt a little bit rushed. And it's a whole, I have a whole critique with, like, the nature of their adventure in the underground and how it doesn't quite jive with the timeline of the show. But that's, that's a whole major discussion. But it's still, I think shows a very good dynamic that is Still really very really much good. leaning into a romance where they have this kind of flirty back and forth dynamic that just it's starting to grow and grow and grow yeah, yeah. in a lot of ways Vi and Caitlin and I think I've talked about this several times with Twilight before um, mm -hmm. behind the scenes Vi and Caitlin at least in Arcane you know in its first season in a lot of ways is what um, what was it is what Bumblebee should have been in the first three volumes. Maybe minus the level of flirtation and certain specific aspects that wouldn't really fit in this context, but in the sense that we are consistently seeing these two characters build up their dynamic. That doesn't just mean having a couple of scenes, uh, 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 several episodes apart from each other, where there's any actual meat to pick on. No, we consistently have scenes spread out where we explore their dynamic, who they are, how they interact, how their backgrounds affect one another, and seeing what conflicts spring from that and how they resolve them. That is how you're supposed to do it, and that's why everyone, nobody, nobody says a single bad thing, well, barely anybody anyway, says a single bad thing about Vi and Caitlyn's relationship. Not, nowhere near the same way as Bumblebee. And this is despite the fact that League of Legends is a much bigger franchise than Ruby will ever be. Yep. So I want to hammer down any motherfuckers. No, no harm to anyone who says this, by the way, but still, you're just completely wrong. Who are saying that, you know, oh, if freaking Blake and Yang were freaking Brian and Yang, or basically if it was a straight ship, we wouldn't be saying the same shit. 
Yes, the fuck we would. Okay. Yep. Yep. Saito spitting facts. <laughs> it, um, Saito is. Uh, Caitlin is more yeah. like Weiss, which means that even Arcane admits that freezer burn dynamic is superior. Get the fuck out of here, Switchback. Get out of here, Saito. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Who asked you? <laughs> the cr- <laughs> <laughs> the assholes like your version of your of, of Ruby more than mine. <laughs> that means they have a worse opinion. Congratulations, you're liked by worse people. Thus, I mean, by transitive property, I mean, you're worse. Also, uh, to be fair, I, that might be because he hasn't made it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, okay. We've, we've guys, we're switching this over to a Saito roast. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we love you Saito I, I love your work Saito um, also uh, someone someone asked uh, how does Outlaw Star and Trigun compare uh, I know that, that Raymond likes both of them and he can speak about that yes, I, I, per- I personally asked to drop Outlaw Star because I didn't find it very interesting yeah uh, we'll have to try and get Trigun back to that is better. I think especially after reading the manga recently like that shit blows every, a, a lot of things oh, out of water. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry I for you. I I'm not really that hot on Trigun Maximum. I I'm really not. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I I I, so I think so far the first an- cancel this stream. <laughs> <laughs> I the, the original the original anime so far has been the strongest version of the show. Uh, strongest version of Trigun. Now, keep I, in mind we got, that we, we haven't we, finished watching Stampede yeah, because fair, of yeah. Raymond. Not because of me. It was because of yeah. your audio that cut out. <laughs> no, we we watched episode five and then you just stopped because you got busy with volume six, and then well, we just never continued. Well, no, part of it is we just didn't know whether or not we were going to continue it because of the um the, whether we were going to yeah. record it more. Like that was part of the problem. <laughs> I I lament my my whole thing about uh Trigun uh, Trigun Stampede being uh a ver- like just connected with the the Tremors universe because of the their worms their sandworms. <laughs> I, I had a whole thing I had a whole thing. thing with that lost audio about the connection between Trigun Stampede and Tremors that is just lost forever and it makes me so sad. Josh Thomas more new. Uh, you like Lycolis Recoil? I, I liked it all right. I'm looking forward to season two. It, it was a fun little Yuri anime. I uh, like the little nods. They didn't they didn't confirm the Yuri, but you know what? They did it. They had like little secret nods that said it was uh, it, they're married, quote unquote. Um, oh, Jake, uh, Jake, Jake the Sturgeon. Uh, we all talked. Talking about ships now, how Weiss wants Punish John to be to use her hair as a handle when he obliterates her. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Jake, Woo! you need to be put on a list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone put that man in the just fucking pound. You are just... <laughs> that man needs to be put in the kettle. <laughs> the kennel, not the kettle. Kennel. You might be <laughs> the, the bigger. You might be the bigger kennel, Jake. But that might change the more the more you type. Okay. <laughs> you horny motherfucker. All right. Hey, I don't, to be fair, it is true. She, I, I, I see that happen. <laughs> um. Anyway, I was just yeah. thinking about this the other day. <laughs> I'm so mad that they 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 changed John back to being young. I wish they had stayed old. Yeah, I, like, I wish that I too. would have loved yeah. if he came back and he fell in love with Willow. Like, that would have actually been a very interesting development for me. Oh? Like, can you imagine that? Because, like, to be fair, like, who is he going to fall in love with now? That motherfucker is going to be alone for the rest of his life. He's a 40-year-old I mean, man true. in a 20-year-old's body. I I don't care about age gap in anime. It's fine. He's a, he is now He is now a fake creature. <laughs> he, he he can oh, be not, our 100 year old i'm not guy. talking about it being right or wrong for the record i'm just saying man it, it's gonna be weird for him to try and connect with people oh yeah i i'm just saying like it's, Again, it's fine there's always the milfs that survive there's always the milfs that survive so all right here we go let's actually get back into this volume yeah. three the oh. rooster has come home to roost seeds sprout oh. and the final foundations are laid for what will oh, come that was, that the was first a bad joke. half of the volume is yeah. a light and breezy tournament arc between friends but as the first match in the final bracket ends and blake rises from her seat to applaud yang's victory Way to go, Yang. 
Okay. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you standing, Blake? I guess you fell on your seat. <laughs> also, are you how can can you please not run all this okay, The truth of the matter is actually that Yang was the victim of a hallucination semblance cast by Emerald Sisterai that convinced her she was under attack and she again? reacted accordingly. In the wake of this, she is vilified Sister? like the beast, disqualified from the tournament, left questioning her sanity, like, and worst of all, given felt like you put an L in there. left doubting her relationship did, did with he, Blake. Because did he uncle... use the song lyrics for Blake and then use that for Yang? Hmm? Did he use the song lyrics for Blake, Black the Beast, and then use that in reference to Yang? Where? Um... Yang was the victim of a hallucination semblance cast by Emerald Sisterai that convinced her she was under attack and she reacted accordingly. In the wake of this, she is vilified like the beast, disqualified from the tournament, yep. left questioning her sanity, yeah. and worst of all, yeah. <laughs> why would you do that? That's... Oh, yeah. Okay. Because the fairy yeah. tales are so accurate, oh, Twilight. For the symbolism. <laughs> They're so accurate. Uh, Oscar Borza. The symbolism. When symbolism. they're reunited, John, I feel like Yang should be the one flirted with him, then Weiss, and be a fun callback at the vault, and you can have cute moments. I actually think that... Um, I, I actually disagree with a lot of the people who hate the dynamic between Weiss and John, uh, mostly because... Well, not mostly, but like at least with the callback stuff, it's could be a callback to like volume one where she's de uh, denigrating Jean for not being all that handsome. Yeah, no, I, I, I only dunk mm -hmm. on that because you know, white rose. That's that's let's be very <laughs> clear. I, I have a clear bias. <laughs> in I, I think it is interesting that, that Weiss has a thing for Dilfs. I think that's an interesting character. Quirk of yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, stemming from her daddy issues. <laughs> it's always she's looking exactly. It's always the rich girls with daddy issues. <laughs> yeah, God, I need to recontextualize her interactions in Volume Three with Ironwood. Uh, anyway, in her relationship, <laughs> with her, that's, that's also a really popular ship with her. Different. So, why'd you do it? True. All I know is that you attacked a helpless kid. So this scene has lying? nothing to do with with Blake. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm not lying. Uh, crazy. No wonder Yang Got keeps it. having to pretend what to be all right. An yeah, no, that's fair. He is an asshole. Blake was unsure. This all reminded yeah. her a great deal of her former partner, someone she once viewed as kind and noble, but who over time became more violent and cruel. It's triggering her trauma from her last relationship. Still, she but resolves herself, and after getting Yang to meet her eyes and swear to her that she's telling the truth of what she saw, Blake is reassured. This Why but is this Blake is reassured? Out of nowhere. Why is Blake this is reassured? This is the... It's, yeah, well, a fucking yeah, exactly. abuser would look you straight in the eyes and lie to your face too. Why would this? Adam yes. did this shit. We saw him do it in Volume Six trailer. He like he looks yeah. Blake in the yeah, eye and says, mask. "Literally, oh, it's the mask. It's literally that's it. It's the mask. <laughs> it's the mask. Yeah. Oh God. It, he, but Adam did the exact same shit. Why did Blake suddenly trust Yang over Adam? It's the exact same behavior if you're looking because at it from Raymond. her outside perspective. Oh, Sion, well, uh... You know the reason why, Raymond? You know the reason why? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, well, I, do, I don't know if I will. Um, if the other if the other guys want me in for a reaction for Volume 10, then sure. Uh, we would have to ask about that. We we, we tend to keep uh, uh, Team Frostbite mm. kind of enclosed. Also, like, it depends... Because if there's five but, of us and there's six, they'll be adding a six. That'd be. Yeah, that's lot. why I said it would. Ha it would That'd have be to be cool with you guys. Effort. Yeah. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, let's. But like I was saying yeah. that, like, yeah, I was just agreeing with what you said because, like, it's a clear example of the time just being. This show's just biggest complete weakness, uh, because in a in a decent show. A conflict like this would not be resolved literally in the 10 seconds that it was brought up. Because to the viewer, this signals to you that something that lasts that long and is resolved that quickly is something incredibly petty and easily resolved. That, is, that should not be the case in a, in a moment where an abuse survivor is accusing their friend 
of committing an action similar to their abuser. Absolutely yeah. not. Also, I, I find it really interesting that Yang makes this one mistake and it seems to be out of nowhere, but then Blake is just immediately like, oh, uh, this reminds me of Adam. You are being like Adam right yeah. now. This this one time that in in a situation where we know that that thing emotions can get high and stuff like that and things can get kind of weird and this might be out of character for you uh you just are being adam right now you have to swear you to me argue. that you are not actually being adam it's like despite the fact that i do not you know adam whatsoever argue. beyond the description you've given to me of him i can swear yep. to you i'm not him yeah yep yeah you, you although <laughs> you can argue that i guess that adam to her was the same way that oh yeah at first he was nice but then like progressively their behavior began to change around her and like this is her jumping to a conclusion uh before like just because of her trauma the but problem is is that the behavior. show gives us so little to work on in regards to her relationship with adam you know we don't know what he did we don't know what what about I'll, him i'll give zell in relation to yang at all oh just cut out there okay i, I was gonna say i'll give oh, zell a benefit of the a a, a a a bit of a compliment here you didn't open with the opening fight where yang and blake are integral to the team destroying the enemy uh team the, the 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 opponents in the tournament that would have been easy fodder for you to pull from that would have been meaningless you didn't do it but you didn't do that i i give you kudos you. for not doing that i don't know if, if it was laziness or maybe it was actual decency or what when it comes down to this uh, whatever it is good on you this yeah. is integral because it's Probably another direct Adam. parallel between Blake's former romantic partner and her current partner. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. see the weight the others they're, feel they're not partners. actions hold to one another and get a oh my God, that, no. relationship what, with the, Adam. Yeah, I'm not going to read them. To look they're not important. The because Adam always <laughs> wore a mask. What soon follows is pandemonium as Beacon Academy is invaded. Oh, he did make was... that point. It was just because Adam was wearing the mask. Uh... Yes. <laughs> it can't be that he was wearing the mask because he has a major fucking deformity on his face. No, it can't be. It Yo, can't be Ruby at all. Does Shaggy he keep it on in bed? <laughs> Does Adam keep the mask on in bed? The mask stays on in bed. Uh, <laughs> it it, it yes. adds to his the sexy lights mystique. Being off isn't enough. God, he just takes that the thing off after, like, off months enough. of having it on. And it's just the nastiest fucking rank thing in there. Like, just, oh, 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 no. Yeah, think of, think of all the freaking... Think of all the freaking pus that might be building up in oh. that scar. ...of Blake's oh. relationship with Adam when she asks Yang to look her in the eyes. Because Adam always wore a mask. What soon... Rebar. ...follows is pandemonium as Beacon Academy that, is invaded. I don't the think that has anything to do with him wearing no a mask, knows though. what's going on. Blake is ambushed by Adam, and both Yang and Sun are presented with the chance to go and look for her. The day when Weiss became Wing Woman and Third Wheel? What? Okay. What? But only Yang does like just so. saying that before, Blake is in Yang a different Blake's direction? Relationship into narrative focus as the one to watch. As Adam disarms Blake and looms over her, promising to destroy everything she loves, Yang enters the scene, frantically looking for Blake. The horror on Blake's face is unreal, and Adam sees that and promises... These scenes also further highlight the abusive nature of Adam being assault coded throughout. Really? I hadn't noticed the man leading the terrorists to take over an entire fucking school and slaughtering people en masse might be a bad guy. Hmm. More news <laughs> at 11. Uh, In other news, the sky is blue. <laughs> so the scene is uh, Oscar Borgia. This scene is not romantic. First off, why would Blake be angry at her and not believe her? Ruby and Weiss believe her because that her friend and sister, this makes Blake awful. I mean, look, I actually, I don't mind Blake being wary yeah. of Yang. Like I, yeah. knowing what we know of Adam, the, the fact Me that neither. we're actually angry with is that Blake just gets over it. Like that's what, that was my big fix in volume yeah, three anything. was that Blake didn't just get over this. She just didn't trust Yang. It was perpetually Which I was damaged. Abs I absolutely loved, by the way. Hmm. That was the that was probably the best one of the better changes that 
That was probably one of the better changes that. It, and and that, you hear me? That yeah, yeah. Mic going you, off? you cut in and out, man. Sometimes. Come leave and then come I back. I don't know why. Okay, let me just try that. Okay, yeah. things are gonna get weird for a moment here, guys. Uh, um, I. Like the main the main problem with Adam is that we had no context for him before this moment, so it's really hard to understand everything that's going on between him and Blake and his, their dynamics together because the only thing that we see is just him being a mustache twirling villain, just like Mustache Blue Balls. Yeah, who uh, <laughs> you might you might get context for when I finally release that video talking about that book that I want to rant about. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fun time, that one. Yeah. Sorry, I got a bunch of things back up on screen where they should be. Um, the deets on that. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it it's uh it, It's a wild book. It came out in 2003, and I just read it on a whim when I was here with my cousin. And... Uh, it, it's a, it's a, gonna be a wild time. Uh, Jake the Sturgeon. Then the comics made Adam not at all attracted to Blake. Uh, look, I I don't trust the comics for goddamn thing. We, Again, yeah. it had that really lame thing where you had freaking Raven as a Raven yelling at Ruby. <laughs> I don't take a comic yeah. seriously. Anyway, yeah. like this Raven be all like, like that's why your mama he stabs Blake, drawing Yang's attention and leaving her with no real option to save Blake but to try and rush him. Oh my god, that was her scream? Yeah, I, it's actually one of the weakest things in the scene. Yeah. Honestly. Oh uh, yeah. That that was an awful scene. That shot of her falling is great though. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Why must you hurt me, Blake? Blake oh my god. sacrifice herself. <laughs> you must get them both out of there. When we next see them. People yeah. thought that wasn't abusive. Yeah, you know what, Zell, I'm on your side with that. They're idiots. <laughs> Well, it's so it's so blatantly abusive. It's It's comically abusive. Yeah, it like it's hard to take him seriously. It's so bad. Yeah, but I will say this comment: it's it's literally like Wattpad levels of fucking. This is Wattpad levels of like baby's first abuser. I understand why people like this development so. Like, I I uh, Bumblebee got a major boost. In the fandom, because of this moment, yes. very clearly, and I, you can tell why. Like that scene, despite Yang's awkward screaming, was actually really well done. And uh, th- the image of her arm flying off in the silhouette is so iconic at this rate; it's so good. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's such a good scene that had it had actual legs to stand on, it would have cemented this ship pretty damn or quickly. Or an arm to stand on. Mm-hmm. It, you, um, you stand so, on your arms. <laughs> I mean, he's a robot. He can do. Hey, what he wants. freaking Ray is flexible enough. She's built enough. She could probably do that. <laughs> um, though I I would still have problems with it. But again, like I don't I don't really like ships that are built off of uh abuse in any kind of way. Like you have to do it extremely carefully for me to be able to support it. Yeah. So, like, uh, guts the cost. moment <clears throat> the moment that most of their dynamic is now revolved around Adam and his abuse, that's when I start to become uncomfortable with the ship. Which I, I don't really have as much of an issue with, because I can see, like, the... Okay, as long as the the trauma isn't the complete source of why these two characters are attracted to each other, why they're paired with one another in the story, then I think that's perfectly fine. The issue with this, as far as I'm concerned, is that, what was it? As iconic as this moment is, it's hard to really, in, you can only really interpret this as in romantic in retrospect, because there's no reason to say that like, oh, if, you know, Ruby or Weiss were in this position that Blake was in, that she would act that differently. Oh, Not fuck. to say that Weiss would have been can, even better. That, that can completely, yeah. If yeah. It, it'd be even better if it was Ruby. <laughs> yeah, uh, there. I mean, it could have been anyone in this circumstance, and it it could have wound up. I don't even know what Adam was basing that on. Like that's part of the problem with the scene is how the fuck does Adam know anything about Yang? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I guess do he, that again I guess it does imply that he's been stalking Blake, but I mean, like... Well, you, you have to basically make that up for the writers, which is part of the problem. Because, again, like you said, there's no context for that. He's basically just reading the yeah. script. He knows because the writers know. So that's the only reason why he knows that Yang is important. Oh, it's uh, it's just it, it's it's a good scene gone to waste on bad writing. Yeah. Yang is unconscious, and a sobbing Blake is holding her hand, apologizing and convinced that this is all her fault. I'm so sorry. We also see Sun framed between the pair, but not part of this heavy scene. Again, reinforcing Blake and Yang's narrative importance to one another through framing. He We're is gonna... guarding them, asshole. Yeah, what he is fuck? actively <laughs> keeping his friends safe. Everyone that is able is at the ready for danger. Admittedly, they're not carrying their weapons, so I understand where the confusion comes from. It's weird. You guys should have your weapons out. It is a very dangerous. But like, yeah, it's an emergency situation. Yeah. If you can stand, you should probably be standing because on a minute's notice, you could be beset by Grim or White Fang or later robot killers. Like you. Oh, I should be mad creepy if son were to walk on over there and be like hey baby are you all right let me kiss that <laughs> you know that kind of son, son is big spooning blake that? while she's on the ground he's like are you injured no <laughs> 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 he just snuggles in closer he's just like what the fuck <laughs> what do you want him to be doing yeah it's, it's weird also why didn't blake have bandages on her on her stomach she got stabbed she, she probably yeah. just patched up because no, it, it's okay because her aura, her aura magically healed the stab wound. It's fine. She didn't, get, she didn't actually get Blake. stabbed. Because fled with that explanation, but we, the audience, know why. Yang is sinking into a depression, forcing Blake and Yang's narrative importance to one another through framing. When we next return to them, we find Blake has fled with that explanation, but we, the audience, know why. Yang is sinking into a depression, more upset about Blake's absence than the loss of her arm. I don't think I can overstate the importance. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to pop your bubbles there, Zell, but you know who was also mentioned when Yang was talking about how sad she was? Weiss, Pira, yeah. Penny. In fact, she mentioned Weiss first. <laughs> yeah. It, it, admittedly, it was so that you could have the, the, the long, forlorn Blake kind of moment at the very end where, like, that's the one that makes her trail off, which, you know what? That's compelling. Right. That's a little more you could you could if you were just more honest about this, Zell, and then you included the context, it might actually make your argument stronger. But the fact that you are completely omitting the mm -hmm. fact that Yang is not just sad over them, but over two of their friends dying, one of their friends fleeing, one of their friends being taken by her father and losing her goddamn arm. No, it has to be all about Blake. It has to be. The only thing that she cares about it's in this moment is Blake. Oh yeah, also her sister was in a coma for an indeterminate amount of time. There was also that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that too. No, that might have gotta, something to do with it. Gotta be about Blake, though. Uh, Oscar Borgia, oh definitely. Let, let's be honest, who really remembers their sisters? Yeah. If it was Ruby <laughs> fighting Adam, he'd be hurt by, uh, and he hurt Ruby, it would actually be more impactful. Also, what's this guy said is wrong. I mean, that is most of this video so far, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we just have that as the parallel. thumbnail. Yang is sinking into a depression, more upset about Blake's absence than the loss of her arm. I don't think well, uh, I can understand the importance of making Blake's new partner There's nothing in that scene to indicate that. former romantic partner. Uh, All the importance of it being Yang and Yang alone who stumbled Oh, did I squeal so loud that the, the, like, the Discord the didn't pick it up? <laughs> Blake. This is the moment that locked Bumblebee into my mind as something that could and should happen. It's the one with the real thematic weight and narrative build-up that continues to build from here on out. A final Arcos parallel is that in Volume 3, there are frequent juxtapositions of Arcos and Bumblebee scenes going on at the same time, though that won't be happening anymore with Pyrrha choosing the path of a warrior over safety, just as her inspiration did, myth did. With that, we go to Volume 4. Okay. Oh, God, I fucking hate how he keeps trying to draw parallels between those two when they're <laughs> so <laughs> vapid. <laughs> It's 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 like okay well is Yang gonna go off and get herself killed now is that is that the the, the parallel you want to draw? Is right. is, yeah. is is John a bumbling? Sorry, is is Blake a bumbling idiot or something like that? No, 
No, these are very superficial comparisons at best. Oh, oh, so Shion, uh, like, while, while Raymond tries to be fair, he, he can get angry at things. Like, he, he is very passionate about the show, so he will get angry on occasion. Yeah, no, it, I, like, I, I always take the approach of trying to be nice first. Always try and be nice first. I mean, I, I, I can't say I didn't go into this video without a bias, knowing that I would probably disagree with Zell on just about every single point. But I, I'm trying to give Zell the benefit of the doubt. And you see, there are points here where I do agree with Zell. The entire discussion about the, the in volume two, that entire scene, it's a very new, it's for, rarely for Ruby, a nuanced scene that can be taken in different interpretations depending on your framing. So it, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like Zell doesn't have a leg to stand on. It's just he's choosing to stand with one leg kilted at a weird angle. And then like the rest is like, several steps of peg legs that he's trying to do the splits between <laughs> like yeah, I, that, is, that is true uh <laughs> like i i'm not like particularly angry at zell or anything it's just the things that he says in particular that will make me go off like the 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 fairy tale stuff in particular sets sets me off because i i am now, so passionate about fairy tales yeah, now he hasn't said anything too much that I would really go off on him for, although there are a couple of things that I want to jump at in case they come out tw uh, come up. Twilight, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yes. But yeah, like we've been saying, we want to be fair here, and we're not mad at freaking Zell for liking Bumblebee. Who cares about that? We're not mad over the opinion. We're mad where we are discussing passionately um about the references that are contributing to that opinion yes. basically and All right. if it if it if it ain't up to snuff it ain't up to snuff it is finally time for volume 3 in my bumblebee uh my bumblebee Here we check go. so the total length of Here volume 3 uh, from the the footage that i was using is 2 hours and 50 minutes and 45 seconds leading to a total of 10245 seconds bumblebee time i'm not, i'm not going to list bumblebee time yet Guess your percentile, everyone. Yeah. What percentage of Bumblebee time is uh, composes volume three? Reminder <laughs> to everyone, this is them on screen together or them potentially thinking about one another. That's the that's the broad overview of that. That's it. It's not even they don't even have to be interacting. They should be on screen together. And I already know the answer, so I'm not going to be one of the people to uh, to vote. Uh, how pissed off minute? are Let's you? Well, you, you, how... you? You guess, Kaiser. Come okay. on. Yeah, you, you guess, oh, Kaiser. Oh, right. Okay, okay. I guess you're way on me. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Taking into account the fight scenes as well, if we're counting those. Yep. Then I would probably say... Ooh. 44. Around 44%. Okay, all right. Somebody, somebody kind of got it. Someone got close. Someone got close. Yeah, someone, someone got very close. But only one. So only one person has. Bumblebee yeah. time is 15 oh. minutes and 59 seconds, leading to 959 <sighs> seconds total, leading to a percentile of 9.36. What? Yep. Yep. Yeah, Lee. Okay, I was giving them way too much credit. Okay. <laughs> Benchmark time. Between volume one to three, the percentile of Bumblebee time is 20.59%. Lord. Okay, while we're taking a break from this, I'm going to get some food real quickly, and I'll be right back. Sure. If I can also, still hear everything because of my Bluetooth. Uh, Ryan, yes. Um, how to how to piss me off is talking about fairy tales and Ruby because it is so surface level. I can go off on a rant. I have gone off on a rant to Raymond. Like I just went mask off a, to a, Raymond a, a rant? times. I was gonna say a rant. You've had several rants. <laughs> yeah, we, several we, rants. we are talking that we have spent volumes of novels of time discussing this topic. Yes, and it's all it's all me educating Raymond on like the themes and and about the different fairy tales and how Ruby just does not do a good job incorporating the fairy tales, despite the fact that it the fairy tales are supposedly so important to Ruby, and yet not at the same time. 
it it just I I it's unfathomable to me just how much they miss the benchmark when it comes to the fairy tale illusions and all of that because they they don't really do the research and 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 what's even worse is that a lot of it isn't even fairy tales after a while it's just fiction in general like I know that I know that the the Ruby Wiki isn't the most reliable thing, and a lot of it is just people doing their their head cannons and stuff. But somebody said that Fox was supposed to be Todd from from the Fox and the Hound, which isn't even a fairy tale. It's not even a children's book. It's it's Disney taking an adult book and childrifying it because they happened to have bought the rights for it before the book released and then they realized oh shit it's it's a dark book we gotta we gotta take this other book that we actually wanted to do but we don't have the rights to and we're just going to call it fox and the hound yep it's very interesting learning about all that stuff but for fuck's sake one of the characters is named for coco you know the a, a german spy from world war ii yeah, a what card does that carrying have to do with Nazi. Uh, and and Jean being based off of like an actual person in history compared to her his teammates who you have a god you have a god a demigod and a pseudo fictional pseudo real historical figure like Mulan Legend, a, a Legend. legendary figure yeah, a legendary yeah. figure like Mulan um it, the, Jake, the illusions story. were all over the place. <laughs> if they were faithful to the original stories, Penny would have been hung. God damn it, Jake. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck you, man. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you with Penny's non-existent dong. <laughs> yes, uh, that is... Unrelated, that is I do enjoy song. nuts and dolts occasionally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm so upset that they, they didn't even have enough knowledge or, or the time or the care to even look up different fairy tales for these other characters to be based on. And it feels more like they went out to look for fairy tales to slap on a lot of characters rather than building a character around a fairy tale because they they thought that it would be a good fit for the show, which is a backwards way of doing things. You should have an idea to fit thematically into the story and then base a character off of it, not have a character that is needed for the story and then just randomly slap um, a vaguely connected fairy tale onto them. Like, f basically all of the Schnee family. To, I'm pretty sure Chanel was a... Was to, a, use a uh, to use a joke that I previously said in one of my videos to emphasize that point, Twilight. Yeah. It's the, it's the narrative equivalent of putting the milk before the fucking cereal. And yeah. we all know how we feel about those people, do we, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> also, I returned with fried chicken. Yay. Wait. No. Uh. <laughs> 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 hey, Felix's can be carnivores, you don't know. having a mental breakdown and people are in chat arguing about wait, do you put cereal or milk in first <laughs> that's great <laughs> Iser, uh, zero oh, all right rock man. i never ate cereal with milk all right volume I mean, four that's valid here's that's hoping this is a shorter section yeah oh, oh, oh. Off the cuff, we have oh. Blake surrounded by people in the intro, but her focus being drawn away from them and towards the edge of the scene as it transitions to Yang. And when we get to Yang early on in the volume, we see her looking at a pile of books which have always been associated with Blake before sadly turning away to- <laughs> 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 It's books. 
It, oh, you know, actually, she's my, the only one who reads. I, she I, is the I, only one who reads. The thing is, I yeah. I I laugh at this, but just because it's such a such a shallow characterization of Blake, but you're mm -hmm. right. Blake is the only one. This might actually be genuinely what they intended. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's one of the things that I I think I point out myself. Well, I mean, like, uh, like well, Ruby said I love books, but she's never directly said that she reads. It's just Yang used to read to her. Uh, so, like, it, it's a stretch either way, because you could say, like, oh, Blake is the one that reads books because she is Disney's Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Specifically, Belle from yeah, Beauty and CBF. the Beast. Uh, but CBF is right. That that book scene is the most curtains or blue scene ever. <laughs> it is. It is. Yep. It, it's what you want to see. Serial is mid. I don't care which goes first. This man's spitting facts. <laughs> Look, I, I love me some Cocoa Puffs. I love um, me some, some uh, Fruit Loops. But man, I will take so many other things that are more filling over those. Uh, Saga, Saga's right. Saga Blake only read once. No. Well, and we know she has smut. That's about it. Yeah. She, she's minds. a smutty girl. Skipping back to Blake, where she's reunited with Sun, where he again shows they aren't really on the same wavelength. He follows her in such a manner that she becomes legitimately distressed, and later when he joins the fight against the Sea Fei Long, he does so by jumping on her head and disrupting her attacks. It's a very blatant demonstration of how little combat synergy the pair possess, especially when compared to how easily Blake and Yang fell in sync with each other. Once things calm, so they then oh you, know, you just got right past the rest of the fight where they then just work together seamlessly. Yes. Yeah, uh, and not only that, this is like their second time fighting together, at least on screen against a singular enemy. Of course, they're not going to have as much be as much in sync with one another. Yeah, you're also you you completely ignoring happen? Volume One, where they fell into sync perfectly after the first get go. This is a weird oddity after Blake is not in the right mindset and Sun is being admittedly kind of an asshole. Like, yeah. Uh, I I also managed to read his note about how it's creepy that Sun is stalking her. Is like she, he's not like saying that he's stalking her is is kind of a stretch. Like I don't under I don't know why he's uh why he's cloaked or anything like that. I think that that was mostly for like the audience to be shocked at who it is more than like him doing anything in the in the actual show f for any reason but it's just it's just really weird because we know the reason why he's going after her is because he's worried about her and and to say that that stalking is kind of disingenuous yeah um blake is hopeful that he understands her you're going on a one woman rampage against the white fang what you're wrong son you're so so wrong when in truth, she's going back home to recuperate, what? think, and also she hopes, ensure that Adam will stay as far away from her team as possible. Her disappointment when Sun doesn't pause. really get her is palpable. I you, you can pause too, you know. You have control over this too. The, oh, right. My bad. Uh, it's just that, oh, really? like, this is so bad because Yang didn't understand Blake either. It literally took her until she had to talk with Weiss in Volume 5 mm. to understand Blake's motivation for leaving. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what the fuck is this about? Oh, son, not understanding Blake's motives here being a yep. sign that they aren't meant to complete, be. Complete, complete Are reversal. Are you serious? This whole, the whole foundation of this separation is them not understanding one another. A complete reversal of this is basically just, oh, son was worried about Blake and actually chased after her like a good boyfriend would, trying to make sure she's all right and in the right headspace, making sure that she's not trying to take on too much of a challenge alone and make sure that he's there for her. Which you know what? Son is fucking there for her. The yep. entirety of volumes yep. four, five, and then the, the beginning of six. Like he's only let go once he knows that yep. she's in safe hands, which honestly is a misread on his situation when looking, taking one glance at Yang, who is not by any measure stable. Yep. Like, Sun, no Sun is way. a good boy, and I will not stand for Sun slander on, on like, any, any, anywhere in my space. The man's abs were erased, all right? He's already been dirty, <laughs> done dirty enough. 
<laughs> look look at that sad. Us. Look, look what they took from us. Look at those well. sad Twinkies on his ch on his on his abdomen there. All right. I I honestly don't care about his lack of abs. I love him regardless. He is a good boy, and I am here for the fact that he is just a good friend, romantic interest or not. He is. He like like you said, he is being attentive to her. He knows that she is not in a good headspace. So like who cares if he followed her when she didn't want to be followed? Because he knows regardless of whether she wants it, it is something that she needs. There is a difference between wants and needs. Look at this note. Him noticing Blake yeah. leaving is a proof he can be attentive, but he's very oblivious to her emotional state. And you know what? He goes to so her. So was he uh, wait, 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 he goes to her. He talks to her. Uh, Kaiser dies. Holy oh, fuck. <laughs> what is that sound? Uh, Oscar Borgia, son of oh, best my, boy. My also, uh, Periodic Pete, way to go, Kaiser. Oscar Borgia, my God, does he forget about Ruby who likes books? Yes, okay. Just making sure we cover all those bases. I'm sorry I'm rushing past yeah. them, guys, but like, gotta get through this video. No, okay. Him noticing Blake leaving his proof, he can be attentive, but he's very oblivious to her emotional state. And he's going with her and talking to her, and you know what's happening? They're communicating in a healthy way and learning mm -hmm. about each other, and he is now better understanding her emotional state. Throughout all of Volume 4, it's Sun being there for her, even if he doesn't quite understand what she needs. Yeah, and this is this is why a lot of people are Black Sun fans, because he takes the time to try and understand her and to help her. And regardless of whether or not you actually ship it, it doesn't matter because they are doing the ship a lot better so far than what Blake and Yang are as a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not denigrating his this, desire to help if this here. Were just Yang highlighting his position. We would say the same thing. Yeah. How the narrative consistently shows them not gelling well when it comes to serious topics. Following this, Sun mostly falls back into his usual role with Blake. Prompt and receive exposition. <laughs> Oh God! Why does he? Adira and Kelly. Yeah, like an, an like an awkward boyfriend would. For the yep. Emotional conversation when considering <laughs> privacy. Really don't like you. As it is. Oh, all right. He's being. Presence here. I appreciate that he, editing choice, but it would. He's being really hyper. Uh, critical. Hypersensitive. Yeah, hypercritical. Hypersensitive. It's like, oh, he. He is being a human being, and human beings are flawed, so therefore he is flawed, and therefore he is bad, so he did a bad thing, and therefore he is not good enough. Sun to... has never physically abused Blake. Yeah. She, she Yang shoved Blake. In fact, it was the other way around. Yeah, so yeah. If we can, if we can, is, yeah, if we can excuse Yang shoving Blake, we can excuse this. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, it, it's double standards. It's double standards all the way down. See, like uh, you can't you can't ignore the the terrible things in Blake and Yang's relationship, but then say that Sun doing something means that he is a terrible human being for it. Uh, Ripoff Productions LLC says it can be read as him rendering Volume Two both Blake's self destructive phase plus the we don't want to get friends involved versus his always get your friends involved bit. Yeah. It's 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 also remembering his character. Sun is one of the most consistent characters in yes. all of Ruby. Yeah. And he's this also one why, of the best. This is why he's my favorite character. Same. Sun of all the other characters, he the is the only one who's damaged. The only reason for someone to be against Black Sun at this rate is because Sun deserves better. Yeah. That's it. For himself Sun would begin his own narrative foil, namely Ilya, a former friend of Blake who we learn in Volume 5 was in love with her, but whom she never was more than friends with. After Sun is injured by Ilya, Blake lays everything bare about how she blames herself for everything that happened, that she's a danger to her loved ones, that she loved her team like she never thought she could love anyone else. Yet that is in of itself odd. She's had teammates, friends, and allies, and she clearly adores her parents, but it becomes clear who she means when her voice cracks as she reaches Yang's name. No. Weiss. Oh, Yang. God. Oh my God, he is reaching there. Like, I, I. This is another. Her case. voice cracked with the other girls. Yeah, it did. But I, it, the fact that he, she lists Yang's last and it's slower, you could make the argument now. 
again, this is just like yes. that volume two scene where you could still read it as just friendship. Yep. It's right. Th- it's it, it's it's in that ambiguity spot. And so far, that's all we've gotten for Bumblebee is the ambiguity spot. We've not got anything directly yes. romantic. Also, I, I yeah, kind of don't point. pay attention when the the characters are listed off in their in in their like dedicated uh the the way that they normally are because like R R W B Y uh Ruby Weiss Yang just skipping the B because she is the B. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like it back to the matter is it just it just doesn't really um there isn't as much to work with. Up to this point, this very conversation, you know, story wise, Yang and Blake had a total of three meaningful conversations with one another, one yeah. of which ended abruptly for no feasible reason. Yeah. One of which, uh, the the Mountain Glen scene in volume two didn't wasn't even about each other fully and wasn't even romantic. And the other is in the only one left is the one previous to that which has the only one which has the only uh which is the only one that has any legs standing for it so it's like why adam zilke says ah yes black son red herring then son meets the parents first and has to deal with the disapproving dad trope yep yep it's 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 really funny because it's like we're not even actively trying to ship Blake and Son together. The show is no, we're telling saying, us that bitch away from him. Yeah, yeah. The we... show is telling us, yeah, that that we should kind of view them in that light. They and then you, people saying that it's red herring, I but for leaving. <laughs> Blake claims she had to separate herself from them to keep them safe, and hopes that they hate her for what them, she did. Them. Son shows some insight here by insisting that Yang, like himself, would never hate her or regret oh, what abs. happened if it meant helping Blake. But I'd do it all again if it meant protecting you. And I can promise yep. Yang would say the same. You can make your own choices, sure. But you don't get to make ours. When your f- friends fight for you, it's because we want to. Hey, son. Yeah. yeah. Stop pushing us out. This is just son being awesome. And yeah, it's just son being a good person. Do to us. Yang's side of things is less obvious, and she that was yes, supposed to be Sika. obvious on really that was somehow no. more obvious than yang's oh my god what, what the fuck's gonna be in yang <laughs> a fucking fart oh dear <laughs> also yes saiga it was exactly how how they constantly say sora donald and goofy in the same order that was what i was thinking about when i was ranting about that <laughs> Uh, it's like this guy thinks that couples should never have rough spots or disagree as if the ideal couple just constantly agrees on everything yeah uh, we were just talking even about that you know freaking freaking blake and yang don't even fit that mold either before the stream uh we were t- talking about my hero uh fan and how i basically yeah. found a lot of really good ones or a lot of enjoyable ones i should clarify that are like alternate what ifs about toga becoming a, a good girl um and i was making the comment that a lot of them while they're they're fun they're enjoyable they're all very lighthearted and kind of saccharine at places they're not very deep like they they make a very shallow attempt to stab at the darker material that you could do with toga and it left me frustrated so the idea is that like he he's trying to like not the term whitewash but like gentle wash or something the nature of a relationship and that that robs a relationship of a lot of the interesting elements of it i'm currently writing a novel where one of the key elements of it is that you know Mm -hmm. a little bit of a spoiler for for Artificer 2, everyone. Um, <laughs> R2 Fisser. R2 Fisser. Um, yeah. A little bit of a spoiler for that. I kind of got to the, the main character and his romantic interest got together with without much of a struggle in the, in the first book. Um, the second book actually puts a bit of a strain on their relationship and it creates problems between the two of them where they're not entirely sure how things are going to come out on the other end. But there's a lesson to be learned there about how couples need to treat that. Yeah. Um, Also, we were talking about how a lot of fanfics and a lot of people on Tumblr specifically, how they popularized it, how there's a lot of focus on just getting rid of the stuff that makes novels and reading 
fictional stuff interesting. What makes it, it gets rid of things that make humans human. Like it, it's like yeah. suddenly you get you introduce a coping mechanism for something, and suddenly yeah. everything is fixed. Like you make make a make a oh it was hard at first, but things got better later. And after the fiftieth story where that's said, you get bored of it. Yeah, and. Like, it might be fine in a hypothetical context, but what you're, it's not really interesting to read or or watch after a while. Like, yes, I do agree that in real life, we should maybe try to strive more for that in the real world. But fiction isn't the real world at the end of the day. And even though that some people say, like, write, write more realistically, they don't actually mean, like, actual realism they mean something that feels natural and isn't going to jump you out of the story and remind you that you are reading a book or watching a movie or whatever yeah i was gonna say though it's like you especially if there's very little material to work with to begin with i mean that scene back in volume three uh with that was easily resolved before you know um adam came in and sliced yang's arm off that's perfectly representative of what you guys are talking about. They bring up a traumatic point of like a, uh, the of one of the characters that can potentially produce conflict, and it's resolved as soon as it happens. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's 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 just dive right back into this. It was in mm-hmm. far less fun. Almost half but one can easily read her referencing losing a part of. No, we're not. To we're be we're barely over a third. Not just about losing her arm, but about Blake leaving. What's more, her character song for the volume outright references the events of the fall of Beacon, recounting that in her dreams, <laughs> I'm racing to her side, there's nothing that I won't do for her. Uh, volume stop four is also referencing the songs! The release of Bumblebee, a highly romantic song that would go on to serve as part one for V9's Worthy, which plays in the culmination of this slow burn Yeah, arc. skip it. For now, like, though, blah, blah, blah. we go on to volume five. Oh my yeah, god, like, that was like, all like, in volume yeah, four. Fine. Wow. Yep. So literally, it was just the music in volume. Now, four. now you guys understand why I had I had to combine both volume four and five as a section as one section in my. Uh, also, Jake the Sturgeon. People often conflate believability with realism. True. Yes. Um, Correct. Yeah. And I fucking hate. Well, like, I I don't even know if I can separate volume four and volume five because they just they just blend together. The um. Yeah. In Volume 4, there are scenes where Yang is talking to Tai, and Tai is describing, like, very one of the best scenes in the volume, probably the best scene in the volume, is when Tai is describing sometimes solving a problem is not going through it like you and your mom do, but trying to walk around it. Like, if that doesn't somehow relate back to Blake, what, like, oh my god, Zell, you missed a golden opportunity to try and actually thread in some of the larger lessons that Yang is taking and applying it to her relationship with Blake. You have an opportunity there and you missed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Jake the Sturgeon. Uh, oh, sorry, that's uh, actually really true. I didn't think of that. That's actually yeah. really smart. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's one of the things that yeah. I took away is that like Yang learning to grow as a person can then apply to her personal yeah. relationships. It's the most logical thing in the world. Um, yep. Kaibo Studio says, Hi there, wanted to show some support. I don't really have an opinion on Bumblebee, but I will say I suspend my dislike for Ruby when they kissed. You know what? Fair. Fair enough. I yeah. understand how cathartic that can be for a lot of people. Yeah. Honestly, it was cathartic for me too right. because I I was getting a little upset at them for like having such romantic things for Bumblebee in the previous volumes, but they never actually confirmed that they were in a relationship. And... For for a very short moment, I was very happy when they kissed. It was just after the the happy moment passed, and then my brain started working again. And I was like, "Wait a minute!" It, 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 yeah, nah, no. Here. Okay, so time. Like I, that's why that segment was so. <laughs> uh, time. <laughs> I did the same thing. I went through that same thought process. Yeah. For volume four's uh, Bumblebee time measurement, so. Total length of volume four is three hours, two minutes, and 45 seconds, giving us a total of 10,965 seconds. Of that, what percentage, and is asking both the chat and Kaiser, do you think was Bumblebee time? Uh, I... 
I I remember this one. I think Kaiser, <laughs> I think Kaiser was trying to say something, but I cut out. Oh, uh oh. No, 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 I, no. I wasn't. I wasn't saying that. I was making a big like thinking noise. Okay. But like, ah, uh, I want to say, because if that isn't working out, then I want to say fifteen percent. No, okay. no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Nineteen. Nineteen percent. Around nineteen percent. Oh. Okay, nineteen percent. Oh, yeah. some some people are lowballing it now after the last one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I, you actually guessed surprisingly high, considering we all know they're separated in volume four. But yeah, not, not terrible. No one's guessed it yet. Oh, actually, fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, bump. Ryan Carson. Um, Bumblebee time. Eighteen minutes nine seconds to a total of one thousand and eighty nine seconds. That leads to a total of 9.93%. Carson Ooh. had it. He even had decimals. He was getting fucking close. <laughs> and again, that's that. just them on screen or potentially thinking about it, each other. So there was 9% yeah. of that volume was potentially them thinking about one another. So it's 9 point what? 9.93. Almost 10. Okay. Also, wait, you Ryan Carson, I'm decking you points. Actually, I take that back. You just guessed volume three's percentage again. <laughs> All right, let's get in to volume five. Ooh. Exciting. This volume starts off fairly low key on the romance front, for both these characters are rather focused on other narrative threads. Yang is seeking out her younger sister with such focus that she dismisses the chance to have a proper reunion with the mother she's spent years seeking. It's interesting to note, though, that she yeah, was fucking cool weird. and in control of the situation yeah. right up until Raven made a jab about her teammates letting her down, hitting Yang right where it hurts most her abandonment issues. Yang, please. Listen to your friend, Yang. Your teammates never let you down before. You don't know the first thing about my teammates. About me. You were never there. You left us. This trend would continue when she later tries to be aloof about Blake leaving them, only to grow snappy and then separate herself from the team. Mm. Weiss finds Yang in her room holding a picture of their team, her thumb stroking Blake's visage. She's stroking! First time stroking Blake! She... Oh, oh God. You, you know what we would call Why? that? If Blake, sorry, if Yang were a guy, you know what we would call that? Creepy fucking behavior. Yeah, yeah, that would be. How, how, and so why do you have to say it like that? How many times did Adam stroke a picture of Blake, do you imagine? Oh. Uh, <laughs> how many times did he stroke to, to a picture of Blake, do you imagine? Ah, oh, but. Some, someone needs like to draw uh, the Wolverine meme, but with Adam and Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Adorex, you're on it. That's your cue, Adorex. If you're still in the no, chat, no, but you, it, it needs to very pointedly be the Bella booty, <laughs> <laughs> the Bella Donna booty. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is reaching of the exception of this scene where it is Yang and Weiss having this heart to heart, which I think is fair to say that this is this is actually a pretty decent bumblebee scene like not yeah you could take it even deeper into the romantic context from here Never yeah this is the first time that we get like a genuine romantic moment uh between them like it's it's more than like it's very uh it's more than just like you have to squint and turn your head to the side kind of subtext yeah it's very intimate what she's relaying to weiss like, yeah and and this is the scene that that kaiser and i actually watched uh v with a little bit of difficulty for his bumblebee video mm. her room holding a picture of their team her thumb stroking blake's visage she breaks down for the first time confessing she never would have held anything against blake would have been there for her and asks how could i be there for her if she doesn't let me because she's a bitch what if i needed her <laughs> for me And this is Important. unfortunately kind this of where I same chapter that reveals what this is unfortunately kind of where I get the the kind of trauma vibes like it feels to me at because this is the first time that it's like very blatantly romantic and this is directly after a traumatic event and that she is still going over and then she's kind of projecting all of that onto Blake so 
it feels to me like the romantic part of it is is surrounded by the trauma and that is kind of what is squeaky to me yeah this is it, it, it even though it is romantically coded it's not healthily coded yeah uh oh did we lose kaiser again oh did we yeah it seems we did oh no kaiser oh his connection's bad okay oh oh i'm i'm weird uh yeah that's that's what happens uh when things aren't properly set up. oh no <laughs> look at my oh my god <laughs> R.I.P. me. R.I.P. Takara. Takara, no! Takara! Uh, my, my avatar's name is Takara, by the way, for those who don't know. And for those who don't know, my avatar's name is Kelfi. Yeah. Oh. Uh, female cat, Celtic, not a female dog, so she can't be a bitch. Oh, fuck. You're right. <laughs> Oh, she's, uh, uh, we looked up she's a queen. Yeah, she's she, a queen. She's a queen. Yeah, because uh, um, she's breeding... a Molly. She's a Molly, isn't she? Or a Murray? A Molly? Wasn't wasn't that uh, the other name for a female cat? Maybe. Um, all I know is uh, male cats are called Toms and female cats are called queens. That's right. Female a a, a cat is called a queen when it's female. A spade yep. female is called a Molly. Oh, okay. Um, so she is a do we, oh, mm. do we want to call her a spade female? <laughs> <laughs> that is a question. Uh, can I can I spell what? Can you spell it? Takara. It's it's Japanese. Oh, uh, T A K A R A. It's uh, is she learned later? It's Japanese for treasure. Yeah. I think it's fair to assume Ruby knows, considering they're sisters and likely confiding each other a lot. Uh, given your show, Ruby does not know about these issues at any point in her entire series, neither do Ren, Nora, or John. Yeah. Mm hmm. Thoughts on Callie being a wolf rather than a cat? Maybe? I mean, I, we don't I, know, really. Well, based off of their really weird garbage for the faunus and how they. Uh, procreate yeah how they procreate and how it's not really based off of them being certain faunas like she could be it well, could be that just it's it's a fluke that one of her parents happens to be a cat and then she is also a cat and the other one happens to have you know at least similar mammalian traits yeah I, I'm pretty sure that Gira's mammalian trait is only that he doesn't file his nails. <laughs> I'm trying to get Kaiser. Yeah, please, please get Kaiser back so that Takara isn't in pieces anymore. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I would imagine that it, she has to be a cat um, unless they just got really lucky with the genetic lottery. That's literally the two different directions to go with that. Are you back? Yes, I am back. I just, I don't know what happened. My internet just wigged the fuck out. So oh I we'll start start streaming it again. Yeah. Just a second. And I need to get back into watch together because the link. We're back. Sort of reset Yay! It. All right, I'm still alive, guys. No matter what freaking uh, Rooster Teeth will try to do to uh, me, Barbara Shaw can't keep me away. Barbara from Shaw, that. can I ask why Faunus genetics and the idea of them having kids is a mess? Okay, very simply, uh, Rooster Teeth was like they put out in one of their world of remnants about Faunus. They were just like, okay, so Faunus can, if two Faunus of the same type, so two cats get together, they will have a child that is a, also a cat. If a human and a Faunus get together the child will be the same as the faunus parent. Right? I think that yeah. was it. And then if yeah. two faunus of different types get together, yes. 
they will literally have a random chance of producing a different faunus of a potentially completely different like phylum. Um, yeah. Like we're talking that a, a cat faunus and a dog faunus getting married could have a snake faunus as a child. Yeah. Or, or a fish faunus. It's like, why? Why is it? It's the reason it's part of the, the I still get so mad at people who are like, oh, how do you put heat in there? I'm like, I don't know. You explained me the genetic lottery they didn't put in there. What the fuck is that noise? <laughs> What yeah. is that? <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit, if you ask me. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Yep. Ilya was in love with Blake, and that Blake was unaware of it, entitled Alone Together. This scene culminates when Weiss helps Yang it's work song, through her hurt sure. and the false anger she's been using as a shield. Meanwhile, Blake was more cut off than this, as she had very little downtime yeah. to discuss anything but the plot. Though oh, do you have a name for your avatar, about the word Kaiser? Shares... Sorry. Um, I I've been workshopping different names, but I I I've been thinking build might be a good one. Ooh, but, that's a nice name. Yeah. Then again, I might to go with the Mega Man motif for like uh the characters with uh that aren't like you know animal based or fucking element based. I might want to go with something referencing music in some way oh. uh, they already have treble right yeah they do well yeah, they uh, have treble they've bass treble it's rock bass. roll well, they, they only have treble no they only have treble in the english version in oh. in japanese he's gospel oh yeah hmm hmm uh not filter maybe not may not Ooh. filter break uh, also you're no because we already have break man oh you're right that, that's blues blue blues is too connected yeah. to the break man persona to have somebody also be called that oh uh, okay i was i was thinking like break core i've been listening to that drum yeah. and bass drum drum <laughs> rap uh, there's also the drum uh <laughs> I, 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 I so, watch somebody say scat <laughs> uh. <laughs> metal. <laughs> I don't know if there's a, there's probably a metal man. Um, what about uh symphonia? Yeah, there is because uh, the symphonic synth. Uh, no, <laughs> yes, <laughs> what? Oh, it's just we named uh, for we gave a lick man the name synth for his uh, oh. for his name in that's our why, role that's play. That's why I said synth. But I see what you're, yeah, yeah, synth. Okay, well, uh, more on the the Blake. Meme. Associated with eight oh eight. Let's go with that. Deal. About how she perceives them and you. Or in note. Particular, I like note. Her demeanor and tone note shift when discussing Yang. Yeah, I remember getting to know Ruby and thinking this girl is the embodiment of purity. Well, that's why we're here uh. to make it better. Uh. After a while, I saw why it was defiance. My father was not the start of our name, and I refused to let him be the end of it. And Yang was strength. I'm not Wait, asking you to stop. Is this his editing? This is his editing. Just please. Okay. Um, get some rest. Yeah. Also, I want to. I want to recommend. Uh, the, he's cut this off so it sounds all more dramatic and it's it's really building into his point. This scene goes by like this. The scene is mostly about Adam and her listing off these categories for their her friends goes by in a blink. It, it, it's not like mm -hmm. any one of the three has yes. more precedent over one another. It's just she named them off in order of Team Ruby and it Yang was just last. Unlike yeah. other scenes where like that last scene where she broke and you know, her voice cracked or whatever, where I think yeah, you could kind of squint and see it. This one, I was actually surprised you couldn't. Like, I cannot squint and see this yeah. being anything romantic. And I don't want it to be anything romantic yeah, because this is one of the most immature. Were the same for all three of them. This 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 yeah. mentality is so fucking immature that it actually gave us. I think this is one of the first rants that we had during the reaction series because it mm. was just such a disgusting <laughs> idea. It's like you can't boil down a person to a single character trait. That's like the lamest shit you can yeah. do as a writer, let alone to real if human anything. beings who you're supposed to be treating these as. Yeah, like even though yeah, that we don't anything, know much about Zell. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I, you, I you just want to say this I'm quickly. I'm going to get some water and take, use the restroom. So. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So 
If anything, this harms a lot of Blake's development up to this point in the series, because the whole point in regards to her character development was that not everything, and even in some ways thematically for the show as well, is that not everything is as simple, or not everyone is as simple as a victim and the person being oppressing someone else. Not everything is simple as being a faunus and a human. Not everything is being, you know, white fang or not white fang. It's about everything in between. Everybody has their own thoughts, their own struggles, their own sort of uh, uh, things that they are dealing with. That's the whole point of her reconciling, reconciling with Weiss in volume one, even though that wasn't very well done. You know, like, so... The, the point is, is that everyone is complicated. In fact, this sort of mindset was more than likely what led her to Adam in the first fucking place. And now you yeah. mean to tell me that it's fine for her to keep up <laughs> that incredibly damaging mindset that has put her on the path of abuse when applying it to her loved ones, which could easily go that same route? Because let me tell you something, people, statistically speaking, abusers are not total strangers they are nope. often people you know that is yep. just categorically true ask any social worker ask any therapist ask any psychologist they will say the exact same shit which is funny because i took an entire course on this just this semester for the past three months so mm -hmm. fact of the matter is this is not only incredibly toxic uh, from just a logical standpoint, it runs incredibly counter to Blake's development. If anything, it, it should be way more meaningful if you're wanting to chain this up into a fucking uh, a, a Bumblebee shipping moment, potentially, that the thing that makes Yang special is that she isn't so simple. It's the fact that she is this complicated person with all these different emotions and all these different struggles and traumas just like her and she Maybe. connects with her because of those things not necessarily just because of trauma but you know that's that's the idea right it would be actually really great if we had a moment where uh she she's trying to boil down yang to being uh, just this one word personification but she can't because she is so focused on Blake and every time that she tries to boil her down to something she can't because she thinks more and more about all of the nuances of Yang and then she, she kind of breaks out of her mindset because of that also to just uh, lighten the mood a little bit what what is the what is it checkerboard you know for for Having having this ship supposed to be Bumblebee, uh, she she sure does have a black and white mindset. Uh, shipping stuff uh. for <laughs> it, uh, Blake Blake and Weiss uh ship. It, it's there. There's a point there. <laughs> if we're gonna be doing the silly stuff, yeah, there is a point. Back, switchback said earlier, hey, is this a per is this a good time for me to pedal a uh, freaking monochrome or some shit like that? There's your chance, buddy. Now that Raymond is gone and in the shitter, this is your <laughs> chance. This is your time. You're still here oh, it's, anyways. Oh, it's monochrome. For some reason, I thought it was like checkerboard. But yeah. Uh... Uh, it kind of goes through, like checkerboard, checkmate, but monochrome is mostly the, the, the name used for it. Yeah, yeah. She, she has a monochrome mindset. <laughs> it's it's yeah the, yo. it's secondarily canon because she's always has... black and white. <laughs> yeah, but uh, your heart always knows what's right. <laughs> <laughs> but like that—that's exactly why having shipping evidence like that is so silly. All right, well, that is good coverage. Let's keep going. Yeah. Not just for you, but for the people you care about. However, oh my God, he's making it so saturated. From her when she finally catches up with the rest of the plot and arrives at Haven Academy to thwart the White Fang. Blake had no idea her team would even be there, but when she discovers them, the scene slows, and all she and Yang can do is look at one another. Yang. Yep. Yeah. This is a fair. This is a fair moment, Yay! romantically. Yeah! 
before both are dragged back into the plot. Beyond that, yeah, we have Adam characterizing I'm glad you can Sun specifically that. as a I would classmate that too. compared to considering yeah. Yang as someone Blake loves in Volume 3. This will be important later. After Yang returns from confronting her mother and securing the relic, the villains are all forced into retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Wacky we be in Flavorm Salem. Oh my god, I remember Floof showing me that out of context. It was so funny. That Blake being back with the team is all that matters. This is accompanied by the song of the same name, which is all about how Yang is willing to risk being hurt again just to be at Blake's side. And look at those soft expressions. Volume 5's end is also where we should probably discuss some more well, we parallels. Couldn't. You made them Namely last like the three last seconds. Generation and the current one. Yeah, I hate it. I told you. I, I hate how it doesn't last very long. Yep. I mean, Ruby. Ruby and Yang's parents and uncle's team, Stark, were basically the Ruby of their day. A powerful team handpicked by Ozpin to become his elite agents, a silver-eyed leader, a blonde martial artist, and a mysterious dark-haired woman with a grim past. The only one lacking a clear analogue is Weiss, but the parallels with Stark are fairly mixed across the board. <laughs> it's like it doesn't exist! Oh. I'm sorry! Oh, they were unconscious on the ground. What? Martial artists. How, what, was, was that volume 9? With a grim past. The only one lacking a clear analogue is Weiss, but the parallels with Stark are fairly mixed. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, that was volume 9. <laughs> That's that is five also, years later, dumb. I won't insult uh, you. I won't. I won't. I won't call you that. Okay. But it, you are I'm, I'm, trying I'm my patience with this. Man. It it is really it. It's it's so stupid. Like how uh, like oh they they have paralleled because he drinks liquids and she drinks liquids they are the same they oh are God. literally the did same did you know that hitler drank water like, anyone that drinks water is hitler what well, a, a, a direct one is like hitler liked dogs if you like dogs you are literally hitler uh, well yeah Actually, I'm not going to say that joke. I'm not going to say that. Anyways, <laughs> <one. That's gonna laughs> <be so> <laughs> <laughs> not. And Raven yeah. have swords with revolving dust chambers. Oh my god! And Ruby and Crow wield slives and have capes. But this still serves our purposes. You see, I, Raven's is. You see how he describes it. This serves it? our purposes. It's, you yeah. literally you are, said this is tenuous at best, dude. You are going in with a conclusion before you get dig for your, and then looking for the evidence to support it, instead yeah. of. Yeah, that's that's it tells you everything about Zell's mindset. And the thing is, yeah. there is nothing wrong with going into something with a conclusion in mind and looking for evidence to support it. What's important, however, is being able to shed your conclusion when you find evidence that either contradicts or does not support what you are concluding. That's the that's the heart of it, because I, I want to be clear. A lot of people go into things presuming a, an outcome. And come out of it with a completely different perspective on the matter. It happens all the yeah. time, and it's completely healthy. Mm -hmm. And yet, there is a part of the human psychology that tricks us into believing that we must always maintain the same mindset. I've fallen into this. Everyone here, I'm pretty sure, has fallen into this. It's just a fact of the matter. But, Absolutely. Zell, you've fallen into this really fucking hard right now. Yeah, it's it's the main yeah. problem that I had when I had interacted with him, and it is part of the reason why I ended up blocking him, because ultimately the thing that he said was so disingenuous and really shitty, because the the thing that ultimately led me to blocking him was him saying that it doesn't matter what the evidence was, he was going to believe what he wanted to believe anyway. So it was like, what was the point of talking to you then, if you're, if no matter what, you're never going to, like, consider an alternate possibility uh rip off productions llc which says, is incredibly i liked a theory that faunus was oh, descended ahead, from ship uh the shapeshifters but uh, from shapeshifters but the magic had faded but that was back when i was expecting crow raven and the rest of the tribe would all be shapeshifters who could still do it that's one way to take it and then jake the surgeon uh i'm a chad cat and reptile person get on my level <laughs> I'm I, I'm right there with you with the cats. Reptile, not so much. Uh, what were you saying, the Kaiser? Yeah, it, yeah. I was just saying that uh, going along with just coming into these sorts of conclusions, it also goes into uh, how he curates um, 
his audience engagement. Because I found out from a friend of mine, uh, you know who you are, that nah. uh, not too long ago when I, when I made my response video to him, uh, someone in the comment section of his Robin video said that, hey... Uh, be, you know, this guy named Kaiser makes made this response video to you. Don't be surprised if you get a lot of hate wave or whatever. Even though at the time I had less subs than him, mm -hmm. but let's not talk about that. <laughs> but I, I, of course, when that reached my ears, I said, "Hey, man, you know, I never." In, 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 like, oh, right. The guy also said that. Oh, this guy isn't very nice. And I was like, "No, I was completely cordial in my response to you." I didn't insult you. I disagree with you vehemently over the, the text, but I never insulted you in any way. And Zell responded to me rather cordially, of course. But one of the things that he said that kind of gets me is that is the part where he said that I tend to believe people who tell me someone who responded to my work is going to send abusive comments because I always tend to get abusive comments anyways. And it's like, Okay, but you're still presupposing without any evidence, which is why I responded to him saying, I understand, man, but you know, if I, if I made a similar blunder like that, just because someone told me without really, you know, giving me any sort of, uh, I mean, someone, yeah, someone told me about you without giving any sort of, uh, I don't know, evidence for that being the case or without me even engaging with the, the, the work, you know, you would have very every right to be slighted by me. So yeah. it, it, it's the sort of same sort of post hoc mindset that I feel is very damaging to anyone who is not only critiquing things, but just creating in general. Yep. Uh, over yeah. Overkill. Uh, I like White Rose, but I'm not going to spend five months writing an essay why it's objectively the best Ruby ship or something. Overkill. <laughs> your name is Overkill. Do it. <laughs> Fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Do it for the memes. Live your dream. Write like, the white to... rose manifest. <laughs> and like to be fair to Zell, like uh like there there was an instance where somebody had messaged me in on anonymous uh telling me something about Zell. And even though that I didn't respond to it, uh like the ultimately the thing that kind of got us into a bit of a, a fight was that he didn't like what this person had said and that they wanted they wanted it he wanted it removed off of there even though that I didn't I didn't respond to it at all I didn't have any, I didn't give it any kind of credence so like yeah I to some degree I could have said like yeah it's it's completely fair and I think that that was um, uh, Twy, you are roboting something fierce. Oh, I'm sorry. It's yeah, because you're speaking my language, so I'm the only one who can understand her. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, I... it's still happening. Well, it's been nice having Twilight here on the show, everyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're your lips are moving, but no now. words are coming out. Okay, you you sign language. See if that works. It's just the only one of us that actually has like articulatable hands. So, <laughs> unless you're volunteering to do sign language oh. for her. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, okay, I'm, your little, like, I'm sorry. I'm back. Five stick. I I'm back. I'm okay. sorry. Uh, my my headphones have been acting up as of. The, this last these last couple of hours uh so i've been trying to be very careful with them but um Fair enough. that that was why i was roboting but as, uh, as i was saying um i it, it would be completely fair for him to say that like yeah i don't like what this person said but i don't think that it was right for him to say um i i would like you to remove that from your from from your tumblr just because i don't like what it was being said just regardless of the fact that you gave it credence at all but he he won't give the same kind of uh sentiment towards anybody else it, but 
he'll get offended if it's if it's about him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's keep on going. Yeah. We have about an hour well, and so a half to find out. She so. vanished when Yang was a baby. She has the power yeah. to see her or anyone else she loves anytime she wants, but she chooses to keep her loved ones at a distance oh my God, I just for her saw own that. safety I just and saw emotional that comfort. She clearly isn't a happy person, but she sticks with this decision yeah. despite that. Meanwhile, Yang's father, Tai Yang, was clearly broken from the loss of Summer and Raven abandoning him. He won't even let her come up in conversation or be talked about around Yang, growing snappy when she comes up. The it's almost like Yang has issues been... with her and he's not trying to trigger that. To say the least. Yep. Come on, man, she's right here. Oh, please. She's a mature young woman. That's not the issue, Pete. And besides, she's still a teenager. Adult or not, you still got a long way to go before you're ready for the real world. Oh my gosh, does every father figure just have the same three condescending phrases? Yeah, but we only use them when we mean it. Is that so? As a matter of fact, it is so! And even when he does willingly discuss her, it's clearly something he doesn't want to do. In essence, both Blake and Yang fell into these same initial traps, but where Tai essentially broke and has never seemingly recovered or addressed his feelings, Yang, whether she was ready to or not, put herself back uh. out there, confronted her pain, and was able to move past it. Where Raven fled due to losing faith in the war and wanting to retreat to protect herself, Blake left to protect others. Where Raven is dismissive of the impact of her actions, Blake wanted to be hated for them. When Raven ran at the end of the volume, but we don't Blake know anything about Tai Yang. Stayed. Yeah, we know nothing and here about him. Begins volume six, where the subtext. Okay. Yeah. Like, All right, I I kind of want to go through the bulk of the volumes like one at a time, and then we give our comments. But like, I, there's so much to cover there. Oh my sure. god. Uh, Ty, yeah. we know nothing about Ty. That image you were showing of Ty, I believe, was volume eight when Ruby was giving her speech. And he's in despair over the fact that his daughters are off fighting a fucking war. Also, come on, man, you're using the lame version of the vo of the, the Ruby font. Come on, there's a, there's a free version of the <laughs> official version out now. Like, um, but also, like, the only thing that we really know about him is that he is a teacher at Signal. So, like, obviously, he didn't just fall into despair. Like, yeah, he probably did for a while, but he is still out there working. He's just not out on the field doing the same things that Crow is. And I would say that that's personally a problem because why should we care? Why should we give a shit about Ty when he's barely a fucking character in comparison to Crow? But, you know. You can't say that. I think that that is really disingenuous to his character. Yeah, especially when he is still raising his kids alone as a single father for like most of their like teenage and adult years. Like that's pretty fucking meaningful. I wouldn't say someone who's in despair would be capable of doing that, right? And I've seen some fanfics where it kind of goes in that bad direction, but let's not talk about that. The fact <laughs> of the matter is, yeah, this is very ingenuous to his character it's not a binary this is the problem zell keeps putting these characters in a binary despite despite insisting that they are so complicated he has the same mindset as blake and Which that's why he likes her so much makes sense <laughs> all right and it is okay, finally let's, time let's not... to pull volume out six. the numbers for volume five. Oh yeah yeah volume five has a total runtime of three hours and 30 minutes the second longest in the entire series. Uh, three, sorry, three minutes, sorry, three hours, 30 minutes, 26 seconds, with a total of 12,626 seconds. It's, Please, it's amazing. Everyone guess what percentage of it is Bumblebee time? Ooh. It's amazing to me how My they God. have the longest volume to date, and yet it is filled with absolutely nothing. Yep. Yeah. I know, but th th that's what's going to make this thing a little bit more difficult for me. Uh, but I want to say is around 11.83%. <laughs> okay, get some people in. All right, I will say that one person has actually guessed it. <clears throat> Ooh. Well, oh, my close God. Close to it. Um, so... The Bumblebee time measures out to about 7 minutes and 46 seconds. For 466 seconds, there's a total of 3.69% of Volume 5. Oh my mm -hmm. god! Mind you, this is the volume where they reconnect. Yep. yep. Yeah. 
So basically half of that is just so them volume. seeing each other for the first time in forever. Uh, basically, yeah. 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 All right, let's hopefully so get to the like, end. Uh, where, let's, hope, let's hopefully get to volume seven before we actually make a comment. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, well, it's gonna be hard. Would that would that be okay? Because um, like we I don't want to have his video go too long without true, commentary, right? True. Oh god, this is gonna be. I just yeah. don't want to run the time too long because what we're we're barely halfway through, and I only have an hour and fifteen minutes. So you're the one that wanted to efap this. This is I your know, fault. I know. Rapidly becoming <laughs> text. But first, a quick digression to the Adam trailer, mostly to the part where he gaslights Blake into accepting him murdering people senselessly on missions. He throws it was self in defense face, in that mission in and guilts her by claiming he fears that she'll abandon him. We can see her trying to look him in the eyes, but as ever, they're hit by a mask. Like, they imply the that it happened itself, more than once, bees, but like, we, we don't get the context the for the other the ones. And Blake seeing Ilian's son off, giving the latter a peck on the cheek oh, as they part the ways trailer. after he says she's with the one she needs to be with. His friend and partner Neptune even comments it's a shame before being dismissed by Sun, arguing that his chasing after Blake was never about that, after which Sun largely drops out of the main narrative and falls into the books. While traveling on the Argus Express, Blake shows herself to be extremely... Uh, briefly, uh, Jake the Surgeon. Uh, yes, I'm going to keep calling you that. Uh, Ty should again <laughs> uh, try again with Raven. Maybe they'll make a kid who isn't a failure this time. Oof. Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> Yang, racing to get her bags down for her despite Yang not needing or wanting her to. But despite her annoyance, Yang reassures Blake that they will be fine. They just need a little time to readjust. See Ruby and Weiss watching them grinning like fools over their relationship. The casual vibe is quickly Um, that's really Grim creepy. Attack, don't, see don't. Blake and Yang I hate the fact that the routine, characters actively ship each music. other in real life. Good to see you're not rusty. <laughs> After the train derails, leaving the team separated, tensions are running high, but one should note how Blake's eyes consistently trail after Yang, even when there's no need to. This will become a trend for both. <laughs> she's talking! Hey. Oh, I remember Yeah, she's this. the one that's talking! Get who else was looking at her in that scene? Train derails, leaving the team separated. Tensions are running high, but one should note how Blake's eyes consistently trail up. Oh, it's almost as if Ruby's looking at her. It, it, yeah, I. You know what? Enabler confirmed, everyone. Enabler yeah. confirmed. Ruby oh and Yang, God. man, they're just they're just doing I the sideways shuffle all the time. You can <laughs> tell. You, get, you just don't see it on screen. All right, it's just it's happening off screen, everyone. Absolutely. And and the only reason why Weiss isn't looking at her is because she's trying not to slip and fall on the ice because she's wearing heels. <laughs> like a dumbass. Yeah, like a dumbass. But yeah, it, it, this, this is just so, so incredibly dumb. Because I, I think, yeah, this is from like one of Zell's trailers for this video. And I think this was the part that really drove the, the yeah. uh, drove the idea that you wanted to do this live stream. <laughs> uh, I hate the scene, uh, Eric. Uh, sorry, Oscar Borgia Jr. I hate the scene where Yang looks at Blake because realistically, Yang should be angry with her and would actually be angry with her. Yeah, yeah, Yang. Yeah. Yang. True. I, I'm sorry. Did you just fucking Friday, Five Minutes at Freddy's jump scare me in my ears? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I've been hearing weird sounds out of your audio setup, and it's just occasionally, like, I just, that one sounded like fucking Foxy. Wait, up. me? Ah! Uh, yeah, you. Wait, me? Yes. Yes, I, you. I have, I have no idea. I just, I would just rub some, like, crust out of my face, but I didn't, I don't know how that would make I think you bumped your mic. I think you bumped your mic. That's what it was. All right. Yang, even when there's no need to. Uh, and why is it struggling in those scenes? Yeah. Those left behind in the train crash are having to come to grips with some extremely horrifying revelations about yep. the impossible task before them. And though I gave him my answers... How do I destroy Salem? Not all of them were to his liking. You can't. Oh yeah, no! They were all looking at Jin. That means they all settled in the Everyone seemingly yeah. tired and asleep, everyone wants to bang but they're them. stuck there due to the cold <laughs> and the snow. The town is actually infested with the apathy, grim that exhausts people by mere proximity and slowly rob them of their will to do so much as anything. Their hidden presence leaves everyone extra on edge, though we can see Blake making an effort to stay close to Yang despite the latter's spiraling mood. Soon after their arrival, Blake and Yang separate themselves from the rest of the cast, and Yang's PTSD flares up. 
Blake is quick to try and I think this was Speaking actually Adam's a good scene. Isn't it his is. fighting ability, but his manipulation. Yeah. How he'd get it in her head and make her It's just more. wasted. It was going great up yeah. until Blake promised to protect oh. Yang, hurting her with this apparent lack of faith in her abilities, treating Yang like she oh, needs oh, protecting goodness. when that isn't what she wants and causing Yang to storm off as their confrontation. It's almost as if Blake didn't understand Blake's emotional needs and thus, by your logic, is not compatible with her. Isn't that right, Zell? Because yeah. if Sun didn't understand Blake's Blake. emotional <laughs> needs, then Blake not understanding Yang's emotional needs would lead to the same conclusion. Wouldn't it, Zell? You said Blake doesn't understand mm. Blake's emotional needs. <laughs> I am tired. It is it is getting close to midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, I just I just wanted to point that out because it was yeah, funny. This, but this yeah. Weird. Yeah. It's um, this is yeah. absolutely true. Like this is incredibly hypocritical. Like I, like we've said before. If anything, Sun looks even more, even more like a very viable option, even though he deserves better. Again, mm -hmm. uh, because when it's clear that he doesn't um, understand Blake's viewpoint, guess what? Unlike with Blake, the narrative actually gives Sun the chance to talk to Blake and understand what she is saying and then like uh, uh 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 what was it basically adjust his methods of helping her to accommodate that yep. instead of just rushing the conclusion like they do here in this volume i i I'm don't remember, i don't think there's a single scene between Blake and Yang after this before the conclusion is it no there isn't <laughs> no there isn't which down, is however. why i already have my guess Okay, editor note that was unnecessary. Blake, who nearly died, is clearly yeah. still in shock, and enough so that Yang, after looking her over, takes her hand and leads her out of the room. The next okay. moment isn't strictly Bumblebee, but it okay. is useful. Yes, it's kind an of old fair. and long since retired Huntress Maria commends the next generation for, in some cases, already being emotionally stronger than like she the, was. The, the kind of problem with that is that it's hard to have that, that as shipping this. scenes with this girls because we Yang touch each other a lot more often after. in non-sexual ways or romantic ways. Yeah, friends friends can touch each other all the time. Yeah, and and girls do it a lot more often yeah. than than guys do. Or in well, the guys show their affection in different ways when it comes to physicality. Like we roughhouse more so yeah. than than like I I would like yes. actively like tackle my friends. Like they would tackle me. We would we would all like like bump shoulders and try to like shove each other around. That's how we show our affection. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not saying that this isn't like a potentially romantic scene. I'm just saying that it's harder to justify because girls have this kind of dynamic with each other on a non-romantic basis. So you have to make it a lot more clearer than just subtlety yeah. like that because it can be misconstrued. Yeah, it, it's very yep. easy. I mean, Which is fair. what happens all the time in discussions about this ship. Roughhousing yep. can be misconstrued as, as as romantic too if you if you put it in the right light. Like you, yeah, it's it's all just about perspective. And right here, it's like Blake was out of it. Yang needed to save her. I think you could make an argument either way, where either it could be romantic or it could just be, hey, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. Being emotionally strong, that Rex, was, you are on a roll. Her blinded. She very pointedly glances at Yang <laughs> as she says oh. this. This is, is there a new commenting on Yang getting back is there a new the picture after losing yes, her arm, or Maria left Ooh. best herself for choosing to hide. Given what Blake said in Volume Five regarding Yang's strength, this was a good reminder to her that despite the wounds she suffered, Yang <laughs> is no damsel. Oh my God! Keeps ease up between the two of them again. That's how, amazing. Well, no, I, how are they connecting these points? Like this is. Maria's like, oh, you're, you're able to weather the storm. Right, and, Yang, and Blake's just like, my God, Yang is so courageous and brave. Or strong. Yeah. She's so strong. Even though she doesn't even... Yeah, she, even though we don't even see her re give much of a reaction to that during that scene, really. Awesome. Well, it's... Like, it's granted, the, it's, everybody was looking at Yang. It's the yeah. writers telling us how we should feel about the scene. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. It, I hate yep. that. Oscar Borgia says, I hate this scene where Yang takes Blake's hand instead of helping and save Ruby, who is more important than Blake and would actually make sense. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't mind her taking Blake's hand. Uh, it's 
who you prioritize in an emergency does say something about you, but it doesn't always make the most logical sense. Um, sometimes you will prioritize right. the only people. reason why people it's die like... running back into their burning houses to save their cats, yeah. even if they're not actually all that. When you really, on the grand scheme of things, they're not all that important. Like it's it's that's the the value of a cat life versus the value of a human life is nowhere near equivalent. But some people will still value their own lives over the lives of their own cats. Like it's just a thing. We are not rational beings. Yeah, not I'm okay mention... with her doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, she literally did way, value her cat's life. Seen... <laughs> look, look, I was drinking. The, anyways, though, the bigger issue. Just because Yang cares about pussy more than the her sister. I... <laughs> okay, there's that one. We we got there. We finally got to the pussy joke that this stream needed. Thank you. Oh, anyways, you're welcome. I we, I, I the, was paid the, off the by the sturgeon. Issue. Yeah. I, I hope that you didn't um, choke on your drink. The, the... Hopefully. But like the um what was it? The uh that scene isn't bad. I agree with Celtic here. The problem is is that that scene in isolation is good, but when you take the con again, this is why I say in my video, it's all about emphasis. When you give when you spend more time on a story, you add more emphasis to it. And thereby, and by doing that, you make it more important in the audience's head. Yang and Ruby have had so little interactions with each other throughout the story, which signals in your brain, even, you know, subliminally, that it's not important in any sort of character, <laughs> plot, or relationship sense. So that when freaking, uh, uh, what was it? So, so that when Yang does something like that, it comes off as insanely weird be because Ruby and Yang literally have nothing to go on for the most part. In a regular show, uh, that, that, and you have that same scene where the characters' relationships were built up pre-establishedly, I would be totally fine with this. Everyone would. But it's in the context of Ruby, which is why it's terrible. Yep. I agree. That's why emphasis is important. Again, as they all arrive in yeah. the city of Argus, Blake fondly watching Yang play and coo over Jean's nephew. Horrifying, horrifying, horrifying. I remember we reduced the, the child's head in fixing Ruby and it was still uncomfortable. It's followed up with an elaborate yeah. mission to secure an aircraft in which Yang drives Blake out into the wilderness to sabotage a radio and, well, just watch these adorable fools. These adorable fools? You sure I shouldn't come with? More intruders means we're more likely to be seen. Besides, stealth isn't exactly your, um... I mean, you're great, and I'll hurry back. Go. Uh-huh. Kind of makes you forget that their last sensible, that their last major interaction was one of them being relatively angry that the other didn't respect her individuality and and uh self yeah. uh, self i'm i'm blanking on the yep. word on her own uh her own autonomy as a yeah her thank her you autonomy that's basically. the word i was looking yeah, for. yeah yeah her own autonomy is first yeah it, it's this is this is why shit like this just rings hollow to me because they don't do the work yeah. to get from point a to point b and it, it's one of the most important things about a romance arc. Getting from point A to point B. Yes. Again, again, emphasis. That's the key word there. Build up. You can say build up, but truly it's emphasis. Where when you say that, yeah, when, when, you, when, you, when you say that like freaking the scene before where they were arguing and they immediately oh. resolve it, I guess, off screen and then you just immediately have it to where they're sort of buddy-buddy with each other, it cuts the impact of Blake reaching her realization when fighting Adam. Yep. I, I was going to say... Uh, with um, Yang. It, it, no, it, it's... A romance arc I, is typically like game from point A to point C. You have a point B in between. They're just completely skipping B and going to C. Yeah, like, yeah. N yeah, no, nothing fucking happened in the middle there. What the hell? Yes. I completely the skipped. Unfortunately, the plan Even goes makes no sense. I thought you said you knew their jargon. Jargon was fine, but our pilots 
aren't elderly women. Oh, well, they got me there. Adam's been waiting for Blake to be alone since the Grim attacking the Argus Express and ambushed Blake intent on punishing her for her defiance and his defeat at Haven. Oh. Why did you have to come into my life and ruin animation. everything? You stalked me across Anima. I don't want anything to do with your life. Despite having no reason to regard him well and fighting like hell, Blake does continue trying to reason with him. To try and get him to leave, she doesn't give up on people. All sorts of people. No, she just wants him to leave. Yeah. He's trying to kill her. Yeah. I. It's not like she's giving not up giving on him. Up, not That's giving literally up just on like him. you are an equal combatant right. to me. If I don't get you to back down, I might fucking die. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I really hate because I, I don't think I, I think I just blanked this whole thing out because Adam's lines are just so Cringe. bad. Yeah. yeah, they're cringe, and it's like, <laughs> why do you, why do you have to make him this soap opera character? Like, you, it, it makes it yeah. hard to view him as an actual threat to her, and that is why a lot of people don't believe that he is a threat to her, but they still want to treat him like he is. So it's like, pick your, pick it, pick one. Like you can't have. You can't have him be a a clown that has no power, but at the same time is an actual threat. They are two opposite things. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. You cannot eat both of the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> not with that attitude. It's not gonna stop Blake from trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one hurt me quite like you. You didn't leave scars. You just left me alone. Wait, 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 wait. What did that no say? Hurt me quite like you. Hey, I can't be more fun with the scrolling. You didn't leave <sighs> scars. Telling how the only time he ever shows his eyes to Blake and us is just using his trauma as a means to assert control. You just no. left me <laughs> alone. It, literally, oh, his how how do we know? How do we know that it's the only time that he ever showed his eyes to us in the nick of time? Not alone. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Zell, you get points. You get points. All right. That was good. Yeah. You, that, that was that, good. That, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can't laugh too loud because my freaking folks are going to complain about it. But yeah. Oh, my sister's going to kill me tomorrow. Um, yeah, but oh my god, I that worth it? Worth it, Zell? You just earned so many points from me for that. Your video is still wrong, yes. but man, dude, good show. That, good was, show. that was such yeah. a palate cleanser. Uh, good comedic timing, Adam uh, Zelke. Uh, they had to make Adam a soap opera character to both push Bubblebee and neuter or the racism plot line, so they didn't need to talk about it anymore. No, ah, um, uh, that's why I'm so basically. pissed. Like I managed to balance this, I think. I managed to, I, I, I know it's not perfect, but I think I managed to pull this off with our at version of Adam. Not according to, Li not according to Lilith. She's like, oh, you made him competent person. That means that you're bad. He's not yeah, supposed to be competent. competent. Against the heroes. Yeah. How, how even dare you make he, the villains the an show, actual threat? Pretty competent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that makes no real sense. Even though in the base show... Like, as a fighter, he's also still pretty competent. You're just having that be more consistent. So, I, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh... <sighs> Yang doesn't promise to fight for Blake or to save her, but merely assures her that Yang will buy her time to catch her breath. Adam is also key to this moment, Blake's former partner in both combat and romance, staring down her current partner and seeing her as a romantic rival. Unlike... Not current partner. They're not together no. yet. Wrong, no, wrong you, verbiage. Stop, stop calling them partners when, like, I mean, technically, I guess, yeah, they're, but they're like working part, they're co-workers, they're not partners. Yeah, I, I understand, you juxtaposed yeah, the they're... romantic partner angle, I'm sorry, but no, you can't do that. Yeah, that's illegal. Yeah, don't pull out the, 
Yeah, don't pull out the wedding rings before they even had the, their first date, man. Like, come on. He, he was he was calling them partners since like volume two. What well, he calls them partners. What I'm, what I'm arguing know. here is he juxtaposed first romantic partner with her current partner. It's like, yeah. wait, you're transitive property in this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And insist that they have yeah. business to settle. The fight is fierce, and Blake reveals the nature of Adam's right, semblance fight. and its similarities to Yang. Adam growing I guess because it was Monty's. Why didn't Blake tell Yang about this when they knew that Adam was going to be a problem? Mm -hmm. Why didn't they it's ever talk? Like they don't communicate. Yeah, it's almost like they never talked about Adam. Like you would, you would assume that friends might friends might just talk about you know, hey, you know, Blake, there was that guy that cut off my arm. What was his deal? Um, yeah, you you kind of had a drawing of him in your book. I remember seeing that back in volume two. You mind mind elaborating on him? It's like, oh yeah, he's my ex. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. what happened there? Well, he, obviously he stabbed me and cut your arm off. I'm not not keen on that. <laughs> um, it all the yeah. while, <laughs> so much so that Blake and Yang merely looking at one another is enough to send him into a fit of rage. Yang offers an Adam because out, the but the writers moment he sees yeah. her hand shaking, he tries to undermine her confidence, only to be countered by Blake. How does Adam know to do that? Yeah. Like, you, how do yeah, you know that someone's he, he traumatized just psycho, by it? Psychic because, oh, he's such a good abuser, okay? He can he can smell the freaking trauma coming off of every woman he comes across. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, mm, I can smell you're interested in Blake. Oh, no, you're interested in each other. I have to kill you now. I, well, I mean, like, he's a faunist, so obviously he must have a better sense of smell that he would be able to smell something like that. And that is what makes him such a good abuser. Uh, Adam Zekiel, uh, Zelki, Zelki, uh, whatever. Uh, one of my favorite joke lines to use about them winning this fight despite not training is, but they won with the power of lesbians, so it's fine, which is what I think the writer's justification was. If you want to see a they won by the power of lesbians, go watch Gundam, G you know, Witch from Mercury, all right? That's a better version of that trope. They, <laughs> they literally shut down half the fucking solar system I with the waves of rainbow. Nah. <laughs> Uh, spoilers. I, I haven't seen Witch of Mercury yet. Don't worry, that won't make any sense to you until late game. In fact, it it arguably doesn't make any sense okay. even in context, but don't worry about it. It It's a solid... <laughs> the prologue and the first season are solid. The second season is rough. <laughs> just trying okay. to Oscar again. Away so you won't oh. have to... uh, Oscar. Uh, I hate this scene so much because they neutered Adam's character and sacrificed him to push Bumblebee, which makes no sense at all. Why would Adam care about Yang? Uh, none if it makes it all where it's beyond awful and cringe. Oh my god, people, I appreciate you subscribing, but please stop. It's ringing in my <laughs> ear constantly. <laughs> Died. <laughs> She's not protecting me, Adam. And I'm not protecting her. We're protecting each other. Blech. Yes, Blech. that is what projecting each other means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, so it, it's dude, so this is, this is so forced. It's so ham fisted. It's such a ham fisted way that emphasize their growth here. This was the moment of understanding between the pair. Yang can see the kind of danger Adam poses and why Blake would try to lure him away from the people she cares about. And Blake can now see Yang wants an equal partnership and follows it up by affirming her intention to I'm never glad they can do that without again. saying a single fucking Blake word won't about be it. the girl who runs yep. anymore. Exactly. Adam follows it up by trying to get under their skin, directly comparing his romantic uh, relationship with Blake to <laughs> Yang's, only for Yang to see right- I'm sorry, are you downplaying Adam's romantic feelings for Blake? Yeah, like, he is. I, I hate this because, like, what's wrong with Adam having... Like, I understand that he, he's fucking abusive, and he had... But is it wrong for someone to fall in love? No. It is wrong for how he behaves. The fact that he's expressing this, it should... I, it's the I hate way this. that he expresses I, it that's I, I don't problem. want to defend this Adam. I don't want to be defending this Adam, but you will put <laughs> me in this position where I have to defend this Adam. <laughs> also we are officially two thirds of the way through and we have less than an hour left <laughs> yay okay. right yay. through his manipulations you know she made a promise to me once that she'd always be at my side <laughs> and look how well she's kept it Did she make that I mean you didn't you? do anything when she first left so who cares to be. I, I hate this perspective it's like the person you were pretending to be is like 
bitch? What if he changed? You don't, you don't know anything about him, Yang. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? You never asked. You never asked anything about Adam prior to this point. In fact, dude, she the lack read the of script. communication between these two is really... Yeah, yeah, exactly. The lack she of communication the the between note. these two prior to these sorts of things is what... It, this pisses me off so much. Again, the whole reason for their separation is their lack of communicating with one another, which is shown to be a negative as far as a narrative for good reason. That makes it sense because it was wrong for Blake to assume. Exactly. See, see, here's the here's the thing, Twilight. Here's this little rule. If it ha all right, say it with me, audience. If it happened, if it happened off, screen, off screen, it, it didn't, didn't happen. happen. At all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Despite the danger and them offering him a chance to leave, Adam resolves to kill them both and is defeated by the pair. Struck low in his last desperate gamble to kill Blake backfires yeah. twice over. Blake breaks down crying from the murder, nope. the trauma from the Lack grief of body. Of He's and still tries alive. to assure Yang she won't break her <laughs> promise. Yang, remembering how Blake stressed eye contact three volumes earlier, ensures that Blake can see her eyes when she acknowledges Blake's promise. No. I'm not going to break my promise. How do you know that it was stressed? I know you won't. You can make this... Why do you think that Blake wasn't shocked when Adam took off his mask? She's seen his scar before. Yeah. She has looked him in the eyes before. She mm. knew about this and never brought it up. But instead of chalking that up as a plot hole or as a character flaw in any regard that would be negative to Blake, you put all the onus onto Adam not somehow looking her in the eye when he has patently done it, apparently, in the past. Yeah. Like, it, I, you, you take one, one bullet point that we see. We've only ever seen them in the context of a romantic, like, context once. And you take that as rote on all of their romantic experience, despite the fact that one, Adam may not have been abusive from the start of the relationship, which is a very common tale. Usually the which abuse often, doesn't stop. Yeah, which the, is very common. Very common. Yeah. You, the abuse doesn't start until something goes wrong in the relationship later. That happens. People change. And you're in a terrorist cell. So that makes a lot of sense. What might change? <laughs> yep. Also, this is the point where the beauty of Bella and the Beast oh, animals become oh, the most blatant. We had this. a few light homages early on, but this fight is where they start paying a full-on homage to the fairy tale source. I mean, just look at this stuff. After this... Must... <laughs> That's not the fairy tale. Well, so, like, that is that is the popular 1993 film. 1993? Is that right? 1990? Uh, 1991, I think. It's 91 or 90, because 93 was Lion King. 1990 uh, film. No, ni what? Uh, 1990 was The Rescuers Down Under. Ah, so it'd be 91 uh, then. Ni 91, 92. Yeah, yeah but 91, any, anyway, I just checked yeah. it. It's 91. Yeah, yeah, 91. Um, yeah, it's it's not the popular fairy tale. It is the Disney-fied popular fairy tale. Because you know what? The Beast was very polite to beauty in the original story, the French version that was written in the 1700s. So, like, he, he, like, Belle, beauty, beauty was a uh, very kind of a bitch to him in, in that story. And in some versions, he dies because she was such an asshole towards him. And also, okay, so that, you know what? That's off the table. It's not the original fairy tale, it's the 1991 film. Yep. But now, as yep. an allusion to the 1991 film, it's still terrible. Yep. Yes. The, the references that you <laughs> and point and up are only doing that in terms of like. Well, yeah. Cosmetic like, at best. They're cosmetic. I, yeah, like I I explained this earlier why it's bad because the whole point of the story is that you can't judge based off of appearances, like, and you're saying that he is a beast because he has a scar and he is bad because of that and he is he is nothing but a monster and you shouldn't look past that and try to figure out like the person underneath that it, it's it's <clears throat> my my tits will not be calm yeah and keep in mind <laughs> 
Arrest your breast. I understand. <laughs> Arrest your breast. Hakuna, your tatas. Chain them up. <laughs> I love that. I love that copy pasta so much. <laughs> Band bandage your boobies. <laughs> okay. But like freaking, uh, yeah, that, like that's just true because fact of the matter is now we're not saying that Adam should be redeemed or his actions should be completely justified. The whole point of creating an abusive character is seeing how someone got to that abuse. We have the idea of Adam and we can imaginate in our heads, you know, use our imagination, you know, to figure out what, how fucking, how he got to this point and why he says these things. But if the show doesn't give us any material to work with, why does why should we take him seriously? He that, this is why I call him a furry Elliot Roger in my video because how the fuck you expect me to believe that this asshole is a suitable freaking antagonist that serves to bring both Blake and Yang together? You may as well just bring up a wall because at least a wall can't talk. Yeah. This is this is more why I hate Adam than his actions in the show is that he is just a terrible character for for all of this. His 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 relation to his illusion is terrible. His characterization is terrible. His role in the story is terrible. Everything about him is terrible and it has nothing to do with him as a person as a character. He is just a terribly written character. Yep. We also see them sitting close together in a way that evokes Ren and Nora at the end of Volume Four. Yeah, this is fair. Interlinked. Significant glances sent Yang's way that she seems bashful yeah, over. Although you think before, they'd be a little awkward, really but I can't murder her. Man, but, the know. narrative yeah. and thematic importance well, I guess, of Yang being yeah, 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 yeah. justifiably homicide of man. being the one to stand. At her I, side I'm pretty sure that they're murder sexual because they they mostly have romantic moments after really traumatic things that happen to them, and this is why I say that their romance is mostly predicated on their shared trauma all right volume six time for the guessing game oh my volume God. six had a total run length of three hours and 18 minutes and 39 seconds to a total of 11,919 seconds what is the percentile that is bumblebee time do you suppose six percent really okay that's a bet yeah that that is a bet other people i'm waiting for people to filter in chat just a little mm -hmm. here, just to get yeah i i think that there is a significant delay between us and them there we go 15 percent uh yeah uh, yeah actually yeah. actually wait a minute wait a minute i change i changed my mind slightly i will move it towards 9.35 <laughs> okay <clears throat> Bumblebee time, as I estimated, one hour, 13 minutes and 31 seconds for a total of 40, uh, 4,411 seconds for a total of 37.01%. Oh, okay. Yeah, much higher than I expected. 37.01. But they are glued yeah, to the hip in this yeah, volume. Same and here. it is definitely, it is volume six where they decided to pull the trigger on Blake and Yang being a couple. There is no doubt about it in my mind. Yeah. Um, every every volume sure. before this has had so little in terms of any kind of Bumblebee interaction. This one is the most dense with it. Yeah. And and it's it's really weird that the moment that they kill Adam is when they start having like the significant romance and flirting and all that kind of stuff. It's. It's why I think that it's kind of gross. Yep. Uh, volume four through six mm -hmm. percentage is 16.87%. And uh, volume one through six percentage is 18.73%. That's where we're currently standing with benchmarks. Um, I'm just really sad because I don't have any of the volume nine stats. Mm, yeah. Okay, volume seven. Also, Gang Rick, sorry. No problem, man. Something. You have a good night. Right, Back seat in this volume, having been major players in the last couple. This does not, however, mean their ship is still not sailing. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Blake and Yang have slid back into their old, comfortable relationship quite naturally. Fond eye rolls and all. 
Maybe we should pick up the pace. There's also a lot of oh. silent background communication between the pair that is not actually rolled her eyes. characters constantly silently conferring. One of the first things Sil Blake... They were standing next to each other! That's not silently... Yeah. They could, were just standing there! Could you show there. any... Could you show some There's more examples of, of those silent conference or whatever? There's oh, one. Not silently conferring moments? Is not sh shown with other characters. No. They're looking at each other. It's constantly silently conferring. Okay, so they're standing there and looking at each other. whoop de doo One of the first things Blake Are does upon repairing her weapon there? is align it with gold, which is both that. a reference to the practice of Kintsugi for repairing things that are broken and an obvious homage to Yang, oh my God. taking on a dash of her favorite color. As you can see, Yang had Blake's violet on hand for a long time. We also see that Yang remains a disaster at flirting when she walked all the way around a large area just so she could stare doe-eyed at Blake's new haircut. Sorry, just not used to the new hair yet. Is it bad? No, no, it's good. Great, even. Man, I did not sign up to be a babysitter. The reactions from out. I I feel you, Mero. I, uh, I feel the same way. It's it's. I want to clout my own Trekkie over this. It's so <laughs> bad. It's not okay. What he's pointing out is fine so far. Um, yeah. I don't. I, obviously, the com conference thing was stupid, but everything here was right. like. Blake report, but repaired it with gold. Well, we can look at Pietro did that, but maybe she asked for it to be gold because she's stupid. Um, why would you ever want a blade that's been cut in half? That just seems horribly, horribly, horribly uh, structurally unsound. Yeah, um, and not only that, but gold is really terrible combat thing because it is not a very strong metal. I, it could just be a gold-colored metal. I, yeah. I just presumed it wasn't like an actual gold out I, I hope it's not actually gold holy fuck is a bad idea i mean he specifically way. said kintsugi so i would imagine that he thinks that it's gold uh i'll give him the benefit of the doubt um but and then of course them being but cutesy even... over their hair everyone squeed over that scene that ship that so i if that's fine outside help this and show what's going on Following that, yeah. I was gonna say is like after this point them, forward, they it, actually it just, do some legwork to actually make these a couple. Like, yes, it's volume six onward. Yeah. You're Although right. it, it happens after the murder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's Although, that's why it's so creepy that, to me. That, yeah, the, yeah, that's why I'm saying. Like, okay, the other moments in this volume past this point, I don't like them, but fine. Like, they're not bad in terms of building up what should have been, other than you know, it should have. Those build up moments should have happened much earlier. The problem with the hair scene in particular is that this is a time when they're fresh off of their whole interaction and them, you know, killing Adam and shit. Like this must have been at least like a couple days after that. And they're pulling this weird flirtatious thing that doesn't even gel well with the vibe of the scene. So it's just eh. Uh, Mupa, I, yeah. I never realized before this video how desperate Bumblebee shippers were. If this is the mental gymnastics they have to perform for their ship, it makes me really pity them. Yeah. Yeah, they're they are fast tracking this ship in order to justify Volume Nine because I'm assuming that that's what they're doing. But uh, again, like the thing that I don't understand is like how they can do all of this like forehead touching and stuff. And not be like, hey, I wonder if she likes me. Because forehead touching <laughs> is not a normal thing people do to just friends. No. Holding hands is, touching foreheads is not. Yeah, like, I Definitely. could touch foreheads with my friend if they had just gone through something traumatic and I was trying to calm them down like they were going into a panic. Like, in that very limited circumstance, I could see doing it. But outside of that, no, you don't. You don't really get that close and personal with a friend. No. Um, Adam Zekiel, uh, Zel Zel Zielkel, Zel Zevil. After V six, <laughs> Blake and Yang have no other plot lines with Raven and the White Fang put on a shelf, and I feared they were just going to be useless background lesbians. Uh, from then on, with nothing else to do. Um, not necessarily there. Like, they don't need other side plots. They're actually relatively involved in the main plot. Um, I don't I don't think that's really a problem for them. As much as there is a main plot to have. Like, as much as any other uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Borgia, I hate this hair scene. It's so cringe and awful. It makes no sense. Why would Yang stare at Blake and that flirt makes no sense? It's zero sense. No, that's that's fine. It's them being awkward mm-hmm. and like that's. Yeah, I'm okay with it. It's not I don't really see it as as flirting Honestly, though. <laughs> it is awkward, but I don't really see it as necessarily flirting. She just said like I'm I'm not used to. Cut you cutting your hair. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I am autistic and I have the same reaction when my friends and other people cut their hair. Um, so like I have to stare at them too. It or or like the feeling Maybe. it's the same kind of feeling of like when you when you get a filling in your tooth and then you have to like pay attention to it for a couple of hours to get used to it. It's kind of like that. I'm not saying that it's I'm not saying that it's not a romantic moment or whatever. I'm just saying that I don't necessarily see it as flirting. <laughs> Mupa. Mupa did the forehead touch Most to check for someone's to. fever. That's great. Oh. She did it out of her weakness. Yeah. I, I I love you, Mupa. You're great. Uh, <laughs> the um but no, I, I would say that like I think I would have liked that hair scene better if it were like later in the volume instead of like near the very start. I when, I actually like, think we, it couldn't have been much should, later because I don't know. her being like, oh, you're, I'm not used to new I, time progression in volume seven is an issue. Like that's part of my issue with yeah, it. yeah, yes. Okay, well, ah. Yang is also the first to notice when Blake is distressed and to see if she's okay, and Blake is the only one who laughs at Yang's corny jokes. There's of course the adorable selfie scene, yeah. Blake leading an exhausted Yang out of bed, yep. Blake falling asleep in Yang's lap, yep. and of course Ace Operative Maro highlighting that the mm. pair almost always team up. Hey, have you two ever thought about branching out a little? I wonder if that was like a direct call out really? because the fans would complain really about that. Good stuff. Yeah. Keep it up. Given Plus, how reactive their writing is, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I, yeah. I would totally doubt that was preemptive to try and be like, yeah, no, they, they team up with each other because they're just that effective. It's like, okay, fine. Like, these are all fine points. Again, they're they are finally doing heavy lifting. I wish yeah. we had gotten stuff like this yeah. for their friendship. Yeah. I wish that this was more yep. what was going on in the first couple of volumes. It would have established their friendship and then them justifying them getting into a romantic relationship before Adam came along. That is the main problem that I have, is that nothing, there was a barren wasteland for their relationship up until Adam. So their relationship is only predicated on Adam. That is my problem. And maybe in all, this is even more bad because they barely have interactions with other char- with the other characters that they should be interacting at least almost as much uh, with, so that to to at least give the main relationship some meaning there because there are interactions that they have with other people that they can't have with each other, but because of how drastic, like the gulf be- between uh friend relationships and romantic relationships in terms of like screen time and storytelling shouldn't be the gulf of fucking mexico okay yeah that that shouldn't be how wide this is it shouldn't be like the grand canyon that phase when adam is the number one bumblebee supporter yep (laughs) literally the entire relationship (laughs) rests on his spine Pretty the much, bedroom yeah. Eyes of this scene yep. on that not date with Team Funky and getting ready to dance it's together. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, Oscar and I are hitting the movies. If anyone wants, yep. To... Oh, okay. Yep. We also see Ren and Nora debating <laughs> I, I love that scene. It's a good relationship scene. using yeah, Blake it's a good and scene. Yang as props. My scene is better Nora though. Insisting that they're essentially <laughs> are dating, while Ren insinuating one of them might not. I mean, be do you not agree? Nora then. Which scene? I'm trying to. Uh, the scene that I said that we should do for that. You 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 asked for it. You asked if oh. if you were, you asked for permission. And I, I know, said, I but need how long ago was that? <laughs> that was that a couple of months ago. Okay, you, you understand. My memory is Swiss cheese. I well, I yeah, haven't written. I, I haven't written down somewhere. But <laughs> I know. But I gave you the context for you to remember. Come on. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Oh, it's it's the makeup scene. <laughs> Oh, God, I only very vaguely remember. Ah. Oh, I'm sad. Kaiser, the freaking jump scares. 
Black Pira tries to bridge the gap by throwing herself into a kiss for this Pira time. It was a tragic moment of surrender, of jumping ahead on things she'd never get to really do. For Nora, it's an attempt to bypass the increasing complexity and strain of her and Ren's relationship rather than confronting it. It's almost as if that was a very unhealthy thing for her to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is that is that yeah. what you're building to? Is and that these are getting progressively more healthy right. as time goes on? Is that your goal here? No. Suffice to say, it doesn't. I work. guess if you see it's them eventually breaking up, it's healthy. Then sure. Background stuff, however, when Team Ruby is ordered to help Amber, why does and arrest why do your hips wiggle so Robin much? Hill, Blake is extremely uncomfortable at the idea, just as Yang is leery of not showing General Ironwood all the information, given how much he's putting on the line for his plans. The pair have a deep conversation about it, along with it's Blake's like grief over being told forced them to murder sooner. someone. You can see her body language and expressions growing more closed off as it goes on. She expects to be ignored. Instead, Yang listened to her and decided to support Blake's idea, turning their ambush into a fact-sharing mission and an olive branch to Robin, something that Ironwood had consistently refused to make himself do up to this point, despite everyone saying it would be a good idea. You can see the moment when Blake realizes no. Yang is actually listening to her. The I wouldn't trust fades Robin face, as far as I can throw her. Her rise and her posture opens yeah, up. Same, this is an entirely different relationship to her dynamic with Adam. We get a few more... That's... I mean, Fine, you can say that about everyone else. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's you can right. literally say that about everyone else. I, I, that isn't... scene had a lot of problems with it, but the fact that Yang yes. and Blake were talking was a yeah. massive improvement over so many other parts of their development. Where they yeah. just, you know, didn't do anything. Correct. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Like, I, I did like that scene specifically for the fact that they were communicating with each other. It, they were they were communicating in stupid town, mind you, but yeah. they they were communicating. They they had yeah. the emotional side of things right. They were. Well, yep. background scene showing their closeness, yeah. but the main cap off in volume seven is their godlike coordination against the Ace. Oh, in the ugliest God fight like. in the Kept fucking the volume. Mostly to the background, but this allowed an God incredible like. amount of to be told through their more lighthearted interactions. But the spotlight was put on them when it needed to be to signify the depth and healthiness of their relationship. We follow all this up with volume 8, the volume that shows Blake and Yang's first- But I don't okay. think that their relationship is healthy. That's the problem. Volume 7 stats time. Total length, 3 hours, 22 minutes, 23 seconds, with a total, uh, which means a total of 12,143 seconds. B what do you expect the bumblebee time to be? Percentages, people. I did die for this. Fuck it, let's go big. 55%. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Let's see, let's let some people get their, their role in the, the chat here. 23, 40, 17. Woo, look at that. Also, Common Rider Rika. I, listen, listen, Rika. Look, all right. I, I am Kaiser Shonen, okay? I watch Ruby so you don't have to, all right? I appreciate <laughs> the people that are ballsy enough to put decimals in. You're, you're getting really into the nitty-gritty. Yeah. All right, here we go. Volume 7 Bumblebee time. Right, One hour, eight then. minutes, and 52 seconds for a total of 4,132 seconds. That is 34.02%. Damn. You overshot it. Oh. All right, I went too big. Way too big. Yeah, I overshot it way Oops. too high. I keep hiding the chat. No. I, I was hoping, I I was hoping like the uh, the snippets of time that we get throughout the volume between them would probably carry that, like like substantially more than volume six, but I guess not. Nope. What we could call it fight. The various team members cannot agree on what to prioritize and have to split up, Blake siding with Ruby and going with her team and Yang leading her own side of things elsewhere. Blake's shown to be rather forlorn throughout this separation and when yep. they can't contact Yang is shown to have been constantly dialing her number in worry. Yang meanwhile is shown to be That's quite dour, kind of wondering if Blake will think yeah. less of her for the decisions that she's made. Kind of Can we talk about that? Wait, 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 about that <laughs> fucking scene. Okay, this is my trigger. Okay. Oh yeah. This Go is, off, this King. This is my trigger. Right. So, anyways, why, oh why, Yang, are you so worried that Blake will be mad at you 
even though she isn't the person that you were yeah that you were having a, a a major disagreement with in the beginning of the fucking volume which in her time was literal hours ago remember between between like i, I believe that scene is like episode four or five of volume eight actually maybe even less than that either way that was like a few hours from the beginning of the volume when they were trying to formulate the plan and during that time blake i mean not blake blake was completely absent from that conversation she sided with ruby because yeah it makes sense that the person who's good at stealth should be on the stealth mission fucking shocker i know lady you are so so goddamn insecure that you really think that you are neglecting the fact that you had a big argument with your sister and you're wondering what the fucking cat girl that you just some just managed to even start having a relationship with thinks this is it at the same time as when you lost your friend, which is Oscar, to the enemy as well, because your dumbass decided to freaking not do anything, or he was getting nabbed up by fucking Cerberus. Get over yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> pull, pull an Adam and get over yourself, okay? <laughs> It's just, it is just really weird, though, that she focuses so much on Blake, even though that, like, yeah, I can understand that maybe she was a little bit nervous about what Blake thought because she did ultimately side with Ruby and Yang was fighting with Ruby. But her main focus on that should have been her fight with Ruby. Yes. I, it, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it, it, it's really like I don't on one hand. I can see a sibling being like, oh, my my relationship with my sibling is like rock rock solid. Even when we have this rough patch, we're going to heal, so I'm not really going to worry too much about it. I can see that. I'm, I'm more worried about my relationship with this person that I'm currently crushing on. I can see that. But it's like not acknowledged and really worked on at all. It's just sort of like kind of thrown away. I don't know. And I've again, personally known a lot of people who have ruined mad. their relationships oh. with their siblings. Oh, God true but like it, again this is true because the emphasis is fucking wild again think back to what i said back in the volume six section in your brain you know that ruby and yang are sisters and they should be having interactions that would make sense given that particular dynamic otherwise what is even the point of having them be sisters in the first fucking place the problem is, is that when we get to scenes like this, where it would normally make sense for Yang to not include Ruby, her not including Ruby is a fucking problem. Yep. Yep. They uh, focus on characters that don't need to be focused on, and they focus on relationships that don't need to be focused on. That is Asos. a big problem with Ruby. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake the Sturgeon, James is going to work with Robin if she played ball. Don't lie about my baby boy, Zell. Yeah. By the way, it's Zell with an X-E-L. That's, that's how he spells it, Zell. Z Zell is in Zellos, Z not Zell is in Zelgatus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, Oscar <laughs> Borgia. Bring players back. I hate that scene so much. Why would Yang every be worried about Blake? The scene hurts not only her character, but her relationship with Ruby who she is the reason why she put the arm on for Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yang like, Yang again, in a normal show, Dalla. this would be nothing. Like, if this happened in Ben 10, I can believe it. But in this, no way. Not even close. They didn't earn this. I'm wondering if Blake will think less of her for the decisions that she's made. Their reunion is one of the most heavily romantically coded moments they've had. If you're Ben 10, then proceed Blake the is still nervous thanks to their disagreement. Kevin, past experience with Adam Lee. We all disagree with. But as you can see... I know nothing about Ben True. 10, so. Yang is nothing like Adam. Also, Blake Belladonna is still failing the take your eyes off Yang challenge. Things grow more intense. If I were John or Ren in that situation, I'd be like, so you guys getting laid yet? <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys sleeping together yet? Like, is this, is this finally a thing? She's been like, what? No, no, what? It's like, no, guy, you guys are like doing the head forehead thing. It's, it, it's like clearly romantic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like. Hence, when the team's plan to evacuate the population of Mantle and Atlas are interrupted by the ventral pair of Cinder and Neo, Yang throws herself between Ruby and a sneak attack.
Neo, why were you surprised? <laughs> you, I mean, I understand that she kind of blocked yeah. your blow, but you should be happy about this too. Uh, like the the, yeah, the she, thing Yang is the strongest in the group. <laughs> also, the weird follow thing, up, motherfucker. The weird thing is that like she had like an almost worried look on her face. That was kind of weird. Why is Neo kind of worried? Oh my and, god, baked Alaska, it's coming true. Yeah, <laughs> and like uh. <laughs> Why, why, Neo, are you just standing there looking at Yang? Why don't you immediately go after Ruby? You should not care that this person got in the way and is now flying away because of your blow. Giggity. Oh, it's so... the drama. The anguish! Please. No, I'm going to stab you before you die. Damn How could it! This happen to me? I want to. I want to make an edit where she did have enough reach for it, but she just cuts off Blake's foot. <laughs> she cuts off Yang's other arm. <laughs> yeah. I got also, my God, Penny, best that. hearing in the fucking world. We yeah. can see then Weiss having to well, force me to yeah. a sobbing I was gonna say, but no, she's not a robot anymore. ...herself yeah. into the void after Yang, only to eventually turn and try to take Neo off the yeah, board. This is the fine. Point. It doesn't work, and she does turn her focus to protecting others who need the help more than Ruby does, but ultimately they all still fall. And thus, yep. finally, we have reached Volume 9, the ultimate volume for bees, you might say. Bees City, even. Okay. I'm glad we got through that relatively quick. Volume 8 yeah. stat time. Yeah. Total oh. length, 3 hours, 44 minutes, and 30 seconds for a total of 13,470 seconds. This is the longest volume in the entire series thus far. Bumblebee time. Take a guess. What percentile? Okay. So this is... Yeah, this is the longest volume. But I don't think there really is as much time of them spending either being in the same room or thinking about each Christ, other. Christ, Jamas Tor. Um, as much Jamas more new. Oh my God, seventy percent! Holy shit, man, you're really Barbara. So you guys are just piling on the bandwagon. Okay, keep going, keep going. Twenty six point seven. All right. I think that was about the same percentage that I made. Yeah, you were for you my were, prediction. You were actually pretty close with that with with, with uh, yeah. uh, to hers. Yeah. Total bumblebee time: thirty two minutes, okay. thirty two seconds for a total of nineteen uh, nineteen fifty two in terms of seconds. That is fourteen point four nine percent. Damn! I, these volumes just fucking surprise you. Yeah, they do. And I, I, I remind yeah. her, this is just them present together or thinking about one another. It's not them whether or not they're they're actually like there's a romantic scene or not. Um, yeah. Oscar Borgia. This is another scene that pisses me off. You mean right. to tell me that Ruby wouldn't go after her sister and tried to save her? Also, why was it that Ruby screaming for Yang and cries for her? It makes it more sense for Ruby to go after her. Uh, Ruby can't like she can kind of fly, but she can't fly. Um, you don't. She could fly enough. Also, the the one thing that nobody ever like thinks about is why couldn't yang just hold her arm out and shoot her her guns and then the force can push her off onto the side and then she'd be fine yeah i guess the idea is is that when she got knocked out of her aura it like days her. her the, the impact just concussed her completely yeah, on, I which, didn't get that okay, impression. Yeah. That's it, it, somewhat consistent. no i got that impression i, mean, I thought it was a stupid impression that could make sense I was gonna say like like because yeah. they had her <laughs> eyes opening slowly. And it's like oh, it's, it happened so quickly. It's like no, we've seen them react quickly. Um, Jake yeah. the surgeon actually comes with the the same counter to me. It was Ruby can fly. The fact she didn't try to save Yang and just state like soggy stay there. I guess like soggy eggs is hilarious. Yeah, uh, Ruby. Sh everyone in that scene should have been yeah. much more reactive. There should have been more work put in to actually see Yang thrown. They the literally edge. trained for situations like been this. Like it, there's no excuse. Yeah, landing strategies. Yeah, it should have been like a combination rescue rescue formation. Like, it's why should it just like bust it out all the time she could? It's almost like they're they were trained for combat and thus need to react fast. 
or else they'll get killed. So why Especially, are you just standing there like you're lumps of coal? You should be standing this there also menacingly. The whole... Menacingly. <laughs> yes. But you're standing there wimpingly. But like, yeah, this also undercuts like the whole point of them fighting the Aesops in the previous volume, which is supposed to prove how much how strong their bond as a team is in comparison to theirs. Now, <laughs> in the in the first time that their teammate is complete is so in trouble, the people that are supposed to have her back the most and keep her alive. And only one of them fucking tries, even though one of them is a, sp even though they aren't a fucking speedster like Ruby or can pull out fucking platforms out of her ass. In fact, Weiss can make, can make a flying summon quickly at this point in the story. Why the fuck didn't she dive down there? She can fucking fly. I think their real weakness here was having Neo be shocked by Yang's involvement, Neo should have just rolled with the attack. Because the yeah. minute that Neo stays yeah. active as a combatant, it suddenly distracts everyone else from trying to help. Blake might be distracted for a second trying to help Ruby and Weiss with Neo and get to Yang a split second too late after that point. Yeah, like, I you, agree. You, I think you just give Neo a little more agency in the scene and suddenly it works a little bit, a lot better. Yeah. You just so, make the scene a little faster, it would work better. But they. Ow! The, 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 ow, yeah. Holy. Ow! I apologize to everyone. What? What I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how this happens. I just. Okay, why did this time instead I just reached over to grab my phone? And I didn't oh. bump into. You no. Know, I don't know how that happened. Anyway. Uh, Could be a cord issue? Uh, unfortunately, I, mean, I do not have any more uh, volume. I don't have volume nine, so we can't do stats on that. But we can take everyone's bets, and I will just throw it out on Twitter when I'm finally done going through that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go into volume nine. Blake and Yang's reunion says so much already. She gives Yang and Ruby enough time to talk before diving in for a hug. The muffled Yang and gentle cradling just melts the heart. We also no, see that Yang is continuing to lose the take your eyes off Blake challenge, followed with this little flirtatious scene where Blake somehow talks in italics. <laughs> so would you say he caught you unarmed? <laughs> the talk... It, it, it's just her making a pun. Yeah, it's it's her making a pun. How is she talking in italics? A really shitty one. Did you say she was talking I, in I, italics? I said that she's talking as Germany right now. Yes, Natalia. <laughs> italics. Beetleborg's italics. <laughs> That'd be the weirdest fucking show on the planet. It is. I saw clips of that like a couple years ago. It was so funny. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I love Italia. Um, I, I know the Critter had a really big uh, issue with this scene. And yeah, it is... Yeah. I can kind of see what she's saying when it comes to this scene. Um, like, the, the main thing that I have a problem with is, like, you're trying to hold hands in this. And I, like I said before, that holding hands is, like, not, a, not really as much of a thing with girls. But, like, you're trying to do it in a romantic sense. And it's just, like, why, why don't you two know already? Why have, like... My my actual thing is like why guess... wouldn't Blake have been like confessing her love because she just learned that Yang is still alive? There's that exactly. That, that's a good. That's question. what I. That's what I said in my video. And also, I, that's I, why. I, yeah. yeah, I said that. It's so. It's such a. It's such a great question because like yeah, why the fuck wouldn't Blake immediately be all like, I need to talk to you. There's no better time for this. I need to get this out of my off of my chest or else something crazy might happen and I could not mm. live with myself knowing that something happened to you and you didn't know about this. You literally wake up on Fantasy make, Island yeah. Beach where yeah. after having almost yes. died and realizing, hey, and knowing I, I'm head over heels, there is not a fucking shrub close enough where we are pulling off our clothes. All right, if, so long as they're consenting, mind you. Yes, but like, like, be clear. I, 
I would have just settled with in that there that glomp should have come with a kiss. That is where I would have put the kiss. Yes. Not yes. not the episode that it came in. It should have been episode yeah. one. That's where it goes down. Like me and me and Fat Man when we talked about that like um, bridge scene. When we're obviously going to be getting to that, it should have been them having to confront oh, the ugly yeah. parts of their relationship too. Yeah. It shouldn't have just been the oh we need yep. to say the unspoken nice kindly things we didn't say. No, it should have been. By the way, remember that time you stole That's my sandwich? Point. Yeah, dick move. Thanks for doing that. I went hungry that day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, like disarming. that's what should. We also see that Yang, despite having plenty of reason to be angry at the person who stole her arm, yielding to Blake's desire for diplomacy until that's completely off the table. <laughs> With the next episode, we have Yang blatantly strutting her stuff and settling her gaze on Blake as she does so, and soon after leaving Blake yep. blushing intensely from Yang cheering her on. We also see Blake zeroing in on Yang so much in a fight that an enemy actually gets a blow in against her. Following their shrinking, the two are essentially always side by side, and even when sitting with Weiss, they are notably closer to each other. And thus we find- Weiss and Little, better dynamic than Bubble Bee. <laughs> we reach the yeah. thunderstorm, a natural <laughs> nightmare that manifests. Fucking thunderstorm. Wait, wait, wait. Is there a way I can feather back? Oh, I fucking two hate this. Let me go off of this side, once we And get even there. when sitting with Weiss, what? they're notably closer to each other. And thus we finally reach the thunderstorm. And I, I hate that it's called the thunderstorm. It yeah. should be called the ponderstorm. Because yeah. you're pondering something. But where does the pun come in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oscar Borgia. It would make more sense if Ruby was tackling Yang and uh, be more impactful. Also, same, uh, same with Ruby about the arm, but it would be her cheering her up. Dude, do you, like, want Ruby and Yang to, like, you... I, I understand that there's a point where, like, we got to have, like, the sisterly oh dynamic, but, like, you're kind of overdoing it, man. Like, the... <laughs> also, yeah, Ruby is not in the mindset to be tack glomping anyone, all right? It just does, that does yeah, not no. happen. Ruby is... Ruby is super yeah, depressed no, over right now. I don't now, think that would make sense for her. Um, that everybody ignores. Yeah, I, everyone ignores because they're all assholes. Yeah. Um, because the plot deems yes, that they have to for ignore no it. No reason. Despite the fact Even that they had they been very on other people's asses for not being emotional. Yeah, enough. and despite the fact that that you there know? has been so much evidence in Ruby before that they have that they just mitigate any tension between characters by just talking things out and noticing when there are problems suddenly it's not a thing yes. in volume 9 because we need to get ruby to that moment where she uh where she falls yep and drinks the tea yep instead of spilling the tea she drank it <laughs> <laughs> that that tea was too good to spill she she just Kept it to herself and Drink drank the it. the tea, sis. Volume, confessions within the Drink most the ridiculous tea, long episode titles of this entire video. They will keep shifting this text when I type. Confessions within the most ridiculously long episode titles of this entire video. What? What? Is that, is that, a, is that a joke? Do you like keep you, you keep putting the, the episode names? So now you're making fun of this episode name. I, I imagine that's what you're doing. Okay, the natural event in the ever after that manifests hey, hey, when people are stuck in an intense yeah, confession, crossroads okay, that forces yeah. them to either wait it out or resolve their own uncertainty. Yang and Blake find themselves cut off from the rest of the group, isolated on unfinished bridges with a single platform connecting them. For literally no reason. Blake says that she yep. will feel a lot better once they're together on said yep. platform, that the bridge begins adding new pieces to itself. And once again, Yang follows it up by proving that she is terrible at flirting. I'm sure you'll figure it out, though. You're good at that. You think so? Well, yeah. You've got a really good... brain. <laughs> uh. Okay, that did something! And at this point, I think I can safely oh, no. say that she was indeed flirting back in Volume 1, and some of her phrasing oh my being God. a direct no. callback to the campfire no. scene in Volume 2 is a nice... She was encouraged... Like, go... <sighs> The entire scene is supposed to be romantically mm. coded, but you can easily also see it as just she was encouraging Blake to actually be smart about things and figure it out. Yeah. Which makes sense because at this point, there's no reason for Yang to want to be romantically involved in it. In fact, in fact, let's actually just take a second to talk about that real quickly. And I said this in my video as well, and I forgot that I didn't say it here. Yeah. What in the world 
we see in the in like the first three volumes that yang is going out of her way to run run the bat for blake right emotionally yeah. i'll be right, right? back okay. and yet yeah, yeah exactly um yeah she, she she ran the bat for yang for blake emotionally why in the world is was yang so attached to blake that to the point of uh you know in volume five telling Ye weiss that she needs her emotionally why in the world it, or zell i'll ask you this what in the world made yang so emotionally like attached to blake that she or or what attracted her to her that she wanted to instantly start flirting with her or anything like that if all of that shit is off screen why the fuck should we care this makes no sense it's so fucking stupid it doesn't make any sense because the whole point of again the lack of communication is antithetical to the ship's message and the message of these both of these characters developments is that these these two are supposed to understand each other because they worked out exactly how to talk to each other um, through, through showing their most vulnerable aspects of themselves. But they are never, ever, ever deliver on that when it actually matters to the point where we need to go back and post hoc rationalize previous interactions like it's a freaking jigsaw puzzle. We yep. do not do this for any other relationship in almost any other story ever made. Kurosami. Unless it's absolutely subversive. Yeah, they, they yeah. do it with Kurosami. Uh, they, they, you, it's only ever really done for a, a relationship that isn't well written. That is the only time yeah. that stuff like this happens. Curious. Like, I understand the idea that there are some cases where relationships or even character development can be recontextualized, given more information about the character, but we're not given more information. We're given completely new developmental information. And now you're saying that it's post hoc uh, rationalizing or justifying these developments when there wasn't any breadcrumbs or clues towards that point beforehand at all yeah it just it's just mental completely mental and i'm not saying this is in like zell is like a crazy person for liking this because again if you like it that's fine but if you're saying critically speaking that this is well written i just cannot agree man i guess it, i just and you know what it's not even your fault it's not even your fault, man. It's just this thing that you are defending here, that you are writing about, just has so little going for it. Yeah. I guess the main thing that I would want to talk about is the dialogue and the framing of the thing. Because the, the dialogue oh, should be... with the fucking dialogue. The dialogue should be very important to this yeah. scene. And the problem, the main problem with the dialogue is that it should only be able to be romantically coded because this is the scene right before they kiss and start their relationship in earnest. But they don't, they haven't, uh, they haven't refined the dialogue in a way that you can only see it as romantically coded. So it makes it very awkward because we can tell that the scene is meant to be framed in a way that something is going to happen between these two characters, but then the dialogue just falls flat. Yep. Yeah, it's exactly. It's an incredibly awkward and painful In fact, scene if you had gotten them... Well, not painful, but it's yes. just awkward. It... Yeah. At least in retrospect, because at first I was so happy that we finally got there. Because I understand in the writer's mind, this is incredibly monumental. But when you actually take a step back and look at it, you, you, just, you just have the surprise Pikachu face, and then you have the mm -hmm. Doomer face. Yeah. There's, there's, sad, there's a Korean animator channel the that I follow that makes a lot of little animated shorts. And one of the most consistently, you know, one of the most consistent types they do is of this, this girl who's trying to record herself doing like TikTok dance memes, that kind of thing. And yeah. you always see like, oh, she records mm -hmm. it and she's doing it perfectly, wonderfully, wonderfully. Then it cuts to her like hitting the, the, the stop button and looking at the actual recording. And what you realize about first you saw was what she thought it would look like. 
And then you see what the actual recording looks like, and it's super freaking awkward and shaky and, like, so embarrassing. You can tell she's already <laughs> dead inside. That's oh. what Bumblebee is. On the outside, the writer thinks they've done this wonderful yes. dance. But no, on, in reality, they've been there shaking their, their hips and shivering the entire time out of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, can see, yep. you can see the puppeteer strings, and it's not fun for that. I, I can see the puppeteer strings all the time in Ruby, and that's what makes it so frustrating. There, there is very little time that I don't see strings. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. There is, it's the power of zero and mocap. I keep seeing that formula all the time, no matter what where I, I look in this show. What I don't understand is that there is so much mocap, but then the walk cycles are so garbage. Like, why, why is it that they walk, <laughs> that they walk forward with their hips? They need to lean forward, but their hips are moving before anything else. They need to lean forward. The walking is just falling and catching yourself over and over again. And yet the characters don't do that when they walk. And at this point, I think I can safely say that she was indeed flirting back in Volume Ugh. 1, and some of her phrasing being a direct callback to the campfire scene in Volume 2 is a nice touch. Back then, she also expressed a similar admiration for Blake's ability to figure things out even when they're seemingly impossible. Yang also compliments Blake's ears and gains another board what? for herself. She claims not to know how, but the deflection through humour is a core trait of Yang. She knows what this is, and so does Blake, who's vocalising it for the both of them. Maybe it's saying things we've never said about each other. At that, the beautiful music begins to roll in. Yang why didn't, Blake the chance why didn't to he play also, the I need clip to ask, for that? Is anyone else hearing a clicking? He, he plays the clip for all the other things. Like, how the hey, fuck? Am I the only one hearing a clicking in the video where he like sounds like his mouse clicking? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh no, my drink is warm. Zelt, you shit. gotta cut that shit out. Yeah, I'm not clicking anything on my end. Okay, so, yeah, so that's yeah. Zelvan. You gotta cut that shit out, Zelt. First, always putting others before herself and letting Blake set the tone. She was completely unprepared for the level of sincerity Blake would start with. Highlighting Yang's bravery, her efforts oh, to light, it. even the most dire situations. These factors are at Yang's heart. It's what she always has done, how she kept herself and other people going. And Blake caps it off with, you do what you say. This is integral because Blake's past relationships weren't honest, weren't reliable yeah, right. or trustworthy. But her relationship <laughs> with Yang is. She even evokes Yang, lightening the situation oh, just as Yang would either off. try to keep up. It's such a contrast to the girl so we met in Volume 1. She's so open with her joy now. Yang comes at it more shyly, but just as genuinely, expressing that she likes that Blake was never intimidated by her. More beast analogues. Uh, oh, yeah. No! Who was intimidated by Yang? No never. one! No one has ever been intimidated by Yang. Literally no one. The only Not person that like you can immediately reference intimidated by her. Was, is Junior. Who literally had his June. balls grabbed? Like otherwise, yeah. no one, yeah. anyone that she's fought has never like been. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Not Torchwick. Uh, Torchwick, I don't think about it. No, sorry, I was getting confused with Ruby there for a minute. We're fixing Ruby. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Not Neo. Not Adam. Not. Yeah. Not, not Ty. Not any of her classmates. Not any of her classmates. Not. Not uh, anyone in the Vital Festival. Not anyone Which is surprising at, because not, you not think anyone miss because Shui. she's a powerhouse. Then like I don't know. Not Nobody has reacted no. to Yang after the Vital Festival thing, this. where they they say that they should be scared of her, but n that's not shown. Even, yeah. So the, this that comment is just so, so like, vapid and out of nowhere. Yep. If it's anything, so, so a lot of people would be backwards. hitting on her because she's a beautiful woman, like. I, I admittedly yeah. her dress code fucking sucks like, but like come on <laughs> she she's got like <laughs> like like in universe she's like a perfect drop dead 10 out of 10 like what, what are you who's intimidated people are attracted to her yeah if anything yeah if it, yeah that goes with the whole oh blonde bimbo sort of like shell it like that's the facade that she puts on hiding under hiding the actual complexities of who she is underneath all oh you're things. right like that's the point who Sha the fuck is intimidated by that shady man was intimidated by her only after she beat his ass yeah only after yeah but yeah. he's like literally the only one 
Oh yeah, you're story. not you're Especially not intimidated like the guy that was very... creeping on me. Jane comes at it more time. shyly, but just as genuinely, expressing that she likes that Blake was never intimidated by her. More beast analogues, as this volume has especially reminded us, Yang can be seen as very scary, but she isn't, and that this was true even before the two of them became close. Blake notes, I was wary of people in general, but Yang expands on that. But you never gave up on them. Even when they hurt you, you never give up. You know what Bullshit. matters to you. Yang Bullshit. You fled okay. from your entire team the minute that Weiss dis you added yourself as a White Fang member. Yep. You fled from your parents when you, you had to be tracked down. He was far back as volume two that Blake wouldn't back down from a challenge, even before Blake herself did. Yang is someone who has struggled with purpose, with will, with feeling worth something, and it's clear how much she admires Blake in you this. You are inventing I this just out of thin of air. It is a tra yeah, yeah, you are. You're inventing that. That is that is your fan fiction. Okay. You see, I don't like sand, people. This that but it's coarse and rough and, and, and it gets everywhere. And it's not very yeah. stable, much like Zell's arguments. <laughs> Yang is someone who has struggled with purpose, with will, with feeling worth something, and it's clear how much she admires Blake in these. I just love all of this. It is a triumphant moment for them. There's no need to bring up past baggage or worries of the future. They can just exist here in this moment together and speak from their wholehearted admiration for one another. Oh, Their don't steps put not yeah, music. literally being forced by the freaking cosmos to be together. Yeah, that's what we need, guys. These two characters whose whole struggle is about acceptance and, and, and their autonomy and struggling with communication. You know what they need? Literally, the universe stripping them of that choice. Isn't that yeah. great, guys? If, if the universe is, is forcing you to be together, that is not the... Like this is this is fourth this is This fourth is not the endorsement you want. Yeah, no. This is this is fourth wing yeah, levels no. of bad, just without the terrible uh, You know, actually interestingly there was a a small Yuri one shot that I read the other day that caught my interest because the entire idea was that this girl could see the red strings of fate. So she could see that her parents had a red string of fate and they were good together. But she saw other people that weren't together or were together that didn't have the red string and she always saw them having problems and, and issues and that kind of thing. Um, she had a best friend that was in love with her, but she didn't have a red string with her. Then sometime later, she discovered she had a red string for uh, one of their teachers. In, in, oh. in this, and so she's like, oh, I'm going to try and pursue oh. this teacher. And you, think, you think you know where it's going, but actually it pleasantly surprised me where... At one point, her and the teacher actually manage to sit together and just talk, and she doesn't confess to the teacher anything. The teacher just says, man, you know, you really get what it's like. It's really, it, 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 it's really, uh, it, it's really nice to be able to con connect with you. And then you learn that the teacher can also see the red string. And the teacher's like, just because you share the red string doesn't mean you have to be with someone. And it's like, mm -hmm. and it was basically an entire mm -hmm. thing about learning about being with someone through your own will. And at the end of the uh, at the end of the story, she decides to give her friend a chance in the romantic light. Uh, and I thought it was a very heartwarming idea of like, no, make your own destiny. Don't let fate tell you. Sure, you might get along. Yeah. You get one along wonderfully with the person that destiny has paired you with, but you don't need to be romantically tied to them. You can just be really good friends with them. And they seem to get along just like her and the teacher get along very well. So yes. why not keep that that way? It was a very heartwarming message. The fact that the universe is telling these two to get together is a warning flag to me. Yeah, honestly. Under the threat of possible death, by the way, because they don't know that this is, like, completely harmless if they just sit around not doing anything. Uh, Adam yeah. Zekel, Zel, 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 I cannot pronounce your name for whatever reason. <laughs> this guy reaches so much, I think he has stretchy powers to extend his reach this far. Yes. He's elastic, man. He, get, he ate, yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna make a reference. I, I said I was going to make a reference to Luffy as well because that is how much he's stretching. <laughs> Warriors of the future. I have to watch the Netflix just version exist of that. here in this moment Ugh. together and speak from their wholehearted admiration for one another. Stop it with the music! And Yang says, "Let's no. make this quicker." Any big truths we haven't dropped on each other yet? Not realizing she's done what. Why is it getting louder? It's hard to hear. 
open the floor to discuss yeah. their love. But she sees it in Blake's eyes. The storm fades. The sky shines. The music's too loud, so... Yeah, you gotta, so gotta tone that shit down. I get it. You're trying to be... You're trying to recreate the scene so all the bee shippers will this think that this is... This is your crescendo. Yeah, you're crescendoing this. I get it, but... Fuck, man. But yeah, it's hard to hear dance. what you're saying. So used to losing people. So unused to being vulnerable. To thinking she could be worth... Also making me very much at risk for copyright. Yeah. More than her service to others, she doesn't yeah. want that to That is why we need to uh, the bridge talk over it. Apart and Blake can see why. Did you just uh, think of something? I hate this recap so much. It's so fucking purple prose. It is. Say it. Dude, She's you worried, but not of Yang not sharing her feelings, but for Yang's own uncertainty. It is a very lovely fan fiction that you're writing, Zell. Like but come on. <laughs> like. It, it, <laughs> you know, that can't be what this is about. But looking at Blake, it's clear as day how certain she is, how much she wants this. No. I hate. I Are hate you gonna that play the, the universe... actual audio of the show now? It's like. Yeah, they're actually, yeah. A cliff. Oh. And if I do it, I'm just going to. So you could have just done that that whole time? What the fuck? Oh. He's probably trying to avoid copyright, too. You know, I he's think being we're an idiot about this. Falling. Yeah. Just I don't know. It was it. easy for me. Yang. Despite her obvious love, Yang yeah, why? Why does Yang have to say it? Uh, see, yeah. this music is making me think of Madoka Magica. Know. Why is this music making you think of Madoka Magica? Just because there's a female singer being soft? Like, I, 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 there is nothing in here that reminds me of Yuki Kajiura's work. <laughs> uh, using the I think method, which helps mask her own fear of rejection. But Blake can't even wait for Yang to finish before showing how much it means to her. She can't let there be a moment of uncertainty, of doubt. She wants to say this, and she wants Yang to know that she loves her. The distance vanishes. They are both now on the platform as the colors in the sky merge around. Yeah, that's very lovely. Yeah, By we the way, get we it. have 169 viewers. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. Also, yes, Zell. Oh, we, have watched, we have watched. Oh, the show. And, and this is the and this is the sixth episode of the ninth volume. Sixty nine, sixty nine. Woo! And the Woo! music swells and lilies spring to life. So what they'll be doing Lilies after this? Often used in weddings to signify rebirth, purity, or in oh, hell yeah. Ruby is also paying. Yes, yes, they they chose the most romantic flowers for the romantic scene. I'm very happy for that. Homage to anime. Uh -huh. It serves as a direct very reference clever. to the Yuri slash girls love genre yep. of anime and manga. Yep. Yuri literally meaning lilies. This triples as a homage. Stop fucking having a seizure, man. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it, it's not helping you emphasize your point. It's the song Bumblebee. This is, this is the song what happens when you forward to this very moment. <laughs> Maybe both is given the music explode? swelling has been described. I hope, I, I, I hope he explodes. Song. They close the remaining distance. Yang is cautious of Blake's boundaries, and Blake is encouraging her forward with an eager smile. They You're reading so much into this, motherfucker. How do you know you it's on the reverse? I know that Yang's not inviting her, and Blake is respecting her boundaries. Because fuck yeah. no, we know that Blake has yeah. definitely violated Yang's boundaries before. Uh huh. This mm -hmm. isn't like any yeah. moment before it. No one is jumping ahead. They're both here in the moment, and they're both ready. They kiss. and they're being told by God to kiss. <laughs> yes, they the literally are. Sublime. Yep. What the? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you using the Japanese dub? Why? It's the English dub. It's the one that has the most direct reference. Oh, I know. Also, I know why. Because she's using. Because he's, he's trying to Aishiteru. say like it's actual true love. Because she's using Aishiteru. Aishiteru. Even though that lots of anime characters use Aishiteru even more than what because real life Japanese people don't say that that much. They they will literally. Almost only say it like during on their deathbed. That is how important that that word is. So you can't use anime as a reference because it is really dramatized. I, I, oh my fucking god. I did a minute. I did I, I'm I'm just impressed. Why didn't so you use it? I have to stifle my laugh so I, badly. You, you know, Zell, I have a curious I question. Why didn't you use any of the Japanese dub prior to this? It's almost as if maybe they might have cut things and molded things in a different way to that may not have actually helped your narrative. Because I know they actually cut a substantial amount of things like Volume One from it. Yeah, they they cut the whole jaundice arc because yeah. that goes against the that it's very anti-school and you can't have that in Japan. 
<laughs> How is it anti-school? But yeah, like uh, the, the uh, John forging his transcripts. Yeah, that's that's oh. the yeah. It's very anti-school and stuff like that. Like it's it's a big no-no because it's encouraging it's encouraging you to cheat at school and you can't have that. No way. God in the ever like, after is a Yuri yeah, shipper. Why in the I would say God in the Yuri not... and the ever after has taste, but you know not. <laughs> Yeah, I it, yeah, it's just really yeah. weird that he would just that he would justify it with the Japanese dub, and because uh, like like I said before, it's drama, it's dramatized, because fictional, and it doesn't matter as much. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, why in the world wouldn't they use this particular phrase in the big romantic scene? Like we see this shit all the time. I, I'm pretty sure I even hear this shit in fucking Dragon Ball. Like, I understand this is the, you know, big crescendo emphasis and everything. But in the back of your head, how did we get here? Right? Is he Especially is he trying to say since... that it's uh, that it's comparable to all the head ships made because they use I said it? I mean, he's been he's been making all these comparisons to the other ships this entire video. Why the fuck not? Which yeah. is even uh, also, God, I'm this pretty is sure so terrible. The rarest and strongest way. No, I'm actually pretty sure there is one level above Ice that is that is also it, it, even more insanely rare to like the nth degree. I'm pretty yeah. sure that there is an even further version Maybe. of it. It's just Ice Teru is it's what it's ski dice ski Ice Teru. Uh, I guess uh, I, I yeah. guess I guess Ashteru might be actually the maximum. Um, Ashteru yo, I think. Well, Ashteru yo is just yo is just an emphasis. That's that's it's like an exclamation point. If oh, I'm never mind. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah all right, but like, I could have taken yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god! This hey, is Zell, crazy. why didn't why, why didn't you bring up Ice Queen yeah. at all? And it's I weird because they actually have some decent interaction in Ice Queen. Might have helped yeah. your argument a little. I'm not going to break my promise. I know now, you yeah. are. And I'm not saying this in Japanese because I didn't use the Japanese dub here for some reason. This yeah. is a moment ten years in yeah. the making. Two characters, two arcs that have woven together. Yeah, and you know what else? Coming... This is also a moment. Oh, sorry. This is also a moment that completely ignores the mental trauma and 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 freaking turmoil of their other two team members you yep. know oh hey the ponder storm or ponder T storm fucking stupid name you know their whole thing is that oh they trap each member in their own sort of mind dungeon you know their mind yeah mind dungeon why the fuck don't kai don't freaking ruby and weiss get their own they're in some deep shit ruby God, if this had been weiss even... and ruby i would have actually been completely 100 freaking... on board <laughs> i would have been like that's fucking just fire. bias speaking that is my bias speaking but i think it would actually have more legs to stand on i stand by that yeah in my um, yeah in the addendum to my video that i made it's like yeah this had barely anything to do with the episode at hand yep. at all it was just completely and out of nowhere. Like, there was nothing that triggered it, it. Like, they weren't even thinking about this at the time. Yeah, they don't even care that another another guide of theirs freaking cheated them completely. And and they ignored uh, just, you know, the, their own, uh, their culpability in bringing themselves into this situation. They were like, nah, let, let, let's just care about fucking each other. Don't worry about my sister and her very apparent depression. Who cares? Okay, well let's let's get on with this. We're almost let's slap at the end some here. clams. We gotta we gotta finish this out. Yeah. We need to get yes. in this one perfect Sweet moment death. of purest love. It couldn't have come before. Now they needed to confront their demons, overcome their traumas. Needed to begin as friends. <laughs> they and got they hot over the traumas. They needed time where they could be together and not have that moment overwhelmed by some new plot hook or foe. Yeah, all things considered, Blake and Yang getting together when they did turn out to be very necessary given the sheer emotional pounding Yang, Blake, phrasing, Yang, Blake, and Weiss, and John get from Ruby issues. Uh, uh, 
No, this would actually probably put their entire relationship at very. Oh, never mind. This moment was a I'm testament t- to the characters and a labor of don't love. Don't bring this up. We don't know what they were talking no. about there. They poured so much into oh, this scene, God. and it is all breathtaking. And now we will. No, it's not breathtaking. You have not genuine... watched. Yeah, because romantic. I can't stop laughing. That's why it takes my breath away. <laughs> romantic That's why it takes my breath away because I couldn't stop laughing. This is a slow Watch a better romance. romance, and it was done magnificently. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Why, why are you using what? storyboards? We have. Whoa, what? Did we miss what? anything? Feels like I've been waiting forever for that. Oh, I, ha- yeah. oh, I hate that one. Oh. It's so gross. So gross. <laughs> I, if I were John, I would be more like, really? In the <laughs> middle of my, <laughs> my, middle of my emotional right. crisis. Right. You're right in front of my salad. <laughs> And that's all for today. If you'd like to help support yeah. my work, please swing by my Patreon. If you'd like to commission 3D models, please hit up my coffee. Thanks for tuning Ooh. in. Okay, oh. you do decent 3D models, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. We made it. Oh it's my god. Made it to the end. Fucking over. That was so bad. Zell, look. <gasps> I love Bumblebee as a concept conceptually as a ship. There's a reason why I I have not thrown it out. I think there's a lot of potential there, and I think Rich Teeth was right to pursue it, but I think they bungled it so freaking badly that I I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it justice in fixing. Like, it's that bad. Um, Yeah, I I think the major problem with the the Bumblebee ship, like like I keep saying, is the fact that they only become romantic towards each other after the trauma that they share together and it paints a really great light between them. If they had started to actively show that they were gaining feelings towards each other before before the fall of Beacon at all, then it would be okay because they already show, but we haven't seen anything like that and the way to justify that they had been beforehand is to do the mental gymnastics that Zell was doing in this video. But if they if they were showing it it's very before, yeah, if they were doing the volume six to eight stuff, um, even even to a smaller degree, before the fall of Beacon in volume three, then it would have been fine. But that's not what they did, and that's what makes it gross. Not only that, but then you have two volumes in which they are gone. So you're basically almost starting the relationship. Up from the beginning but then you don't act like it like th- you, it's, you act it's... like the next time they meet and they're you basic. distract us what's done it, it's so it there there is such confused messaging here uh yeah. adam zilkey my name is pronounced zilkey this guy wouldn't know good slow burn if slow burned him with a third degree third degree burns and then oscar borgia i can't stand this scene i hate this scene not only because it makes no sense but how uh it is beyond disgusting it is forcing these two to be something they're not I, what if Yang had just fallen off the cliff? Yeah. That would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah, like I That's like I said, I, I liked it in the moment that I was watching it, but when you turn your brain back on for a second after you get after you get past the initial emotional reaction, then you see kind of how great it is. And and like this might just be me and it might be a lot of us as like it it is really gross how they couldn't have settled this on their own that they had to have this there there you do not have a mature relationship with yourself and with the your partner if the only way for you to get to this moment is to have the universe force it on you it's so i'm gonna level with you here I'm going to level with you here, right here, right now. I got one thing to say to you. As much as we have ragged on your work here, here's the thing. You deserve better. We, honestly, we deserve better, but you deserve better. You and everyone else who likes this ship and thinks that it's critically well-written. Because all of this... All of the all of the post hoc rationalizations, the 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 using fairy tale symbolism where it doesn't exactly quite fit, disregarding certain character dynamics. Honestly, as frustrating as it is, 
I can, I can forgive it, man. I forgive you for this video. I forgive you for all of this freaking turmoil because ultimately it's not your fault. It's the fucking company that is right behind it that, that shoved this shit down your freaking gullets. It's the fact that they, despite the fact that this is a relationship between two of the main motherfucking characters of the entire show, despite mm -hmm. absolutely having full liberty to understand the complete route of development that they have had since the very first volume, by your admission, and I'm willing to play, I'm willing to play ball with you on that, they could not give it time. They didn't give it the time in volume one to even for them to be casual friends, aside from a couple of gags. They didn't have the time to give them any other emotional beats other than one in volume two. They gave them nothing at the start of volume three up until the last part where Blake fucking tries to gaslight Yang, essentially, and she instantly and she instantly gets over that. It's in and, and then all the skipping time skip shit, and then a fact that the show neglects to get us from point A to B because they just really, really want to have that climactic moment in Volume 9 so, so fucking bad. Yep. And but I, this shit is too little, too late, and I will not say anything more. It's fucking And I want to say one more thing about this. Like... Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh like lesbians out there who like this shit purely because it is a lesbian representation and i want to say like come come here let's have a girl talk okay getting getting real close oh shit <laughs> you don't have to settle for garbage you are allowed to ask for quality ships in media like that is something that you deserve you don't have to like this just because it is piddling representation. Ask for better. Ask for better representation. Ask for a better relationship in your shows. That is all. And if, if nothing else, even if you don't agree with whatever the hell we've been saying, just think about it. Just think about it and know that we are doing this because we come from a place of of just appreciating the idea of it. If you sat me down, mind wiped my memory like MIB, and fucking told me the rough structure of this ship, I'd be behind it. I'd pay money for it right there. I'd suck your freaking dick if I could. Um, but it, but just looking at, but this is what happens when you get the pages. You get you look at the pages of the script. You look at each line. And you're able to just take the pen out and mark down every single one. It doesn't work. It just doesn't. And if, if nothing else, I at least want anyone who doesn't feel the same way to at least consider what we brought here and consider which side has the more evidence behind them. That's it. Okay, well, we got a few... I... Mean, I, I... I don't really know what if I if I have anything uh, really to contribute after that. You guys did a very concise job of wrapping this up. <laughs> um, I will read out the last super chats here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they not only forced them on gunpoint, but manipulated them as well. It is beyond disgusting. It is disgusting, like how awful it is. The writers are forcing them to be something they're not. Look, if given more work, that scene could have worked, but you would need to do a lot of legwork with it and also probably change the nature of the ponder storm. There's a few other things to it, um, yeah. but it, it, you're right. It, it, mm -hmm. As it is, it really undermines the agency of these characters. Uh, Black Tachyon. The only good thing about Bumblebee is that Blake didn't end up with Sun. He deserves so much better. True. Yeah. Rip off Productions, LLC. Don't Correct. forget to show that art from earlier. I was about to do that. I'm trying to set up for that. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Borgia. Oh, yeah. Junior. A last one from him. Uh, also, I love how he did not bring up Ruby and her suicide and depression. They use it to push more Bumblebee scenes instead of Yang helping her sister. There are many reasons. He. That's a good point. There, yep. He, he, he completely neglects that there are more scenes after this that contribute to Bumblebee, but it doesn't make them look the best because it's yeah. actively in competition with the Ruby scene. Mm -hmm. um, which is very unfortunate. Correct. So... Zell, man, oof, <clears throat> oof, you're, you're, it, it is a rough video, man. I, I, it is. You put a lot of work into it. You put a lot of effort into it. 
I think you focused on the wrong things. You hit the wrong notes. I might at some point try and make a defensive Bumblebee video just to see if I can. It'd be a rough one. It'd be probably short, honestly. But mm. it, it would it would be an interesting experiment to see <laughs> how well I could defend Bumblebee in canon. Um, now, if you give me a moment here, I'm going to try and figure out how to do... The... I think that would be rough going because they're... Like, the, the main appeal other than the actual execution but that that is the that is the running theme of ruby is that there are ideas that are good in concept mm -hmm. but not in execution because the main problem isn't necessarily the things that happen in ruby itself how it happens Sell video. Well, because the the whole point is is that the team behind it are so impatient. At, at, at the end of the day, that this is just a this is just a case of just rampant, passionate energy not being focused into anywhere that could actually make it work. All right, there the we pro go. That's the core problem. They have all this energy and talent for it, but it just doesn't really. So here he put five months of work that's into it. Disappointing, really. Yeah. Wow. So here we go. The first one. Who's this from again? De Dex. Oh, Dederex. Dederex. Yeah. Dederex. Oh, as in the legendary moderator of uh, Ruby Critics? No. No? That's Dex. Okay. Sorry. That's, that's, De uh, that's Dex Tixer. Okay. All right. Good. All right. I, I got too confused. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here we go. Bumblebee in Black Sun. Uh, it's adorable. Uh, I love it. But then you that also have uh, <laughs> Bumblebee killing Discord to try and stop yep. us. <laughs> he did it. He actually, the bad man. They coming after us. He actually did it. Yes. The the the, the full on dude idea that, to I get did. Dead tell Dedarex a funny scenario. He literally made <laughs> artwork of freaking Oscar beating up Homelander because I was in a live stream with a couple other guys and we were just. And somebody mentioned that Oscar could probably beat the freaking uh, the boy the show version of Homelander and not the comic book. Oh, God. Hold on, let me find that actually. Oh, you're gonna have to zoom out on that. Oh, never yeah, mind. I've already, I've already worked on that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at the <laughs> screen. <laughs> it's so cute, dude. Try out next year for for yeah. fixing Ruby. I would love to have you on the team. You're amazing. Hell yeah, dog. Go ahead, guys. Commission his work. He's awesome. I might even link his Twitter in the chat. Uh, all right. Well, with that all said, and uh, my entire setup looking like it's it's breaking down for some reason. Oh, that's right, because that's that's there. That's why. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up this, this entire scenario. Uh, it has yeah. been absolutely amazing. Um, I did not expect us to go for yes. a full five and a half hours. Uh, my sister is probably going to hate me tomorrow. <laughs> but where did we go? What? Oh, in the. Oh, I. Had we're, to we're gone. I, well, you're gone because I had to. I had to change how Discord was being. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now you're back. Okay, you know where no, you're no. back. Where we're talking now. Uh, gotcha. Uh, there's, there's a lag. <laughs> Um, yeah okay but yeah thank you all so much for joining um if you're interested in any of uh the work here around the channel um i sometimes do live streams but i'm mostly known for doing fixing ruby as well as you'll be seeing in the relative future you'll be seeing some short stories uh being being uh put up on amazon i'll be putting little trailers out here for them um so look forward to that i'm i'm very excited about that uh, join my channel for critical discussions we do reaction content we're just we're a whole smorgasbord of fun stuff. We might do another stream like this in the future because I love this setup. It's really cool. bad fan fiction night. Bad fan fiction night. If you join my Patreon for one dollar or more, you get access to yeah, the Team Frostbite Discord server, the Tundra, where me, Fatman Falling, and uh, now here, obviously, uh, Twilight Guardian, we're regularly active in there. And me and Twilight, what? we host Bad Fan Fiction Night. We uh, do. Where we basically just sit down and we just riff on bad fan fiction a for about an hour right. or two every. And Friday now night. novels. And, and now no novels. novels. We are currently covering *The Ables* by Jeremy Scott of oh, even *Cinema novels. Sins* fame. Uh, yep. Did you know that Jeremy Scott of *Cinema Sins* wrote a novel? Oh he did. wow! It's awful. It's great. It's very awful. Yeah. He ever tried to read from a perspective of a blind person? Jeremy did. He's bad at it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, one more super chat. Um, uh, Oscar says, I can't agree with this ship or support it. Also, I heard about this, and it's interesting. If you take Blake out of those scenes and put Ruby and, with Yang and make it about them being sisters in Bond. Part, oh, that's part one? Uh, you, you don't need the super chat the next part. You can just how, ma this. how much are you spending, dude? Sir, I, oh you, my gosh. I appreciate you, you supporting the channel, but uh, please save some money for yourself. Um, yeah. Um, I I guess I could talk yeah, about my work. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I'll mostly work. Ass. I mostly work on uh, the Digimon Deep Dive series, where I go in depth about the history of Digimon as a franchise, and I'm also going to be ranting about a book that I read recently. And after that, I don't know where I'm going to go. Maybe I might go into a deep dive about Tamagotchi or and other uh, monster video games before I work on other projects. But that's what I'm working on right now. As And I'm also working on a novel just like Raymond. Uh, it's going to be a lot longer than his, I think. Or Well, no, not, not our two-fisser. It's not going to be our two-fisser, but uh, it's going to be comparable. <laughs> so look, look, look out for that in maybe a year or two. What? Yeah. She kinda... Yeah. Oh, I no, Alrighty. I stopped. Okay. All right. It was a very abrupt ending. I yeah. Think, I think the mic um, cut off like the last. Oh, time we sorry. It's all good. Um, no, I I, I kind of heard it on my end yeah. maybe, but I get I guess I it's gonna, my uh, turn. Now, I suppose. Yeah, go for it. Well, so, Oscar's right. Oh, there's Oscar's next thing. We'll keep going. Okay. Um, but yeah, I got my own channel. Thank you, everybody from, who are regulars of mine who showed up here. Y'all are the fucking champions. Y'all made this a great time tonight. It was great being here with Raymond and Twilight. I, these guys are hilarious. Um, I, I mainly, you know, I have a whole bunch of Ruby videos to choose from, including the big Bumblebee Too Little Too Late video that, that I'm still proud of. It's the biggest it's video such on a my good channel. Video. Go I watch that when you get the chance. As a palate cleanser for this one, <laughs> which is why I was surprised when I when I made this and like a month after, uh, freaking Zell made the tw uh, the trailers for his video. It was interesting. I thought he was gonna put out much sooner, but I guess not. But anyways, though, check it out. I also have a bunch of non Ruby related stuff in there. In fact, the next video I'm gonna be making will be about Free Run Beyond Journey's End, which I absolutely love. Um, it's going to come out at the end of this month, going to be the last video of this year. And check out my podcast, the New Types Podcast. Um, we're planning on doing more episodes of that, but there's plenty to, um, to just pick out from where we just talk about basically anime that we have seen and that we like about it in just a shooting the shit kind of way with my co-host Lone Crit and co Blaze Fate or his channel name Serial Naval Gaver CBF. Um, so yeah, with that, I really appreciate you guys for coming. Thanks for inviting me here and I hope to see you next time. Yeah. Uh, finishing yeah. off Oscar's, uh, super chats, uh, they have the bridge be about Ruby and Yang and their relationship with them, Bonnie and sisters by way and have them talk. Have I uh, have them, uh, they could bond and such, and it would be emotional part two. All right. I, I think you're overcorrecting for the whole sisterly thing. I don't mind Yang and Blake getting together. I just wish they had. Well, it had been done differently, and I think uh, Ruby and Yang should have definitely had a lot more focus uh, as yeah. individual. They should have just the entire yeah. team should have just had more focus with one another. I don't know why they didn't focus more on the interpersonal thing. Yeah, yeah which is the whole point of them being a this being a team show, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say that um, oh. if if Yang and Blake had kissed in the first episode, then maybe part of the reason why Yang did pay as much attention to ruby is because she's so focused on her new friend yeah you can make that an entire element of it, it that's that you can that, focus on that that could be a, yeah. a critical flaw of her character uh mm -hmm. last part oh my god I, I appreciate all the donations man but ch chill on it <laughs> uh heck, have the vol be about yang trying her best to protect ruby and comfort her also please do not do what these creepy did and, and no bumblebee please i uh, hate to disappoint but fixing ruby will have bumblebee that is that has <laughs> yeah. been that has been a major focus since I want to say volume six basically confirmed it. So 
um we it was written in the deep sea scrolls <laughs> yeah it, 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 it is a fixed point in time you can't you can't avoid the bumblebee you can only make it better um so it's I'm, a canon event it was, uh so divided because of the ship actually the ship the ship will not divide them it, the ship will only make them stronger and i'm going to try and work at my hardest to make that happen uh, but thank you so much for your donations. Uh, to Absolutely. give you more words, also, like, things I'm going to focus on in the future after Fruby, because Fixing Ruby, the finale of Volume 1 Remaster, happens next week on Friday. Uh, we're gearing up for that. Um, the After that, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break for the holidays, and then after that, I plan to come back with a video about Micro Academia, potentially. I have a video I have about Forbidden Ooh. Media that I plan to cover. And then after that... Um, some spicier topics as in i might give you get the 18 plus uh <laughs> tag out for two different video ideas i have going Ew. that's going to be interesting to explore interesting. The uh, oh yeah i also wanted to do at some point probably not for like a year or two but i wanted to do a deep dive into ruby and all of the flaws in the writing and animation and that Oh, right. CBF is doing a well similar thing of an overall thing, but I'm also playing a bunch of videos. In fact, to keep in theme with this, next month is gonna be call out season, which means a lot oh. more response videos are coming your oh, way. So God. stay tuned. Ooh. For that. Oh, to give a hint about the the spicy stuff, it, it was basically the green light for it in my brain was, oh, Seath did a video on breeders of Nephilim. Um, I guess I guess everything's on the table now, and that was a successful video. <laughs> <laughs> all right if that gives you guys any ideas there's some fun stuff to be coming anyway i will see you guys all later thank you all so much for joining us and we'll catch you